Radiohead, Fake Plastic Trees on XFM 104.9. Mm-hmm. Someone just emailed in and said, uh, just want to know what you think of that cover of Wonderwall. Mm. We told you. We said it was great. Yeah. Listen. But they must have been listening to hear... The song. Yeah. Extraordinary. Although maybe they just turn off... When we start talking. Yeah. That would make sense. That would make sense. Mm. I mean, it makes sense in a sort of, sort of preserving of sanity type way as Objectively, well. Objectively, Rick, if you were listening at home, if you didn't know us and you were listening to the show, would you listen to it? Would you bother? Um... I know that's a hard thing to get your head round. Uh, it's difficult to say, isn't it? I'd, I've no idea. I've no idea what people coming to this for the first time think. Mm. I mean, it, I, you know, I love you like a brother, but I get sick of you. Yeah. I mean, I, I get sick of me. Yeah. Sometimes I, I go up and It's weird you should say that, because someone's emailed in. Yeah. A recent survey's been done by Chantham and Gloucester. Yeah. The most desirable neighbour in Britain. Number one. Shane Ritchie. Johnny Wilkinson. All right. It doesn't actually give me the, the full rundown, but uh, David Beckham was in the list. Yeah. Shane Ritchie was indeed in the list. Yeah, uh, he's flying at the moment. As was Ricky Gervais. <laughs> really? Well, that's what it says. It doesn't tell me where you came, though. And you, that, there was actually a neighbour from hell and you weren't in that list. Well, I'm a good neighbour. Oh, come on. I am. I'm quiet. I don't keep myself to myself. I never... Do you know what I'm thinking of? What? If it was, if it was best friend. Yeah. Now that would be a nightmare. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Most desirable a, friend. I'm a good neighbour. I'm quiet, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I imagine being stuck in a room with me writing all the time, with me <sighs> squeaking like a chimp. Unbelievable. Although I, I don't physically abuse you. I save that to my bald mates, like Carl and Robin, that I just like to squeeze their head. I don't yeah. squeeze your head. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it's because you command a little bit more respect. Ah, oh, thanks very much. Do you know what I mean? You're mm. not, you're not that sort of, you're not an idiot. <laughs> oh, sure. Sure. All right, Carl, got anything to say? Has anyone seen this picture in Heat this week? It looks fantastic, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you know what Steve said when he saw that, Carl? Go on. He said, it has captured Carl. Mm. What do you mean? Well, you just look utterly gormless. <laughs> in the picture. It's captured brilliant. You know how like a good photographer can do that? You can capture the essence of someone. <laughs> That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Well, actually, I'm the photographer. Yes, it was a screen grab from the behind-the-scenes footage. Well done. So I got that, that gimpness. I captured the essential gimposity. <laughs> exactly. The, uh, yeah. Carl. Yeah. Alright? Should it? Yeah, well, I'm th um, I did a little article for Time Out and I've, I think Boyd from Heat has sent over that screen grab to them, so he might be in time out. I'm going to try and get him in every publication. Yeah. For one year. It's like well, Dave... you've managed it in the last two weeks. <laughs> exactly, yeah. It's like a Dave Gorman project. Mm. Uh, mm. Do you, are you Carl Pilkington? <laughs> yes. Th let's do that, shall we? If anyone's, if anyone's got a publication, it doesn't matter how little, yeah. just take it from heat. That's they, they, mine, so you're welcome to it. Um, just try and just put his picture in anything. Next to round things is best, mm -hmm. isn't it? That'd be good. You alright, Carl, with that? All right, then, good. What have you got for us, Carl? Uh... News headlines? There are not that, sort of been that much going on. Sure. Sort of headline-wise, you no. know. Sure, to, sure, no, sure. No, because I look for good headlines and that, don't I? That sort of yeah. get you interested, like the... Well, then, then when you're interested, you don't read on. No, I did. Okay, go on. Like the one, do you know I read, the one I read out a couple of weeks ago, that was, uh, man lives in dump for ten years. Mm. Right. I remember the Chinese woman eats dirt. Yeah, yeah well, that was man, a man, cracker. man lives in dump for ten years. I read on with that one yesterday. Yeah. I found it in my bag because I took it home, so that I'll read that when I get a minute. Yeah. Right? News. Imagine that. News. Yeah. I might read last Thursday's <laughs> Sun. <laughs> yeah. Just to catch up. Uh, do you know how he got caught? What do you mean how he got caught? He, was, lived, he lived in, he a, living dump. in a rubbish dump. Well, he what's up with that? He lived in a rubbish dump. What's no one, no one knew he was there, right? Yeah. He was living off food that had been chucked away. So a lot of people chuck away stuff that isn't off. So you can survive on that. Uh, he had a nice little place to sleep and that, an, an old mattress that was all right and stuff. Yeah. Uh, got away with it for ten years until he decided to celebrate bonfire night with some fireworks. Can <laughs> 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 you believe that? Uh, well, he, you know, he's happy that the uh, gunpowder plot was foiled <laughs> exactly. and the Guy Fawkes was beheaded. Anyway. Thus saving our system of government. There's got to be a couple of news headlines, surely. Um. Hold on, wait a minute. Bong. Here's penis man off the hook. <laughs> Bong. Man changed his name to bu 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 Bong. Dwarf to live in a glass box. <laughs> Dwarf to live in a glass box. Yeah, it's meant to be art or something. <laughs> it's not though, is it? What? <laughs> I mean, do we art? Why is, yeah, well, whose, whose idea is this? Is, is, is art or is it someone hired a dwarf to live in their box? 
It's just a box, and he can even leave when he wants, apparently. He can, yeah. like, go home hungry and go in for a walk, and he because, puts a little note. Uh, with his time in Earth, he might end up in four bits. Oh. So, just be careful. But to me, that's like that thing when I said to you about the woman in the jar. What woman in the jar? The woman in the jar. They go, oh, come and see the woman in the jar. And yeah, it's then a it big turns jar. out it's a big jar. Yeah, so it's, it's a like, big well, jar. put me yeah. in there as well, then. Exactly. It's not yeah. special. Yeah. And that's, that's the same with, with him. It's a big box, he's a small fella. What's, what's good about what that? What do you want to do, though, to compress matter? But hang on, it's not a world record-breaking attempt, it's supposed to be art. No, what's art about that? Well, I don't- What's art about that? that? Oh, can we do a show for BBC Three? Carl Pilkerton going around, what's art about that? Yeah. That is brilliant, what's art about that? I'd love that. Would you? I'd love that. Me and Steve are gonna do a thing called Is Art Rubbish? Where we'd go around and we'd chat about it. Yeah. But, um, we, well, we can hand that over to you if you want to do that. If anyone from BBC Three is listening, Carl Pilkington, what's art about that? Alright? Weird, isn't it? And what would you go around like Sensation and things like that and Saatchi and going- Dali you, and that. You put a sheep in from Elrod, what's art about that? Oh. Our butcher does it. Uh, Alright, uh, weird, isn't it? Uh, what do you make of Dali and the, the melting clocks, all that stuff? Talked about it, haven't we? Have I we? told you, yeah, told you. What was the thing there, wasn't it? Uh, he sort of milked the idea a bit. <laughs> right. Yeah, Cause sure. every- everything had a melting clock on it. It yeah. was like he had a bit of success with it once and then he just ruined it. Do you know what I mean? It's sure. like- It's like you with the monkeys. Like status quo. Yeah, or- yeah. Sure. Well, What's your favourite artist? Don't say Lowry. Lowry is my Why- why is Lowry your favourite artist? Captures life, doesn't he? Going on and In that. stick form. I know you're a big fan of Where's Wally as well, aren't you? <laughs> 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 You've never found him, have you? I've never found him yet. <laughs> no, Carl, that's not Wally, that's a stain on the table. You come <laughs> off the book again. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Listen, are we, uh, are we doing what's in a bit? What? 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 Right, what? what? We don't know what you're talking about. Player record. What? Yeah, we'll be doing what's it. Yeah, it? what's it? Coming up after the break. Uh, the film thing. The film thing. Oh, <laughs> idiot. Liberties, don't look back into the sun on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkerton. Carl, have we got the results? Yeah. Go on then, what are they? Uh, play songs of phrase. Again, okay, this, songs of phrase. The phrase. These are the songs. My girlfriend had a problem with a marrow. The answers Sinatra, Prince, Billy, uh, Bill Medley, uh, U2, Shirelles. There was also dub pistols in there. Uh, no, no, no one got all of them, Carl, obviously. Um, but we'll give it to Mark Cantan. He got, uh, what did he get, about six or something? Yeah. Well done, he's from Dublin, yes. so that's nice. Okay. Listening over there, the Irish. Yeah. Good night. Um, yeah. a German man, just thought I'd let you know this, Carl, sure. Ricky. A German man has, um, been arrested because he taught his dog to give the Nazi salute. <laughs> and then he made it do it in front of two policemen. I think it's an offence in Germany now. That's is a fascist it, with too much time on their hands. No, but is it, a, it, it's illegal for a dog to do it as well? I think so. I bet he thought he'd found a loophole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, he's been dying to do it, but he thought, well, I'm, I'm not allowed to do it. It's illegal for a human to do it. Yeah. Thought he got around it, and uh, no. For a while, it just kept doing the, uh, Basil Fawlty funny walk. <laughs> <laughs> he's going, no! <laughs> no, you're don't do that. It. Don't do the legs as well. Uh, oh. But, so the, uh, the reason I mentioned it is because he's German, and you, what were you telling me earlier about? Carl was wittering on about the Germans earlier. He was saying something about the accent. Um, it's yeah. fine with blokes, but not with women. You wouldn't want to go out with a German woman because the accent. I just it? think it's a bit manly, isn't it? Sure. Is it? Yeah, it sounds a bit hard. <laughs> I can't imagine having a nice sort of romantic chat <laughs> with someone. Well, it's not a romantic language, no. It's, it's it's quite harsh. Yeah, but that's our. No, but what I mean is, right? I can't speak any other languages apart from this one. Well, right. You're struggling one. with this one. Yeah. And what I mean is. Whereas you you really do speak the language of love. All right. It, There's some condoms. Where's my tea? Yeah. What I'm saying is, if a French woman was talking to me, I'd say, I don't know what you're talking about, love, but it sounds good. <laughs> whereas, <laughs> whereas a German, German woman, yeah. I'd go, oof. And she might be saying really nice stuff. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. But then we got talking because, do you know, like, me brother- It's sort of a prejudice, really, isn't it? In a sense. What do you mean? In a sense it's prejudice, but anyway, on you go. Yeah. Go on. But it's not really, is it? No. Let's accept, right, that at some point, about 13, 14 billion years ago, there was nothing. There was no space for the nothing to be in. There was no darkness, no light, no, no, nothing. Okay, literally nothing. Except what is nearly a point in space that contained everything in the known universe, okay? Suddenly, that exploded. And in 
a matter of minutes, the universe was pretty much as it is now. And in all the debris, in all the dust, things started to cling together, one of which was the Earth. Can I have Carl pick up the story from there? Um, probably nothing for quite a bit. OK. Yeah. Just sort of floated about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it wasn't causing a problem because it wasn't annoying anyone. No. See, we don't get a chance of that these days. No. You pop something down, someone says, move that. <laughs> Dangerous, what is it? Yeah. Back then, nothing. So it's hanging around, and if you leave something somewhere, something will sit on it. Right. <laughs> OK, if you leave something somewhere, something will sit on it, yeah? Yeah, something, something had to sort of happen, didn't it? I'll tell you what it's like. Go on. In the same way, um, Penicillin. Go on. Happened. Go on. It was the bread was sat there. It goes off. Mm. Air would have uh, created the greenness. <laughs> oh God! This sounds like the Bible. <laughs> that is that is like the Bible. Air created the greenness. That's amazing. Carry on, carry on, because I want to. I'm, I'm, in, I'm learning here. I'm learning. And once you've got something, that yeah. leads to otherness. <laughs> cross-legged listening to the yeah, wise old man. I know. What are you going to do? I'm going to write uh, a thing of how everything was created. But hang on, carry really? on, because I'm interested. Yeah. Well, so where are we? So, <laughs> so we've got, so we've got, we had greenness and now we've got so something. So the air created the greenness and then what is it? Then we have, what was Just it? Just otherness Other, from otherness. the greenness. Right. Because once other, you've got, once you've other, got... From greenness comes otherness. Once you've got one thing, others come. Yes. <laughs> the air created the greenness, <laughs> then you've got otherness. If you create something, others will come. <laughs> <laughs> well, ah, Build it and they will but come. But it's, it's sort of right in the... Yeah, no, 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 But tell me, take me, take me on, continue this, this, this story, because this is fascinating. So what, where are we now then? What, if I was to stand on the earth at this moment in time, what would I see? Um, not that much. You wouldn't want to stay. But there's greenness. Little little patches little of greenness. Little patches of greenness, okay. Little bit of rubble knocking around. <laughs> a bit of rubble, there was a bit of rubble, okay. Um, We've still got a long way to go. We want to get to life, don't we? Okay, so let's, let's, get, so, let's skip forward so, then, Carl, so, to life. So everything was right, okay? It was the right distance from the sun, okay? Yeah, but even if it, it wasn't, way, we'd, it, we'd, have, we'd have we'd still been created. No, we wouldn't. We would, have. Something no, we would wouldn't have done. Have. No, we wouldn't have. I want to hear Carl's opinion on this, Rick. I'm not interested in facts. I want to hear Carl's so opinion. So are you saying... Um, if, if the atmosphere, right, around the Earth wasn't about 99% uh, nitrogen and oxygen with 1% other gases, we'd have still had something else. Something would have been around. What would I'm not saying it might, it, might, it might be better than us, it might be worse than us. What would it look like? Um, well, it's, it's hard to say because they say, don't they, that it's the conditions that mould you into the shape and colour. Sure. Mm. And, uh, you know everything else that makes you the person that you are. OK, let's take Pluto. We know that's the farthest away. So it's, it is dark and cold there. Right. What, how do you imagine the creatures that will develop there will Big eyes like? and airy. <laughs> <laughs> but how did they evolve? How did they evolve, though? Because we evolved... They can't just... Hang on. You always say yeah. animals change to suit the conditions. I'd have thought if, if planet's dark, you don't need eyes because things that live underground or at the bottom of the ocean, they don't, they don't have um, eyes or, uh, or, or colour because there's no point. Yeah, but what I'm talking about, are we saying we're living inside Pluto or on the top of it like we're doing? Why would we live inside Pluto? Well, no, I it, it, I it, it couldn't support life, full stop. But, but um, this I mean, is one of the most ridiculous conversations we've ever had. He's seriously because everything is based on a ridiculously false premise. No, Carl, we're listen. saying now right. that the world's overcrowded. Right. There's too many people on it. Right. We're running out of houses. People are living in basements. Now that's only one step away from from being molish. <laughs> we're already going underground because we're running out of space. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, right, come on, keep it on there. I want to hear his point. Is yeah. that like being Amish? <laughs> so, uh, what you're saying is people, they don't acknowledge the, the crust of the earth. So, you're saying within five years there's going to be sort of mole like people living in basement flats well, with well, no eyes. But hold on, though, in your, in your, in, according to you, the lower they go, the colder and darker they go, the hairier and better eyes they'll have. 
Uh, well, it depends. No, I was only saying they'd have better eyes if they're on a dark planet where they're outside, so they still have to look out for things that they could trip over. If we're going, if we don't, in, if we're going underground, they're around, they're so concerned. That's the whole evolution. Is about what we don't want to trip over. I don't want to graze my knees. You've got knees. They got them on Earth. Coincidence, isn't it? Hub, hub. Do you recycle? I don't really do all that. I don't separate stuff. I don't sort of put there's the cans, there's, there's the paper. You don't do that? You just throw it away, do you? Yeah. Oh, that, that's that's bad. That annoys me. Do anything with that. that annoys me when you're just putting it in landfill, mate. Come on. Yeah. But I haven't got all the bins. There that. isn't enough room for all the bins. Yeah, we have to do... You've got a recycle box you stick outside. Yeah. What are you on about? Recycle box, yeah. I haven't got one. Well, no, you've got to, you've got to ask for one. I tried to get rid of a, um, a sofa, right? I was getting a new sofa, had the old one. You try and get rid of one of them, it's murder. Right. I called up the council, said I want to get rid of it. They said we're not coming around there till Friday. It's like a Monday. I said, it's in the way. So I put it outside. I said you put it outside, you'll get a fine. I said yeah, but you don't know where I'm going to put it outside. <laughs> yeah. So it's outside my house. Yeah. So they said well you do that. We've got your number. What's the now. sofa like? It's a beige one. Well, if we see that. <laughs> so um, they said if you if you want to pay to have it collected, we can come and get it tomorrow. Thirty quid. I said I'm not paying for it. It's madness. Yeah. So hung up, annoyed. Call me dad up. He said, oh, I saw this thing on the telly saying that you can donate your furniture to people who haven't got a sofa. Look it up on the internet. So I looked it up, there's a firm that does it. Right. Uh, right, cheeky thoughts. Called them up, said, I've got this sofa here, I want to donate it to someone who hasn't got a sofa. He said, uh, oh, what's it like, is it in good condition? Yeah, it's all right, yeah. Well, why are you getting rid of it? <laughs> I said, because we've moved into a bit of a bigger place and the sofa looks daft in the corner. It's, it's too small, so I'm getting a bigger one. There's no wrong with it. How big is it? How many people does it sit? So it depends how big you are. You can sit two people on it, but it's not the comfiest. But it's, it's in good condition. It's none of your nonsense like stuff. It was expensive right. when I bought it. He said, right. He said, uh, is it safe? So I said, what do you mean? He said, is it fag proof? So I said, I don't smoke. He said, well, go and get the, um, lift the thing up. He's got me running around looking at my sofa <laughs> and I, I wasn't giving it away. I had to lift it up, it had a picture of a fag on it. I said, yeah, it's got a picture of a fag on it. And, uh, <laughs> could, I, could I just, um, point out, uh, fag is a slang for cigarette. When he says, is it fag proof, he's not gonna open the cushion and someone's go, <laughs> YOU, IT'S ME! <laughs> <laughs> so, I should explain that straight away. <laughs> so anyway, it turned out it was fag proof. They came and picked it up, took it away, uh, that was that. <laughs> But look at the hassle. Look at the hassle it takes to get rid of something. And then they say to you, do not be dumping stuff on the street. <coughs> you know, it's, it's that thing of having to wait for certain days of the week and you can't always keep hold of something for mm. a certain day of the week because it's big. A mattress is a, it's one of them things you can't get sort of rid of. Or you can't stick it somewhere because no. it's in the way. It's a big, clumpy bit of furniture, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's not a bit of furniture, really, a mattress, but I know what you mean. Well, it's, it's a, a new sideboard. Yeah, don't, don't, don't lean on it. It's a bit, it's a bit spongy. Uh, what are you keeping it? We can't keep anything in it. It's just full of springs and stuff. <laughs> no, but you it's know what I mean? It's a piece of furniture, to be honest. Well, it should be on a bed, to be honest. It's part of a furniture bit, isn't it? Did I tell you that time when... I don't think you could even ever count a mattress as a piece of furniture. <laughs> of course you can. It's functional. And where do you stop? Is a pillow a piece of furniture? <laughs> is, is a... A, a blanket? <laughs> Oh, a nice bit of furniture you're wearing. They're my trousers. <laughs> They're furniture if you pop them up against a wall. <laughs> Did I tell you that time when we first bought a flat? Go on. Bought a flat in Manchester, right? And yeah. You, you know, when you first buy a place, it's expensive, isn't it? And it's a big bit of furniture, a flat, isn't it? So, you know, we bought a sofa, we got a table. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, you don't mean you bought a sofa, you ended up with a table. No, no. Bought, you bought, bought a sofa, sofa and a table. Yeah. Table. Yeah. Now, I was, I was, I didn't, I didn't know. <laughs> Suzanne sent you to buy a sofa, you yeah. came back with a table. Now, back then, I wasn't as wise as I am now. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> okay, hell! Oh, what was he? Some <laughs> snot in a jar. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Can I just apologise to any slot in a jar that's listening and was offended by that comment? <laughs> All right. Prizes. Yes. Them. Rockbusters. Yeah, it's uh, one of the big exciting quiz shows, and this may be one of your last chances to play. There's rumours that it's going to get ditched, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> rumours there that Carl Wilkinson, the creator and mastermind behind it, has always grown tired of it. It's <laughs> often the way. You heard them earlier on, the very best of the Stone Roses from that. We've sure, played uh, sure. I Want to Be Adored. That's one of the prizes. That's a nice little uh, Christmas compilation. Second hand now, then, really, isn't it? Second hand, yeah. yeah. 50 years of the greatest hit singles. I'll tell you, there's some great stuff on here. Oh, it opens, on. Rick, with uh, Bohemian Rhapsody.
One of the, not, one of the big, biggest, uh, number ones of all time. If you've not heard that enough already, you're followed then by, uh, John Lennon's Imagine, Candle in the Wind, Elton John, you've got, uh, all, all on sorts one of CD, Stephen. Well, it's, I think these are some of the greatest rock minds. They've chosen some of the best songs by some of the best artists. Go on. Uh, Paul McCartney's Mull of Kintyre. <laughs> 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 That's on there. Uh, we've got, uh, let me see, Cold That is pretty impressive, though, because they are real big classic number ones, as opposed to, you know, the, 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 the song by the artist they didn't really care about. You see those things on, uh, this? is not available in the shops, and it's, you know, the second best song artists have done. It seems odd that we're giving it away on XFM, because it includes, uh, Robbie Williams' Angels, yeah. uh, Atomic Kitten's Hole Again, Spice sure. Girls' Wannabe, Connie Minogue's uh, Can't Get Out of the Head, and I think it closes, well, it almost closes with Steps' Tragedy. That's the penultimate track. It ends, though. Uh, any ideas? Yes. It's a big, big hit single. But Do they know it's Christmas Band Aid? Perfect for your uh, Christmas sure, party. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, we've sure. also got the uh, Groove Armada current album. Is that yeah, from there? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And signed by the man himself, the Big Beach Boutique uh, DVD, Fat Boy Slim's uh, concert on that Brighton beach. And uh, there's all kinds of treats on there. Uh, and includes a, um, an audio commentary <laughs> by, Nor by Norman Cook. I don't know how that works. Three <laughs> hours of him going, this is where the needle almost jumps. Yeah, Watch exactly. this for I did a little bit of scratching. I'm not very good at scratching, That's but just uh, a point to that. I'm putting a, putting a different track. You'll see me there. Yeah. There's the crowd loving it. Excuse me. I'm just waiting. This is where I, I put, I go <laughs> from, uh, I go from Conga Squad to Basement Jacks. Yeah. Look forward to that. That's one of mine. I'll pop on what you see there. I've got, I've got Praise You Ready on it. <laughs> yeah, I've just got, That's got that. That's slightly dusty. I've just had to wipe that down with a damp rag. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, look forward to that. Plus, uh, I suppose this is good if you're a fan. This is a uh, box set of the first series of Linda Green. I think a new series starts this week or has already started. I'll yeah. tell you what I found when I was clearing up, Rick, because I know this is not a big movie this week. We normally give away a big movie. Uh, I was moving house this week and yeah. I found a video that you're more than welcome to if you're a fan. But um, no, it stars Kurt Russell. Executive decision. <laughs> <laughs> I've got that to give away if you're interested. Uh, Executive decision with Steven Seagal in a uh, cameo as well. So, uh, <laughs> oh, I think he's I think he's on TV this week, Rick. So if you miss it this coming <laughs> Friday, you don't tape it this Friday. Well, here it is on video. Bring videos. it in because I think Carl's excited about that. I think Carl would like to win that, There's wouldn't he? Great prizes well, there. How about if you come up with an extra Rockbusters today? For the, for the, like, the bonus prize. I don't think I'm the man for the job, Carl. I think it has to come from your unique yeah. take on the world. Carl, you don't, I don't think you've quite worked out why you're funny. Right, and just a quick example, uh, the f one of the first ones we did, it was like AK and the clue was Exploding Pet, yeah. and it was Atomic, Atomic Kitten, Kitten, right? Yeah. So you understand how it works now. These right. are your clues. The first one, <laughs> um, that army has got some well nice trenches. <laughs> so that army has got some well nice trenches. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and the initials there are DW. Do you okay. write some of the questions for 15 to 1? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. So that army has got, got some a similar well, phrasing. Nice trench, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, the second one. Um, what are the initials there, Carl? That person. D D W. D W. Yeah. Right. Uh, the second one. The top of them curtains are all wrecked. All the materials all worn. <laughs> He acts it out We've got to get him on telly. We have got to get him on telly because his little face and his so his gestures. That's and the second one. The initials being H V. Okay, the top of those curtains are wrecked. All the materials are all worn out. Right, H V. <laughs> and, and the final one. Um, here's the final clue. Um, I was in Texas the other week. Right, I tripped and landed on my knees in a puddle. <laughs> <laughs> what's the, what's uh, the initials? WH for that one. So I was in Texas, I tripped up, landed on my knees in a puddle. So that's WH. Incredible. <laughs> okay, so the first c clue was, uh, that army has got some well nice trenches. Yeah. That was DW. Who's that? Dandy Warhols. <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> All right. That's good, yeah. Uh, the second okay. one. The top of them curtains are wrecked, all yeah. the material is worn. Yeah. HV. That's, yeah. uh, Holly Valance. Oh, he got a phone call for a woman saying that I haven't heard it, and she went, she was, he was talking to her off air, and she went, eh, what is it? Uh, someone says, oh, them curtains, she went, all oh, right, she said, you know the thing around the top of the, um, curtain is a palmet, not a valance, and he went, cut her off. Yeah, but <laughs> my auntie's always making valances on everything. I'll tell you about that next week, right? <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Right. Is this the one that farted for five minutes? Yeah, yeah, the very same, <laughs> yeah. right? So, we'll talk about that. Uh, I was in Texas, I tripped up, I landed on my knees in a puddle, WH, yeah. uh, Wet Knee Houston, right? Wet Knee Houston. Yeah. So You're a maniac. Rockbusters. Well, this is what, what they're all, all reasoning and writing about. Absolutely. Um, before 
you get the clues. Let me just remind you of the prizes you're playing for. We've got the Manic Street Preachers Greatest Hits on DVD. We've got the film Human Traffic on DVD. Uh, we've got the Best Air Guitar Album 2, uh, on CD. Uh, Groove Armadas, is this their current album? Yeah. I guess it's not selling very well, they're still trying to promote that. You can have that as well. If you are a fan of the Ford Fiesta TV ad, of the Vodafone TV adverts, you will love the- You will uh, love- you didn't <laughs> think you liked indie. <laughs> well, you do. <laughs> exactly, and that's got, uh, Feeder and Travis and Badly Drawn Boy and all sorts on there. Plus, my own copy, six ninety nine. it cost me, uh, The Pelican Brief, starring Julia Roberts and Denzel Washington. If you've not seen that, panned and scanned on VHS. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what right. are the clues? Do you what know what a pelican? Uh, I read the other day that has mm -hmm. to turn its head upside down to eat. Give us the clues. So, Rockbusters- Well, it? let me just explain. A, a bird, a bird has a, has a gullet, an esophagus and a gullet is all in one thing. It hasn't got peristalsis, which is the movement that we have that can make food. Uh, so a bird has to- can only rely on gravity. Yeah. So, it- it has to have its head up and has to shake, it can't eat- You upset. were gonna say that, weren't you, Carl? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Rockbusters, um, you mentioned it earlier, one of last week's was, it's a cryptic clue and then some initials. I was in Texas, I fell in a puddle on my knees, knees got wet, uh, WH, wet knee Houston. Yeah. That's the sort of thing, thing we- Use of the with. word knee twice there in the cryptic <laughs> clue <laughs> and in the final And the word answer. wet, I think you're yeah, 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 which is wit. Yeah. Right. So, fine. Good. So, um, there's three of them. It's email only, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Sure. Load of stuff to win. Here they go. Right, the first one. I'm writing these down. Go on. Making it of them. Um, the fella has only got one badge left. <laughs> <laughs> the fella has only got one badge left. Yeah. What are the initials? That's just E. Just E? Oh, just E. Just E. The okay. fella has only got one badge left. This is either a solo artist or a band. Yeah. Um, second one. The unmarried lady is a friend I eat out with. Say that again? The unmarried lady is a friend I eat out with. The unmarried lady is a friend I eat out with. Yeah. What's M the initial? M D. M D. M D. And finally, I really, really, uh, I really, really love that woman. I love everything she does. That's M. No, give, I us think that, give us that one again. I really, really love that woman. I love everything she does. And that's. Right? M. Okay. I know, I've got that one. Right. Okay. That's great, it's great. That's it's Rockbusters. Mm -hmm. It's the results. Yeah. Carl, yeah. Yeah. give us the winning answers. Right, Steve, you search for a winner. I so will. At yeah, random. We can yep. slip into that. So, the first one was, the fella's only got one badge left. I, I have no idea. The initial was E. Go on. Will I get out the answer now, Yeah, Steve? give the answer, yeah. I think on. you should. That was his last sticker. <coughs> yeah? E Elastica. The band Elastica. I'm right, not doesn't sure- work, no. doesn't work. The word- the word sticker and the and the ba- yeah. and a badge are not interchangeable. And it's not his last sticker, it's elastica. Yeah, but, like, his last sticker. So, <laughs> someone's got it. Oh! Um, so, so say a different word and it works. <laughs> oh, so if the band is is elastica, then it works. <laughs> God, if only Justin would have named it different. if she'd have just gone, let's call it elastica, <laughs> then we'd have- yeah. Second one. Um, what was the clue? The unmarried lady is a friend they eat out with. Go on. That's Miss Dynamite. Miss Dynamite? Doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, but it's been running for four weeks. We've done- we've done the obvious Doesn't ones. work. Miss, Doesn't uh, work. Miss Dynamite. Again, if she'd have called herself <laughs> Miss Dynamite, it would work. She didn't. <laughs> See, what, what's happening is pop stars are letting you down by naming <laughs> themselves incorrectly for your clues. Those don't work. They don't count. <laughs> and the last one, <laughs> I really, really love that woman. I love everything she does. That yeah. was M. Yeah. That well, was Madonna. Yeah, Madonna. I'm, I'm going to give you that. That work. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, that's the end of that feature. Until you can get ones that work. Okay. So you won't hear any more of that because <laughs> it's rubbish. You're running out already. So rockbusters. Um, we, you know, it's a little clue. Some initials. Three different clues. You email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk, you can win the, the load of stuff that we've got. So, um, first one, um, here's the clue. Stop throwing that fruit about. Oh, Ooh. Yeah. What's the initial? That's CB. 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 Stop throwing that fruit about. Yeah. Right. Is Anders listening? Has he emailed us in yet? Anders, not had, a, not had any response from Anders. I'll keep, uh, keep I hope he hasn't stopped listening. Because right. he doesn't like the show. He's gone off. I hope he hasn't gone off the show. <laughs> so, Go uh, the second one, um, 
That Scottish fella has made an error. That Scottish fella has made an error. Yeah, that's that's M. M. Right, right. that Scottish fella has made an error. Right. Okay. And uh, the last one, uh, God, you can make a right load of toast with them. <laughs> you can make a right load of toast with them. Yeah. All right. What's the that's, that's G. G. I was thinking it might be bread for a minute, but no. Uh, G. So, uh, so just very quickly, stop throwing that fruit about, CB. <laughs> I've got, I've got the last one. All right. Scottish fella. <laughs> it doesn't work. It doesn't count. It doesn't count. Well, that Scottish fella has made an error. That's M. And uh, God, you can make a right load of toast with M. That's G. Email in Ricky Dot Gervais at Um, first one was stop throwing that fruit about. Stop throwing that fruit about. The that answer was is C B. That was Chuck Berry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course it is. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'll give you that. Um, the one that you've worked out, I'll do next. The yeah. uh, God, you make a load of toast with them. That Grillers. was G. Gorillas. Gorillas, though, isn't it? Gorillas. Um, and the middle one <laughs> was that Scottish fellas made an error. That was Mystique. <laughs> <laughs> Mystique. <laughs> Mystique. <laughs> So, <laughs> oh, did anyone get that? Extraordinarily, almost all the people who emailed in. I'm really, I'm going to think it's us then, it's because I, I, I was thinking mistake. I was thinking muck error yeah. and muck mistake, and but mistake. Yeah. yeah. So, right. do you want to pick a winner? Yeah. <laughs> right, uh, okay. Look, quick um, query for you. This is from uh, Jay. He's got a problem here. Um, he says, uh, my parents won't let me ditch my studies. He's currently reading modern languages at London University. Sure. He wants to follow his dream, but his parents won't let him, of being a dancer, Carl. Worse than that, he says that they're trying to arrange a marriage to a bunch of, uh, minging daughters of people they know from good families. He doesn't know what to do, so he's got the arranged marriage coming along, and he's also got, you know, he basically wants to, you know, wants to be a dancer. His parents are forcing him into, um, something more practical. Well, the first thing, right, I don't think Live the, your dreams? the arranged marriage thing is such a bad idea. Okay. Because I think too many people go on looks, right, and then you soon get bored of that, mm -hmm. and you find out the person who you're knocking about with is actually not your type. Right. right. Why don't you arrange marriages for people? Well, uh, I'm just saying, right. So I'd say, uh, Jay, go along with that. I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. I mean, if they're really ugly, then you know, don't go along with it. But if they're half bad, yeah, put up with it. That's sure. right. The dancing. Brilliant. Right. <laughs> That's that solved. Brilliant. I want to be a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> After I did the boxing, right, I joined, uh, joined a dancing thing just near, um, Man United's ground, right, called Twiggies. Right. Um, <laughs> went it? along, I wanted to learn some moves. How old I, were you? Well, it was when Michael Jackson was, like, pretty big, so, about 80, 83, 84, 85, All something right. like that, around there. Um, wanted to do it, um, when I went, it was shut and it had become like a warehouse for uh, toilet rolls. <laughs> so in a way, I wonder what would have happened. Sorry, sorry, how is that an anecdote about you going through <laughs> dancing? Well, You've I'm told me before, you you did boxing for a while, you did dancing for a while, you had a true fight in the boxing, you didn't <laughs> even get in the pl That's not an- You- yeah, Imagine if that was a film! This is nice. Um, a boy's dream of becoming a dancer. <laughs> oh, it's shut. Next on. I mean, you, how is that a story? Yeah, that was Billy Elliot. Do you think he would have won, <laughs> he won quite as many awards? Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Footloose. All right, <laughs> yeah. I'm fed up, they've banned it. Let's go. Oh, it's shut. <laughs> um, do, 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 do. Yeah. Flash dance. First, there was. Ah, oh, it's a warehouse. <laughs> Never mind. You. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, you'll find something else. I, I, can't, I think I got a go kart after that. <laughs> I bought a motorised go-kart and kept myself busy with that. So, <laughs> there's always, there's always other just things. Just think, Alan Bennett has to sit down and really sweat over his stories. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So he just opens his mouth. You are a living Alan Bennett character. So that's oh. that. So, so that's that solved. Well, Jay, don't worry about that. There's, um, no emotional there, emotional problems, I can foresee. Uh, if you follow that advice. So the advice there that. is do an arranged marriage. It, 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 if she's not If she's not ugly. minging. Yeah. She's not completely minging. Yeah. Uh, and don't worry about dancing, get a go-kart. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> this is XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Jemaze with me, Stephen Merchant. Hello. Uh, you're listening to the best of, basically, Carl Bilkington. <laughs> you don't talk to anyone, do you, in the week? You just hide in your little sound booth thing and you really don't talk to anyone, do you? Much? Not really. No. no I mean, you, you know, you might call up. Yeah. Uh, but no, I keep myself to myself. Yeah. Then you don't get bogged down in the office politics and stuff. Sure. Yeah. Is there a lot of office politics here? I don't know. I don't get involved in it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Proved your point. So, so, so when um, we're away and we're like out of action, who, who, other than Suzanne, who will you talk to of the day? 
How will you get a sort of uh, uh, f feedback from the world? How will you get sort of like input and? I always, if I've ever, uh, if I've ever, I've got like a a question on anything. The internet's sat there, and I can just go on online and find out. The what internet I is is good. It's brilliant, but. It, it's not all verified. It's not all factually, necessarily factually accurate. Anyone can put things onto the internet. It's the, you know, that's, it's, it's freaks and things that put on well, here's things one, like- Well, right? here's, here's one that I read in the week, right? Go on. <laughs> About this woman. Yeah. Uh, she was a bit of a punk. And, um, to get her hair done like she wanted it- Super glue. Right, no. She mm. got lard, apparently it's a popular thing, you might, you might know. Um, put lard on your head. Yeah. And you put it in the oven. <laughs> now, Apparently, the heat that you get from the oven is different from the sort of heat you get from an air dryer, right? And she had to do that to get the style that she wanted. But anyway, uh, she comes into some money or whatever, treats herself to a microwave, right? It doesn't, it's not true, Carl. Opens the door, jams the things, you know, like the little catch, so, so the microwave works. She jams it with a screwdriver or a knife or something. Yeah. Puts the microwave on, sticks her head in, boils her brain. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Right? Well, why is that ridiculous? <laughs> Boils her brain. She boiled her brain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she boiled her brain. And this is what's good about the internet. I went straight from that, and there was a subject about brains. And do you know that Russell Gr Crowe, when he dies, is is given his his brain to charity or something, some sort of <laughs> some people who can do stuff right. with it. She gave hers to Pot Noodle. <laughs> Ah, Vesta, yeah. Oh, that's boiling a sort of skull. Yeah, that's that's not true. No. It's not true, Carl. No. Just urban myths. Someone made it up. Yeah, for a laugh. They're they're just too convenient. Urban myths. Everyone to you can tell an urban myth not true again because it's always this happened to a mate of mine and and the, and the, when you say what happened then they go don't know that was it was it was that it was it someone boiled a brain and that was it there was no <laughs> more story. Were there any dates locations you, it, times? I think it was in Belgium. There's that there's that there's that <laughs> <laughs> there's that one that a bloke right was going to get a phone call at four o'clock to find out if his business was, you know, okay, right? And if, if he didn't get the phone call, he knew he was, um, broke, destitute. So, uh, uh, uh dead on four o'clock, the phone didn't ring, so he went up to the, the, the roof, his office, and he jumped off to commit suicide. And as he was passing his window, the phone was ringing. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, it didn't happen. Didn't happen. Think it through. Think it through. Who, who, who told that story? Who told that story as he hit the pavement at 120 miles an hour? He's the only person who could have known those, that series of incidents. Also, why didn't and he he's wait, as his life's at stake, why didn't he wait till five past? I said, I'm gonna give it five minutes just in just case. Just in case the lives I, are busy. Yeah. And this, and what sort of, what sort of bloke goes, uh, I'll call you at four, okay, if your business, well, call me anyway. No, no, if I don't call exactly four, then, uh, no, you yeah. commit suicide. Commit suicide? <laughs> I would, because if I don't call at four, uh, that's the end of it. Well, call me anyway. No, that's not the way I work. <laughs> why can't you just call me and tell me the other way? Well, I'm telling you how I do it. <laughs> if you're bust, I don't call. Can't you just call to verify in case something goes wrong? What if he's engaged? If he won't be engaged? <laughs> just commit suicide at four, please. <laughs> it, it didn't happen, Carl. Uh, the, the other one, right? A bloke, right? Uh, he's, he's on a, uh, train station, and, uh, uh, that's how I heard it, um, uh, he's, uh, uh he's waiting for his, uh, a crew station, whatever, and, um, he shits himself, uh, as you do, <laughs> and so he goes, oh, my well, train's in five minutes, I need, so he runs across to Millets and goes, quick, Levi's, 36, the bloke just puts it in a bag, he runs onto the train, uh, he goes into the, the toilet, takes his, uh, um, trousers and pants off. He's soiled. Yes. And pants. Throws them out of the window. I won't be needing those again. Cleans himself off. Open the bags. It's a jacket. Oh. No, he didn't have a goal. At what point did he go into it and go, go, quick, Levi's 36? And the bloke went, sorry, Levi's 36? What, a pair? Oh, no, no, no. Shall I wrap them? Them? It. It. Shall I wrap? <laughs> Just wrap whatever it is. Do you want to look? No. I'm not looking when you're putting it in the bag, please. Right? <laughs> uh, well, 36 mm. white stories. Well, well no, don't say anything. <laughs> I've told you 36 Levi's. <laughs> yeah. put it in a bag yeah. and charge me for it. Yeah. I don't uh, want to discuss it further. Yeah. There was one, um... Here we go. There was one about a woman whose yeah. husband died. 
<laughs> and she had him cremated. Yeah. And made, uh, made like a little egg timer out of him. Oh. And she said, I did that so it can still help around the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> well, that might be true. That might be a joke. That's quite sweet. That no, might be that true. That is true story, again. It was all No, not again, because the ones I just told weren't. Nor is the boiling the brains in a bag, curry, microwave. <laughs> Head story. True. Yeah. That's all. Um, I'd like to play a beautiful song now by Cat Stevens called <coughs> Diddy White. It's, it, it's lovely. A song for the lovers room? Yeah. The big sell. <laughs> I'd worked on recently, right? Bathroom, retiled. Yeah. Right? It's been a nightmare. Polish fella. Right. Not a word of English, which makes it hard. Mm. I've got him in as a professional to do it. He's sticking grout down the toilet. <laughs> You know, when after they put like the grout in the tiles to finish it off, yeah. anything that's left, he didn't put it in the bin and get dispose of it properly. Mm. He stuck it down the toilet, yeah. and now it's there. The grout's there at the bottom of the toilet. Is it really? Yeah, with a screw in it. Well, you can drain it, can't you? You can turn the water off, get rid of it, drain the water. No, off. it wants him to go around the U bend. Well, no, you get it out there. You dry it off when you say there's no water in there. Well, just stick I've your hand in. Get your hand in there. Why don't you put a, a, a well, marigold Last time glove. I did that. Once, last time you called up when I had my hand down a grid, and you were going, "What are you doing? Get someone out to do that." You called up here, I was oh, up to my shoulder, Steve, in like, glunge. <laughs> <laughs> what annoys me, Rick, is he makes up his own words. Well, I'm gonna use that for flannimals, mate. Do you know the carrier bag problem? Sure. I was in, I was in the supermarket, yeah. and uh, it's that point when they'd, uh, they turn round and said, do you want a carrier bag? And I said, yeah, I bought like milk, loaf, I think I bought some, uh, pikelets. Some what? Uh, <laughs> That's a pikelet! It's like a thin crumpet. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There's Pike a word I'd get rid of. Pikelet. There's a word I would get rid of. Thin crumpet. I can, I've got time to say thin crumpet. I do yeah. not need a specific, specific thin word. Thin crumpet. But, um, uh, these, uh, these, that's not a crumpet. Why? Two things. <laughs> Call it a pikelet. The thing is, fuck off. I'd, I'd spent over a tenner anyway. Right. right. I get to the till. What? It, can you make a, a pikelet by squashing a crumpet thin? <laughs> it's tough what? to. Oh, I've tried that. What if you cut one in half? No, it doesn't. It's not the same. No? I've, I've tried how squashing thick a crumpet. How dense is a crumpet that you need a thin Depends where you go. They've got thicker. I'm not. I'm not enjoying the thicker crumpet at the moment. Why? <laughs> because the outside burns and the inside does nothing. It's like eating dough. I've, I've cut them out of my diet. Have you? Yeah, well, you did, you're straight to Pikelets now, is it's it? It's also Pikelets. because it's not the 1950s anymore. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so I bought all this stuff. It's over a tenner. Uh, she said, do you want a carrier bag? I said, of course I do with all this, you know. Yeah. She said, five pence. I said, you what? She said, five pence for a carrier bag. I said, I come here all Good. the time for the Pikelets. No, I'm right behind this. Right behind this. Mm. Why? Charging for carry bags, yeah, absolutely. Think, Lazy like, bastards. I take carry bags down the supermarket every time I go down there. Yeah, we've got a drawer full of carry reuse, bags. Reuse, I use no, them. Reuse Steve, them. can I put, just put a question in? Go on. I do normally, I oh. reuse them. Oh. But I didn't know I was on my way home from work that day. Fine. Yeah. But this is the problem. Up. So be it. So That's go, you bought pages with a nose. 5p, otherwise you carry yeah. one with you. And you've got another one. You got right, one so I said, oh. I said, how's that going to work? How's my five pence going to help the environment? Typical. That is the attitude. That sums it up, yeah. doesn't it? Sums well, it, it up. Goes what can I do? Else, it? It's just the turtles. Me think. It's the turtles. Right, yeah. Yeah, turtles. That's right. They get caught up in them, yeah. Terrible. She said, she said. They think they're a jellyfish and they go, they swallow it. Yeah, and choke. So I said, right, so it's all right. I can, I can kill a turtle, can I, for five pence? You're not that bothered, then? Why do you want to kill what? a turtle at all? Because if carrier bags shouldn't be out there, yeah. ban them. But don't say, you're killing turtles with free carrier bags. If you want to kill a turtle, five pence. Oh, there you go, there's five pence. I don't kill a turtle. <laughs> That's what's annoying me. It's not compulsory, though, is it? But what they're saying is that that five pence goes towards something, doesn't it? She said, we can't give you carrier bags anymore because you're killing turtles. She, there's no way. She said, <laughs> we can't give you... Carl Pilkington, stop killing fucking turtles. Five pence. All I'm saying is, if carrier bags are killing turtles, stop making carrier bags. Because the thing is, I can afford two carrier bags. Two turtles are dead since I've been going in there. So, oh, so, what, so d does it matter? Does it matter that much or not enough or what? What's the point here? There could be for that 5p, you could get a little fella out there, when he sees a turtle going, he goes and sticks his finger down his throat. But what taste are they getting out of a jellyfish anyway? Wow, <laughs> well they- Carrier bag's better, innit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it uh, gives- oh, 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 it's pikelet. <laughs> Someone threw a perfectly good pikelet away. <laughs> Talking about the earth, Carl is going around the earth. I've only done Egypt so far. And what do you think of it? The, probably the, the, the greatest and earliest so civilizations. Yeah, yeah just hang up on about that, I thought. Well, yeah. And it's like, that's slowing them down, I think. Unlike the English, yeah. we don't drone on about our great past. No, no but we shouldn't. Yeah. I don't think we should. Carl, Move on. you go on about doing boxing when you turned up once and got battered by Leroy. Yeah, because you asked me about it. 
Right. But the thing is, they're constantly, it's like they haven't moved on. Uh, everywhere you go, you see the Sphinx or a pyramid on right. something. And it builds it up too much so that when you actually get there, you feel like you've seen it so many times that it doesn't impress you that much. But I like the, uh, you know, it's, it's different. I liked all the, you know, locals and stuff and the way they are and that. And that's that's good, they? isn't it? How are they? Just a lot of old people. Yeah. A lot of old and the old and the young mix more than our, our lot do. Uh, there was only a couple of things that I didn't like and that was uh, the toilets. The toilets are pretty depressing. Sure. Why? What's up with them? Just, um, it's just a hole in the ground, isn't it? Right. And I, I like the toilet, it's sort of, you know, me time. And to sort of go in one of them, you don't want to hang around. It's yeah. sort of, you just want to do the job and get out, but my insides don't work like that. So you like to sort of relax a bit. And, <laughs> uh, and you can't do that there, because you've got flies whizzing around your head. And uh, there was one time when we were out and about, and I'd had a bit of hummus or something. Because that's you can't get away from all that. Mm. I'd been dipping my bread in it, and I suddenly thought, oh, it barely feels funny. Got to find a toilet. Cut through this market. Didn't know one was there, but you sort of smell it. It's like really? I'm getting close to one. Yeah, it stinks. <laughs> Go in. There's like, like a fella sat there, really old. He must have been about 93, about two teeth. Uh, sat there with a rag, and you have to pay him to use the toilet. What's the rag for? He doesn't wipe your ass for you. I don't know. I don't know. But well, the, did he the, or the toilet's never been cleaned by the looks of it. I had to give him like five Egyptian pounds, whatever that is. I don't know how much that is. But I don't know what he's doing for that money because the place had never seen a mop. So I go in there, open the door, and it's like one of them holes in the ground. I go, oh god, I can't use that. Push the next door open. That's the same. You know, get to the end one, open it. Normal. Normal toilet. All right. Ding dong. Brilliant. Sit down there, do what I do, look round, no toilet paper. Oh, no. He's waving the rag over the top of the cubicle. Yeah. More money. Ten pound. <laughs> so I'm thinking, oh, God. I'm thinking, can I just get up? Because it was quite a clean, you know, I, I thought... I <laughs> it was to... quite a clean drop. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm thinking... Don't they oh, use water, though? Don't they use water? Well, they have a hose pipe, yeah. Yeah. But I didn't fancy that. Well, that's cleaner, though, isn't it? A hose pipe. I really no, get in there proper wash. No, it's Why? Egg. How can it be? <laughs> Why? Because that's just going to... That's that's not going to clean it properly. It's going to get rid of some bits, isn't it? It's like when you clean a car. Yeah, use a hose, but where's a sponge? <laughs> <laughs> sure. So, uh... Yeah, yeah, so, that's true. Oh, you, God! You rinse I off just, a plate, but then but you always just, give a little wipe exactly, as well. Exactly, but I like it. That's when the bloke knocks on the door and goes, you need sponge? Yes. <laughs> so I'm in there, I look at the door, there's no handle on the door. So I'm, I'm trapped in there anyway. Someone's oh. nicked the handle. So I can't open the door. I'm sat there, there's no toilet paper. I'm calling, uh, I'm calling, like, the people who I'm out there with. Did you bring, yeah. did they bring you some toilet paper then? Um, no, what well, they got it from the, like, the fella with the... Oh, yeah, right. so you should have paid for some right. on the way in. So I think yeah. that's what you do. But they don't, they don't give you a full, a full roll. They give you, like, a strip. Right. Which I'm pretty wasteful with toilet paper. Mm, well, I, I prefer learn, to do a good job, use it up, replace <laughs> it, rather yeah. than five sheets. I've never done that in my life. Right. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> my brother taught me something. When he was in the army, he said you used to have to sort of put your hand through it, get it all, then use that paper to get it off your hand. What? When you're in the army, yeah. they're taught survival techniques. Right. And they said if you're a court with very little toilet paper... <laughs> it's a survival technique. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not like... Yeah. What did he die? <laughs> died of a dirty arse. <laughs> oh. uh, hold on, wait a minute. Right, what is this technique? You get the toilet paper. Right. Use two sheets. Right. Fold it over so you've got... Normally, to one sheet, there's two ply. You've right. got four ply. Right. So it's, a sort of, it's like a bog glove, a bog paper glove. Yeah, so you put your hand through it so you make a hole. Yeah. What do you mean? Make you a hole? Make a hole so your hand goes through it. Yeah. Then you can wipe your, wipe your ass with that. What, and with then, your hand? Yeah, and then the toilet paper that's left, you pull it off like that and you wipe your fingers with it. So you've still got shit on your hand? <laughs> this is horrible! Yeah, why, don't you just wipe, why don't you just wipe your ass with the toilet paper? Because you've only got a couple of sheets because you're in the jungle, right? And it's survival. Oh, God, no. so, so, survival so what's the difference between wiping Maybe you your ass with your hand and trying to get shit off your hand, <laughs> or wiping your ass with the toilet paper and pulling your fucking trousers up? <laughs> I don't know why this is a technique. That's some sort of mad sergeant's idea. What I do, boys, is I like to smear shit all over my face and then use the one sheet of toilet to wash my face off. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense at all. Don't Should me. I suggest something for you? You like wiping your ass with your hand. 
You don't like paper and water, you like a sponge. One of those big foam hands that you see at sporting, <laughs> sporting events. events. So you just yeah. go in with that, like Kenny Everett. You go in there, with two big exposure, you sit down, you wipe your ass, you just leave yeah. them, you just leave And then there. you can cheer about it as you leave. Whatever it will do. Be careful with the giant sponge finger that it doesn't go up the arse and cause damage. That is a problem. <laughs> Probably. No. Uh, that's the darkness on uh, XFM 104.9. Berlin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what other rude words are there? Cock. Yeah, it's, that is rude. Yeah. Um, especially now, at, especially at Christmas. Especially at Christmas. It's yeah. Time for families. Oh no. Now listen. Time for family. Cock. Now, Ian. Yeah. Who is your fourth? We need a lead singer in this mega group, the Monoliths of Rock. Uh. Who we got? Lemmy, we've got, we've Keith got, Richards. We've got, we've got Keith Richards on guitar. We've got Lemmy on bass. Yeah. We've got Keith Moon on skins. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Some terminology coming out there. Yeah. Yeah. Who's doing the Vox? Uh, Who's given Golden Tonsils Award? Uh, Robert Plant. He's gone for Plant. He's yeah. gone for Plant. A lot of track there, names there. There is the group. The lineup is Mo Moon, uh, Lemmy. Richard Plant, okay. Now a uh, competition, Steve. Name that name that group. Okay. What's the best the best heaviest rock name ever? Sure. <laughs> this, is, okay. this is obviously not a name that already exists. No. Okay. Um, my mate of mine yourself? came up with. I think it was um, uh, Brain Hammer, <laughs> which which right. I like. Um, yeah. Velvet Nazi six six six. Sure. So we want the heaviest, yeah. most mental piece of. Death metal, head banging, bleeding out of your brains, rock, axe attack. Okay? <laughs> Please welcome to the stage, Christ on a bike. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome to the stage. Oh, look at you! <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Yeah. That would freak out the metal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cheeky. <laughs> yeah. Oh, now listen. They need a manager. They need someone who could introduce them. They need someone to stand astride them. Who is the leader now? Who is the king of all that rocks? Well, it's obviously Tommy Vance, isn't it? <laughs> Do you know what worries me, Rick? I, we've said Vance a lot today. I'm wondering if people, the kids today, do they know Tommy Vance? Are they what do you think Ian? If they don't know, they shouldn't be listening. Okay. <laughs> So, Vance is their manager, he needs to- they're on at Wembley, he's got them on at Wembley, they're the, they've got a- they're, they're the greatest rock band of all time. We need the name. Please, please welcome to the stage. What are they called? We'll Phone uh, in, we'll email in, um, and the prize, we're gonna get some- We'll rummage through the bins as get Carl some, Get does. some old tat like Carl we'll does, some, some VHSs, <laughs> some CDs, greatest air guitar Peter ever. Peter Max. Yeah. What's the- do we need to give out the numbers and well, stuff? Well, can email, don't can't they? Phone you don't want to talk to me, and seriously. <laughs> no, you don't want to- you know, you know when, uh, what, what's, what's his name says to Agent Starling as she's going to meet Hannibal, don't let him inside your head. Yeah. Don't talk to the listeners, Ian. <laughs> exactly, it's very much the same Please thing. don't let- don't I'm, I'm a bit- I'm a bit uh, concerned that my email's gonna be besieged by people sending you links to how to clean out the B-Day, mm. um, well, that's <laughs> the right. rest of the week. But what's the most- the most mental head-bleeding, banging, brain hammer operation <laughs> this band can be called? Call what, in. Uh, Rick, because I always- it always amuses me if you- I mean, I know it's cruel to put you on the spot, but so some of your former band names have always amused me. Well, the worst- <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> The worst one? Well, I'll just, I'll just leave this- has a, Ricky's had a number of bands over the years. What was the, uh, The worst one? Uh, ready? Re get ready to play that record, because I don't want- I don't want any aftermath. No, hang on, before you tell me, what was the one- because you keep- these pictures of you, like, when you knew Romantic keep on being published, but- That was Shauna dancing. Yeah, but someone- That's pretty bad. But some- someone told me they were like, oh, ask him about when he tried to be Bon Jovi. Can you imagine such a thing? I know. I know the name you're thinking of. Right, here we go. Play the record. Immediately I say this. <laughs> ready? The Sacred Hearts. <laughs> Play a record. Blair. On XFM 104.9. I forget the name of that track, but it's good. Good song. Thanks very much. Oh, good song. Yeah. Oh, right. I, I just thought, thought you were giving yeah. his opinion. Right, yeah. go on. The what? Are we still on the air? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are we doing? Merry Christmas. We got someone on the line. Oh, right, right, right. He's here. Who's that? Ricky! Ricky! It's, uh, yeah, go on. It's Jonathan, how are you? Good. It's, 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 only, it's only TV, it's Jonathan Ross. Ross, turn your radio down, you idiot. I'm here. I like to, uh, I haven't got a radio on. What are you talking about? We can hear the feedback. 
Well, I haven't got it. It's not my fault. It's your incompetent radio station. And also, know. didn't you hear we said, don't call in, we don't want to speak to the listeners. What's yeah, well, are I'm, you, not uh, I'm not a listener. I'm a visitor to your shores. I'm special. You know that for well. I know you're special. Right. Yeah, exactly. What, have you, have you got a name for the band? Yeah, you ready? Yeah. Blump. <laughs> B-L-U-M-P. I tell you for what, you can't have a normal word. If it's the monolith band of all time, if it's the be you can't have a regular word. It doesn't make sense. How can you have a regular word? All these ideas you've come up with are rubbish. You need a word which only stands for that one thing. No one's heard it before. No one will use it again. Blump. I can't help but feel that that's a more appropriate name for maybe one of Ricky's bands. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I, I love seeing that picture of him in that band, you see it everywhere these days. <laughs> he was like a, a girl. He was like a little girl in a suit. <laughs> it's like a girl, a little dyke at a wedding. <laughs> what was that? It's gotta be the, ke the kettle calling the pot black, surely. Yeah, I've always got nothing but 100% heterosexual. You, we, we're not sure about. There's not anything wrong with it, I know that, but look at you. <laughs> yeah, to get that in, there's not anything wrong with it. I'm Jonathan Ross. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, I, was, uh, I was thinking the other day, right? Uh, yeah. you, at the comedy awards, yes, sir. you and I say some awful things about poor, poor celebrities. Poor has been celebrities with coke addictions and, and yeah, fat lips and faces that have had, that, that where surgery's gone wrong and that, everything. You, you, and they're, when they're on the show, they're going, oh, you yeah. look lovely. Yeah, oh, I'm nice so to them. Well, I'm nice to them to their face, but obviously, when I'm not with them, I like to let my true feelings be known. <laughs> <laughs> is that, is what's wrong with that? Uh, well, I'll tell you what, you can get anything off your chest you want on this show. Any celebrities you want to talk about? There's no one listening. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, just between me and you. Listening. A lot of people listen. They listen to my show, and after they've had a few hours of, you know, good laughs, they like something bland to just call them down afterwards. So they flip over. We know this happens. Did you, um, uh, did you mention my, um, DVD on your radio show? You know what? Show? I forgot to. I forgot oh, to mention it. Christ! I forgot to mention it. I meant to mention by the office, but I forgot to mention it. And then I thought afterwards, it's not like he needs the cash, is it? You know, it's, <laughs> there not, we like go. It, it's not like he needs it. It's not like it is, but he's probably earned more money in a short space. You're like a lottery winner, and you've got about as much taste. You're like one of those burglars who's won the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> I have. I'm dressed like an Albanian like window cleaner at the moment. I'm glad from Reading who won the lottery and now what he, he's fritting it away on what I'm... I do feel lovely. sorry for my neighbours. I've moved into a, you know, really nice place. Now, it, I feel like it's the hillbillies. No, it's the, nice he's moved in, though, because it's nice. He's given them something to sort of talk about behind your back. <laughs> <laughs> You've right. united the whole block. Right, go, go and play with some Japanese wind-up toys now, I'm Ross. going home to play uh, Mario Double Dash with my son. It's going to be a good afternoon. I uh, phoned you once after I finished my show. It's about five minutes past three. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and I I don't mind if you, you know, I said, you, uh, I said, how are you doing? You went, it's brilliant. You said, you said, this is what you said, you went, everyone's out, James take the kids out, I've already masturbated twice and I'm playing with a new Japanese toy. I'm, uh, I'm masturbating now. Uh, yeah, Kings of Leon, wasted time on XFM 104.9. Sorry, I was sidetracked there, well, but uh, some of the band names. And now, now listen, I want to put in two of my own. I want to win that pile of tat, <laughs> tat out there, right? I've got two names here, okay? We should just remind people in case they've just tuned in. Oh yeah, Ian Canfield has chosen his, uh, a mega band of all time. He's got Keith Moon on drums, he's got Lemmy on bass, he's got Keith Richard on guitar, he's got, um, who have you got singing? Robert Plant. A Robert Plant. And their manager is Vance. <laughs> and he's- but he needs to announce them at Wembley Arena. They're already sold out. They're at number one in the album charts. <laughs> They're the greatest rock band of all time. And I, I've got two suggestions. Okay. What about this? Please welcome to the stage. Tungsten Lung Hemorrhage. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Please uh, welcome to the stage. God Dildo. God Dildo, interesting. Nice juxtaposition there of God, <laughs> the almighty creator, and a dildo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice yeah. use of uh, <laughs> some contrasting imagery there. Yeah. Powerful and topical. Tungsten lung hemorrhage. Yeah. <laughs> We've had a couple also on the email, um, people didn't really include their names, but who cares. Um, please welcome to the stage, Balls of Steel. <laughs> Ball, balls of Steel, oh, yeah. Please. And we've, we've had like, Brain Hammer. Yeah. Brain Hammer's good, Lots I like of Brain Hammer. related stuff. Quite <laughs> liking the idea of tumour fish. Juma fish, Juma I like. Juma fish is very good. I like Juma fish. I just wonder if there's one more contender. I don't know who this was, Ian, that phoned in with it, but possibly it's topical. Yeah. Deathly Hem. Yeah. Deathly Hem. It's brilliant. Oh, it's Deathly Hem. Please welcome to the stage. Deathly it's Hem. It's Deathly Hem. Who's that? We've got to give it to I the don't know who that was. Oh, but, um, well, if you came up with Deathly Hem, email again. Deathly Hem. It's the greatest name for the greatest rock <laughs> band of all time. Will you please welcome to the stage Deathly Hem? <laughs> It's golden tonsils, isn't it? 
I went to, uh, I was gonna go see him once at the Cameron Underworld about, uh, a year ago, and they had this sign-up, right, <laughs> saying that Graham Bonnet, who sang that song, had cancelled, right, and it said, God willing, he'll be performing tomorrow. And just in case you thought he'd cancelled because maybe no one bought any tickets, the doctor's certificate was <laughs> relieved to cancellation. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, we've sung that a couple of times drunk, haven't we, Ian? Oh, but, at the yeah, top of our voice. We have done it. It is the best. Uh, ever. Yeah, it is. Ben won, Ben has won whatever you're giving away. Yeah. Ben a came up with death, death crap that we fought, Yeah, Deathly Hem. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, if you are in a rock band and you're looking for a name and you think you deserve that name, then, you know, write, write to us. It, we want to know that you're really heavy and we, and A and Canford would officially hand over the deeds of the name Bethlehem. Deathlyhem? Deathlyhem, yeah. 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 Deathlyhem. They only play at Christmas, you only play like big venues at Christmas and it's all things about like fighting, like good versus evil and yeah. the God versus the devil and it's, you got to write songs like that, yeah. Yeah. Deathlyhem on XFM 104.9. Perhaps oh. that the debut should certainly be a concept album based yeah. on the nativity play. Yeah, Brilliant. Nativity, Brilliant. nativity, yeah, that'd well, just be Just the whole kind of Old Testament in kind of rock form. Yeah. <laughs> with like, it'd be extraordinary. It, 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 it's the battle for humanity. Yeah. It's called, um, Humanity Manatee, and it's a fight <laughs> in the ocean of hell. <laughs> yes. Sure. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. I'd like to see a serpent. Maybe pictured That'd somewhere. That'd be serpent, isn't it? Track four. <laughs> track four. <laughs> yeah. Track four. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we should give massive props and suitable regards to Ian Canfield. He's come in, he's pressed the buttons. He's- he stood in for an idiot. Brilliantly. <laughs> yeah, he has so. stood in for, uh, <laughs> the retarded It's a shame ball. that he's not- you've not displayed some of the usual incompetence that we've come to love and expect from Carl. It's a shame. Okay, well, okay, well, well You are the greatest DJ in the world, though. The way you sort of, like, drop Press these- Press buttons. It, it, but, you know- Every yeah, time I've pressed a button off air, Ricky's been going, oh, what great DJ. It's mm. great, though, because so he ends it, he's just, no, it's just brilliant. I mean, we're lucky if we can talk with the mic on. Is mm. <laughs> that the title? Not talk over a record. Oh, we did, today, yeah. we did some great links during the ads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, of course, uh, Jonathan Ross, uh, masturbating. Live. <laughs> yeah. On air. Just, just you looking back at some of the highlights you of this You don't get that on Capital Gold, do you? <laughs> <laughs> like Tony Blackburn getting a call from Fluff Freeman going, All right, mate, I'm knocking one out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, have a lovely Christmas. Have a bloody great Christmas. Mate. Have a bloody great Christmas. It's the best of next week. Yep. Um, the best of the last few weeks. Yeah. <laughs> with some tat, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that Carl's put together. We're Look back in January. We're playing some of our favourite songs of the year. I'm looking week. forward to seeing, um, Pilker's Tan. Pilker's and pictures from his holiday. Covered in ash from the beach. <laughs> yeah. And we're back on the, uh, third. I believe. But Ian, do you want to introduce one? This is- this is Ian's choice for the day. Yeah. Um, we'll see you, uh, next week in spirit and then uh, we're back on the third with, uh, Pilkers. Over to you, Camp. Yeah, enough of Jonah Louis. This is Paul Diano, ex of Iron Maiden, doing, uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Oh, look, oh, yeah. Uh, Last week, I, I was walking, um, uh, home with him and I went, uh, I got a, he was saying something stupid and I went, I've got a competition for next week, let's do a phone in and it's called Carl Pilkington, genius or fool, Yeah. right? And he went, no, no. I went, why not? He went, well, uh, it'd be confusing because they say there's no difference between genius and being a fool. <laughs> Do though, don't no, that's, no, 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 but it's rubbish and people say there's a fine line between madness and genius and, yeah. you know, it's a ridiculous soundbite. Uh, they don't say there's a fine line between a genius and an idiot. Well, the people who do are idiots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what, what would you do there though, just to sort of wrap that little thing up, what would you do? That lad loves his mum's, his mum's milk. What are you what are you asking me to come up with? <laughs> no, I'm just- A title <laughs> for the, the story- No, 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 it's what? just, it's just what would you do? Right, what I do you mean, what would I do? Well, it's causing a bit of a problem in the area, right? <laughs> what area? In- in America, I think it was. Oh, America a problem, are they? George Bush is worried about this kid well, who's no, breastfeeding right, at eight. Imagine it like this, right? Right. But, so, Carl, what are you asking me about this spurious story you saw on the internet? I saw on the internet this yeah. eight-year-old lad who likes his mum's milk yeah. and he's saying, is this right? Should it No, be it's not. On? But what- what- what, <laughs> what do you want Ricky to do about it? It's not his responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but- but the little town that he lives in, they're all yeah. causing an uproar, right? <laughs> Going, this isn't right, you know, no. I can't let my kid play out in case he's in the garden with his mum getting a bit hungry, right? Yeah. So- Oh, God. What should they do? Because his mum's saying, well, he likes it. Yeah. And he, you know, what- so what do you do? I don't know the laws. <laughs> No, but I'm not asking you to sort out the laws, I'm just saying, if you lived in that neighbourhood, what yeah. would you say- if you went up to him and said, look, 
everyone's getting a bit fed up with this, look. I'd say, what, 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 what would I do? What do you mean, what would I do? <laughs> what, what are you asking me? <laughs> right, it doesn't matter. No, 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 what are you asking me? What are you asking me and Steve and no, the I'm public? I'm just saying, say if you live next door to this woman. Yeah. Right? The kid's hungry, eight years old, he's out playing on his bike and he goes, Mom, I'm getting a bit peckish, and he goes, all right, son. She whops one out. <laughs> Um, and he starts having his, having his milk, right? You live, you live next door, you're putting your washing out, and you see this going on. <laughs> you're getting a bit sick of it, cos it's gone on for months. <laughs> Eight so, years, I see. Why is it your business? Just why are you, me... why are you such a nosy neighbour that you're concerned? What would you do, Carl? Let's turn it back on him. Yeah. What would you do? What's your solution? What would you do? Well, I thought, I'd say, right, why are you doing this? And she'd say, um, cos he likes it. And I go, all right then, put it in a bowl first. <laughs> Genius! Oh. And you think that would sort that out? No, because uh, I was thinking about the whole thing, right, and you do that when you're a baby and everything's all right, innit? Yeah. No yeah. one bats an eyelid at sure. a little baby having, having a bit of milk from its mum's right. nest, right? Yeah. You'd almost say it was natural. But you grow out of it. It's <laughs> like, you don't see, it got me thinking about things you don't see. And you don't see. <laughs> Did you put this into a computer? Show me things you don't see. What else no. don't you see? Well, you don't see like an old man having a Twix. <laughs> <laughs> you never. <laughs> oh, so what? Oh, no, no. <laughs> you, know the, you know the terrible thing about all this, Steve? Is he's right. You don't see an old no, man having a Twix. No, that's a but, terrible but, thing. So what they have got, right? They've made old man toffees, haven't they? They've come up with rovers. <laughs> Is that a song? Oh, oh God! You don't see it. <laughs> so they've got their worthers, right? Yeah. So <laughs> Look at him! You think he's it. giving a lecture Forget at Oxford? It's, it's not coming anywhere. No, yet. go on. Sorry, go on. I'm what? just saying. Right. You grow out of things. Yeah. And the old man, I'm sure, when he was a kid, he'd have a twit. <laughs> yeah. But now it doesn't look right. So he's. Having <laughs> So, right. I don't think Werther's Originals were specially designed for old people. I think they were sweets that just happened to have been made for years. Mm. That's why old people eat them. Yeah. They didn't go, hang on, there's a market here. I've mm. noticed old people aren't eating Twixes. Quick, let's make some yeah. old man sweets. But the, the, the little yeah. advert, he gives it to his grandson as well, doesn't he? He goes, I have a Werther's Original. No, I so, think it, it cuts though before he throws it back in his face and goes, <laughs> get, get me a Twix. Yeah. <laughs> XFM 104.9, we're not here. Um, oh, it is a bit like being... Dennis Norden, playing some great, uh, great moments from the show. I, I was just imagining Dennis Norden one day, sort of just like waking up out of his stupor, he's doing this, and he'd go into the producer and go, I've just seen a couple of my programmes. I just saw it'll be right on the night 18. It's sh It is why, terrible. Why didn't someone tell me? Well, we, th we didn't want to upset you, cos, uh, you know. But I've been doing it way too long, were well, you can just let me go on forever? Well, until you died, yeah. Well, why can't my son take over? Well, he's 80, Dennis. <laughs> and the jokes I'm doing, they're awful. They're just, why have I got that clipboard? I, I've written these jokes, they're not funny. There's an audience, they're laughing. What are they laughing They're at? not laughing, they're not, they're not laughing. That's kind of laughter. Who are those audience? Who, who goes to an audience for It'll Be Right on the Night? A lot of them are older than you. It can't be right. You know we have 15% fatality in one of your audiences. <laughs> But I went, I went home at Christmas, I watched one of the episodes, yeah. which was with my family and friends, I said, watch this, you'll love it. Stony face, no one laughed, they all thought it was sh well, it is sh Well, why didn't you tell me earlier? We didn't want to hurt your feelings, you're an old man. You may be upward of 102. <laughs> I didn't realise. Yeah. Here's a, a problem that someone's emailed in. Yeah. We're taking, uh, emails today. If you've got a problem, a concern, um, or, you know, just a general query that you think Carl could answer for you. It could be about anything. It could be about some of the big, kind of, philosophical questions. Yeah. Um, it could be, uh, you know, something to do with war or famine, anything like that. Or it could just be a personal dilemma, you know, something that's happening locally. Anyway, this seems one that I think you probably have you and your father have probably come across this sort of dilemma in the past, mm. and I'm interested to know what your take is on it. Uh, let me see, this is from Lee Matthews by the look of it. He says, he lives in a suburban area where the local teenagers uh, also live on the same road, and they're running riot. They're smashing wing mirrors off the cars, they're crashing into park cars on their skateboards, and they're just generally making hay mayhem, you know, night and day. Uh, what can he do to stop this going on? Uh, the parents of the kids don't seem to give a damn. Anyone who complains to them, they just say, I'll oh, piss off. You know, the police are useless because they never catch him in the actual act of violence, which is what they've got to do to uh, apparently convict them. So uh, they, they don't know who to turn to, really. 
Car- it's rather like when the, a little old lady went and got the A-team, you know. The it's a, it's a, you know, and he was dressed as an elderly Chinaman. Exactly. She knew, she knew who he was. Colonel Decker didn't have a clue. Yeah. You see, it's weird, cos now, now it has got out of hand. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Like, years ago when I was growing up on the estate, um, yeah, you had problems, but not like you have now. Do you no. know what I mean? Mm. Um, you know, Summers were nice as well, weren't they? Well, <laughs> right. And Police are getting shorter, aren't you? But you yourself kind of admitted in the past that you were something of a tearaway. Did, you didn't do anything yeah, like never, these kids I here. I mean, the but thing is, I was I was scared that if I got caught doing it, my dad would go mad. Yes. And I remember smashing a car window by accident and legging it in the lounge and sort of pretending to go asleep on the settee. Right? <laughs> Genius. And I heard a knock at the door. He chloroformed thought, himself <laughs> just to be unconscious when his dad came home. And there was a knock on the door. And I thought, oh god, this is a fella who saw me. I was chucking a stone in the air, seeing how I could throw it. <laughs> of course and you were. It came Did it keep landing on your head? <laughs> <laughs> that would explain a lot. And, uh, it, it came down. Chucking a, a stone in the air, love <laughs> to it! To see how far I it's could throw brilliant. it. brilliant. So, you know, uh, I wasn't bothering anyone Did you invent that, that game? <laughs> right, Did so you get anyway. the stone for your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> go and play with your stone. <laughs> he gave one to Suzanne. <laughs> Carl, go and play with your stone. <laughs> <laughs> no, the thing is, right, and it came down at a fun- funny angle, and it ate, of course it, did. it ate the back of this uh, car, and the, and the back window is the most expensive because it has that heating thing in it, yeah, in case yeah. you got a frosty window. Yeah. So I thought, oh god. <laughs> so I legged it in, got on the settee, went to sleep, knocked at the door. <laughs> Genius! It's a brilliant plan. It's a brilliant plan. I couldn't be guilty. I'm asleep. <laughs> so, so I love the idea. So uh, the thing is, our lounge used to sort of you could you could see in from the door, right? So this family who uh, <laughs> saw you me could, do it mm. let, saw me asleep on the settee, and my mum said, "Go and get the door," and I sort of went oh, as if I'd been asleep, yeah. and went to the door like rubbing my eyes, and uh, the fella said, "What did you run off for? I saw you." I was like, "Oh no," and. I didn't see me dad, I went out, it was when he was working sort of evenings, so I went out so I didn't have to see me dad. And then the next day I came, fr- I came home from school and my dad said, 45 quid. Oof. That's all he said when he said. looked at me. And then you fell asleep when he went, wake up, wake up, you know what I said, <laughs> no, yeah. 45 quid, now, the thing Carl, is, he, right. he, he didn't have to do 45 anything. pounds, Carl, now I know you were saving up for a brick, <laughs> but you can't have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just do it. So, yeah, um, equally, if you're doing a bigger crime, you know, a yeah. bank job yeah. or a murder. Remember to take the stocking off your head, because they yeah. wake you up and go, why have you got a stocking on your head? Yeah. Just go, oh, I had a weird dream. <laughs> You've obviously heard of the famous Rosa Parks incident, in which, um, she was obliged to move on the bus where she was sat to somewhere else and she chose not to and she was arrested for it and became very much a, a sort of figurehead of the civil rights movement. Had you been travelling on that bus? What did you do? Um, and am I far from where I'm, I'm getting off? Yeah, you- <laughs> <laughs> so once again, you can't just nip out at the next stop so you can wash your hands of the whole affair. No, you're on that bus, you've still got a number of stops. So you've got to stay on that bus. You've seen this bus driver demanding that she gets up, gives up that seat. Maybe she's given up that seat for you. Uh, I'd probably go, it's all right, I'm, I'm standing, I'm all right. What if Suzanne wasn't allowed to sit with you on buses? What if, what if now a law came in that women were second-class citizens and she can't come with you? Wouldn't you go, no, fuck that, she's sitting with me? I'd say uh, we're only going around the block. We've been to the to the shopping centre. We're only 15 minutes. Can you take that bag with you? Because there's no one sat next to you down there. I'm a bit crammed in up here. There's more blokes than the bus. <laughs> See you in a minute. Carl, let's put this to, to... I mean, obviously, this is too much for your head to... You're on a bus, right, and there's a few white people, and they're... I'm the driver. And they're being racist to uh, a black kid. Right, I'd go... If I'm driving, I'd go... Just, lads, stop that, will you? If you're going to be racist, can you get off at the next stop and well, do it there? you know, we've all, we've, we've all had a tough day. It's the end of the day, we just all want to go home. We've all been working. Uh, uh, he's not in your way, he's sat in his own seat. Sit back, calm down, and enough. Surely you come, surely you want to be on the side of right? I'm just doing my job here. I'm sat driving a bus. I'm driving a bus for 30 quid a week here and getting a load of grief okay. off some people right, at the end of the but day. But think bigger than the bus rule. It's not just a bus thing, all right? Just imagine that you're not a bus driver. All right, No, but think that's bigger. what we're talking about here. 
But yes, but Rick is trying to make a point. It's an analogy again. It's about you taking some kind of responsibility that could you put you in harm's what, way. Yeah. That could mean that you've got to stand up to danger or to bullies if or to aggression. If, if someone's attacking Suzanne, she goes, Carl, help. You go, no. He, no, oh, I could get her here. Because I know the full story here. But this is what I'm saying well, about you Rosie. Know the full story here? Rosie, what's it? I'm just saying, she sat on the bus. How did it work? I'll she got on the bus, she sat where she wanted. No, I'll tell you how it worked. It was. Uh, up to the driver's discretion to change where black people could sit depending on the number of white passengers that got on. So she sat in a seat, so more and more white passengers get on, so this bloke decides, well, no, actually, this is no longer the black section, there is no black section, because there's enough white people, you've got to stand up. Mm -hmm. And she decided, no, I'm not going to get up. It's my right to be able to sit on this bus as a person, as a human being, not whether or black or white. And that was why she got arrested. On a different bus, on a different day, it might not have turned out that way. That's what I'm saying. It might have been, you know, someone else who goes, get off, I've, who's, who's been in the right mood, might have been in the pub all afternoon. And she's there going, I'm not moving, and he's, he's fed up, he's, had, he's up to here with it. Sorry, so she's pissed, pissed up there. She's pissed up now. No, no, no the person sat the next to her. Yeah. Might have even been a black bloke. He's been working hard. And he's like, I don't want this. It's difficult, isn't it? If I was on there, I'd weigh her up. You know, is this woman doing this as, like, a good cause? Or is she just a trouble causer? Because she just seemed like, you know, uh, I'll do what I want. Now that's fine. You'll always get people who do what they want and they do change the little rules along the way. But I bet she, when she was doing it, it wasn't like a big stand up, this is, this is the day I'm going to do it. It's just happened to, she was fed up that day, she didn't want to get up. Lazy. <laughs> she might just go around law breaking all the time and she's remembered now because she's she made a change about bus seats but when she got up that morning did she say i'm going to do that or has she been fly tipping before she got on the bus <laughs> this is what i'm saying is she just is she just a, a no, you know no she's not a troublemaker she's someone who already had a burgeoning interest in the civil rights I mean, I really thought the Rosa Parks incident was pretty cut and dry. It's, Carl, yeah. The fact that Carl's managed to find an ambiguity in it I is know. extraordinary. I love it. Tell me something else about Rosie Parks. Oh, for God's yeah. sake. I don't know what she's got to do to win you round, Carl. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I didn't realise I had to... I didn't realise it would be this difficult. Um, there was a bit of trouble in our yard the other day. Right. Between uh, a wasp and a cricket. <laughs> No, the thing is, is there any point to this at all, or are you just going to tell us you saw? Are you going to extrapolate some analogy from this? Uh, I think so. Okay, well, yeah, let's, let's see. Let's see. Let's let's see. see. So there's a wasp. Yeah, um, well, so look at those scenarios. Those scenarios. As, as you said, sorry, right. just to just clarify, as you said, it was kicking off. No, right. Okay. Old scenario. So you're looking I'm out there. your window. No, right. I'm, I'm in the kitchen. I right. sink. Yeah. I'm washing up the few plates. Right. The kitchen door's open. Right. Suzanne says, "Oh my God, look at that." What? There's a, like, a, a, a wasp and a cricket having a wrestle. <laughs> I've never seen it before. Right. Wait, 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 wait! Are you sure this wasn't Mexican television and it actually was a sporting <laughs> event? dressed up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah! So they're there, wrestling, and I was like, well, stop them then. So stop she... Whoa, 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 whoa! You don't interfere with fucking Rosa Parks. Why are you interfering <laughs> with a wasp and a cricket? Because one, I didn't even know they didn't get on, to be honest. <laughs> because I've, I've, they, they were sort of wrestling. I said, and my hands were wet, so I couldn't do anything. I, I always overdo it with the fairy liquid. Yeah, sure. So she's, she's there. I say, break, separate them. <laughs> I did force his now, hand. So she uses a tea towel, flicks them. Flip, clever. Right. Good right. thinking. The, the wasp goes its own way. The cricket's sort of jumping about a bit. But um, who was fighting it? So I'm sort of saying that is really weird, because wasps are changing quicker than anything else that I keep my eye on. OK, well, that's just your theory and it's not based on anything. Well, I told you a couple of years back, I saw one eating chicken. They shouldn't right. be doing it. <laughs> so anyway, so now they're causing trouble with a cricket. Whoa, how do you know it was the wasp fault? This is prejudice. Why do you think it was the wasp fault? What, what, what if the cricket would have started it? What if the cricket's got a society that go, we ain't wasps, we ain't their stripes. We ain't them. If they come here, fight them. If everyone comes down here, fight them. How do you know it wasn't the cricket that started that? Well, I suppose at that time I didn't, but since... Oh, subsequent information. Oh, OK, through. sorry. Okay, so anyway... Like Columbo, it? We uh, yeah. So I saw all that, we broke it up, the cricket was sort of shaking a bit. <laughs> Definitely yeah. not! Definitely not! 
it was shaking a little bit. Yeah. So I sort of prodded it, put a little leaf over it because it was a hot day. So I'll put a leaf there so it doesn't get overheated. I love I'll this. Like it's Jenna Marathon. It's got a little, <laughs> it's got Mars on the leaf, ribbon so, on the leaf, but now it's just walking over the little medal. So Suzanne, we, you know, we leave it for a bit. Leave it. On. What about did you say? Half an hour, about, about, about left it for half an hour. What did Suzanne want to do? She wanted to interfere, did she? She wanted, What did she want to do? Just sort of like. No, um, she just sort of said, leave it, stop messing with it. It's probably a little bit knocked out, a little bit stunned. Sure, let's right. get on with our lives, she said. Yeah. So I put the leaf on it. We go off, and half an hour later, I get back in. I'm gonna, I said, I'm going to go on to the. Where'd cricket. you go? Where'd you go? Just for a walk. Porch. So I've been out, back in, have a look. Cricket's still there. Noticed one of its legs gone. Oh. Don't know if the wasp did that. Or the tea towel flick. Right. Well, this is when I got the computer out. Right. Had a look. What happened is the wasp apparently does this a lot, <laughs> and it stings them in the head. Right. Not this particularly. If there wasn't a like, little profile of this particular wasp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of it's just. Website. It's just an incident that just happens a lot between wasp, uh, wasps and crickets. Right. right. So it, it stung it in the head, and what happens is it's that whole thing that we talked about before, where it lays an egg. Right. So I was I was sort of having a look, seeing if I could see any sort of holes in its head. Uh, and it just kept sort of moving its one leg, like, oh, I can't, I can't handle this. We've got one big leg. One big leg <laughs> at the back now. It's normally got two that it uses to jump. So you were worried that crickets aren't aware of the dangers of wasps? I just had a look online and saw that, oh, it's a popular thing that happens. It's sort of like a bit of a mugging. Um, he said you can leave them for about half an hour, they normally come round and they don't know they've had an egg put in their head. But there's no way it said leave them for half an hour and they come round they don't have an egg put in. There's no way it said but that. But he said they, they normally stun for about half hour. Have you had an egg put in your head? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking ostrich egg, but it's coming out the top. So anyway, so I picked it up, I placed it under a little tree, I said it's in the shade again. Mm, no wasps yeah. can see it there, let's just leave it. Mm. But you've just left that cricket to now die in agony when that mm. maggot goes round his head and comes out a wasp and leaves the carcass. Well, this is when Suzanne came up and said it wasn't moving. I sorted it. You yeah. sorted it? I just sorted it. What did you want to do? What did you mean? Well, I said, what do you mean you sorted it? She said, oh, Reap it's best that we don't tell you. Well, what sorry, so, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, she said she sorted it. Wait, 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 wait. Do you think that we're in the Mafia and we're being wiretapped? Say what happened. No, well, she just said she sorted it and I said, what, sorted what? Because I'd forgotten about it at that point, I was painting. And she right. said the, the cricket. Right, what do you think she meant by sorted it? Well, by the look on her face, the way she said it, I've known her for long enough, so mm. I know that she meant it's not good news. Yeah, so what, so what happened? So, from that, I took for granted she means... Say it! I've stopped, I've stopped it being... It's no longer in misery. So, what do you mean? What? What did she do? She, she crushed its head with a stone. So you've got a tiny head-shaped stone and washed it because that's where all the action is, isn't it? So she said it was it was too cruel watching it, sort of shaking about with its one leg and stuff. Mm. You had to kill it. I imagine I had this vision that one day <laughs> Suzanne just having to say to his parents, um, <laughs> I've sorted it. I've sorted it. We've got rock busters. Okay. okay. So uh, these are mine. Um, number one. You've been dunking that for too long. That's LB. You've right, been so dunking that for too long. Oh God, that's too easy. That's yeah, but too I easy. I always tease them, don't I? Give them something to make them feel like they're going to win something, and then I, I hit them hard with a tricky one. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, go on. So the first one. So that's the cryptic clue for a band or an artist. Their initials are LB, and yeah. the cryptic clue. You've been dunking that for too long. Yeah. So that's the first one. Second one. Uh, you won't be able to play that game in this pub because the table ain't big enough. Right. <laughs> could be an old artist, could be a new one, could be a band. What's the initials? Uh, F.D. Alright? F.D. You won't be able to play that game in this pub, the table ain't big enough. And the final one, uh, well, I've had a rubbish day, so I'm happy it's over. Right? Yeah. That's, that's the third cryptic clue, the initials being G. K. Right? Yeah. Well, I've had a rubbish day, so I'm happy it's over. They're the three clues. All you got to do is email in Ricky <laughs> That's great. That's genius. Which one? The last one. All right. That yeah, is genius. Any, That's the best one you've ever done. All right. Uh, Ricky <laughs> 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 <laughs>
That's great. Uh, I don't know the middle one. UK. Okay. Emailing them three answers, you win the stuff. Well, you uh, give us the answers Let's again. give them out. Uh, the first <laughs> one was, um, you've been dunking that for too long. That yeah. was LB. Uh, Limp Biscuit. Limp Biscuit. Yeah, got that one, isn't it? Uh, the third one, we'll jump to that one, cause you've got it. Uh, well, I've had a rubbish day, so I'm happy it's all over. That was GK. That's a great one. That's Gladys Knight. Gladys Knight. Gladys Knight. Glad it's night. Glad it's night. That's Gladys Knight. That is night. brilliant, Carl. And the one that, uh, you're both having a problem with, uh, you won't be able to play that game in this pub, the table ain't big enough, FD. Go on. Fats Domino. Yeah? What? The Dominoes, you play Dominoes in a pub, the, the Domino's fat, pub tables are quite small, you won't be able to play that game in this pub, Fats Domino. Rubbish. <laughs> so, do you want to pick a winner? Random rubbish. Winner? Well, winner. you say it's rubbish, but plenty of people got the right answer. Rubbish. So, yeah. <laughs> Not after last week, no. Um, <laughs> right, okay, so if you haven't heard it before, I'll give you some initials. It work, you know, it's like initials of an artist or of a it's band. It's Blockbusters. And, and a cryptic clue to who the band is. There's two easy ones, one difficult one. <laughs> uh, first one is, um, that'll never get off the ground. Right. Yeah? That'll never get off the ground? The that'll initial? never get off the ground is the clue. Not LZ. The initials are LZ. You are joking. Two easy ones. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right, and then you've got, um, that woman's got her husband's gloves and a pair of her own. <laughs> right. Say it again. That woman has got a pair of her husband's gloves and she's got a pair of her own. That's HH. Right? It's a bit of a difficult one. And then the, uh, the last one, you'll get a l uh, you'll get a right load of bacon off them. Right? You'll get what? A right load of bacon off them. Uh-huh. Um, that's L. L. Yeah, so, uh, once you'll again, You'll get a right load of bacon off of them. You'll get, you'll get a right load of bacon off them. Uh -huh. So, first one, that'll never get off the ground, LZ. Uh, that woman has got her husband's gloves and she's got a pair of her own. That's <laughs> HH. Brilliant. And, uh, you'll get a right load of bacon off them. That's L. And so, it's an email only. Yeah, we have, yeah. We've got, uh, <laughs> the first clue. <laughs> you have that, so Carl. miserable. I'm a bit fed up today. The weather's- I knew when I was walking in today, though, that I'd be- But that video, there's lots of- there's lots of weather on that video, so they can- whoever wins this can go home and see sort of the weather you were talking about. <laughs> uh, the first one was, that'll never get off the ground, uh, LZ. Yeah. The answer there was Led Zeppelin. So easy. Um, yeah, but I said that to you. There's always two easy ones and a difficult one. Go on. The third one was, you'll get a load of bacon off them. Go on. That was L. Uh, Long Pigs. Right. Yeah, and then the second one was uh, that woman's got her husband's gloves and a pair of her own. Yeah. H H. Yeah. Yeah. That was Herman's Hermits. <laughs> 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 so that's that's the three that's the three answers. I'm sure well, I'd like to give it. the prize this week. This <laughs> Herman's Hermits. <laughs> what, what? There's a lot of Herman's <laughs> Hermits. <laughs> <laughs> that is genius, Carl! <laughs> that is genius! Oh! Her man's her mate! So There's so many people who are worthy of the, um, <laughs> of the prizes, obviously. <laughs> right, are we, uh, we're doing it now? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. I noticed Heat Magazine sort of put a bit of a spanner in the works. Why? Because they were saying, oh, maybe it'll be a Christmas edition of Rockbusters. And I'd already sorted them out. I wouldn't worry, Carl. Well, what I've done, I've cleverly tweaked them to make them Christmassy. Oh so the Christmas bit in it has got nothing to do with with it whatsoever, but I just thought... <laughs> so you mean yeah. the clues have a Christmas element? Well, yeah. But, 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 but it's nothing to do with the answer. Nothing, yeah, it's nothing to do with the answer. Right. So why don't you just ask the normal ones and I'll, I'll ring a bell, I'll yeah. shake some bell. I'll, I'll go see ho, ho, ho. that, but in sort of speech. Right. Brilliant. So the yeah. first one, um, there's a load of letters, uh, there, asking for advice. Put them on Claire's desk. Oh, and uh, have a good Christmas. Oh, give it, give it to us again. <laughs> oh God! Right, so there's a load of letters asking for advice. Put them on Claire's desk. Oh, and have a good Christmas. Right, right, but bear in mind, people, that the Christmas element may not be relevant no, to these No, I've got nothing to do with it. I don't want to, okay. you know. And the initial letter is F, right? That's F. All right. Right, the Next second one. one. <laughs> uh, ask your mum if you should. After you've wrapped the presents. <laughs> <laughs> right, so ask, ask your mum if you should. Ask your mum if you should, after you've wrapped the presents. That's, um, that's S. 
S. All right. All right. Okay. And the last one, um, a couple of people were arguing in the supermarket at the fruit and veg counter, but it's busy in there because it's Christmas. <laughs> 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 so that's probably what brought it on. So that's, oh. that's B. Right? Oh. B. B. Oh, God. So, they're the, they're the three. Will I just, uh, recap? Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, I so, have no idea. So I can't even- one. I don't know what to start thinking. I, well. All right, there's a load of letters there asking for advice. Put them on Claire's desk. Have a good Christmas. Uh, have a good Christmas. <laughs> uh, second one, ask your mum if you should. After you write the prison. S. And the last one, a couple of people were arguing arguing in the supermarket at the fruit and veg counter. But it's busy in there because it's, it's Christmas. It's busy because it's Christmas. That's a B. Yeah. So they're the three things. <laughs> right, here's the last clues of the year. You had, uh, there's a load of letters there asking for advice. Put them on Claire's desk. Go that on, was no F. Idea. That was for Foreigner. For Rainer. I Claire, don't know what you mean. Claire Rayner, she took advice, she gave people advice. So that's a foreigner. I God, that is shit. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry. That <laughs> might be Christmas, that is absolute star. <laughs> a lot of people got the right answer. I know, yeah, well that annoys right, me well, even more. The two. second one, ask your mum. Foreigner. Yeah. Foreigner. Um, second one, ask your mum if you should. That was S. That was Shalimar. 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 Right? No, bizarrely, what was the clue there? Ask your mum if you should. Now we got a lot of people saying smashing pumpkins. That's the answer to that. <laughs> well, I don't know who's saying that today, mum. Smashing pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, mum. Smashing Thanks pumpkins. Thank you very much. Nice bollocks. <laughs> <Right. laughs> oh, that's <laughs> great. That's great. Right. Smashing pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> your dad bought them for me for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Ah. And the last one. Um, <laughs> Lovely plums. <laughs> <laughs> what might be victorious? <laughs> oh God! Right, we've got to wrap uh, it up. We've got to wrap it up. Come on then. Uh, a couple of people were arguing in the supermarket at the fruit and veg counter. <laughs> that was B. That was banana drama. They were like having an argument. What is banana drama? drama? <laughs> what, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. What group is banana drama? What group is banana drama? So. You're a fool. You're a twat. When well, you say that, but you accuse her, you accuse Carla of that. You're also accusing lots of delicious, including the winner, yeah. Nicola Rogers, uh, of London, and she wins those great prizes, and she got them bang on. So banana so drama. <laughs> so can we finish there now? Yeah. yeah what do you mean? What do you mean? Can we finish there now? Just, just play the ads and go. What? <laughs> Rockbusters. Rockbusters, uh, first one of the year. Um, Do you want to explain it? In case we've yeah, got some new listeners. Some new listeners. Like might it. have. Might have. Like you never it. know. Like Chance to win some stuff. Um, I'll give you like a cryptic clue and some initials and it sort of makes up a band. So, an easy one that we did at the start was uh, an exploding pet, AK Atomic Kitten. Yeah. Right, that's how it works. So, there's three of them. Um, it's email only. You email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. And uh, you win all that stuff Steve was talking about. Right, first one, uh, forty-two pound for a torch. <laughs> forty-two pound for a torch. That's a bit pricey. Uh, that's D. Right? That's D. Yeah. So Just I, give us it. Give write it down. So forty-two pound for a torch. That, that's a bit pricey, isn't it? Right? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of enhancement. <laughs> yeah. Digging up his growth. Oh, okay, God. That's, that's D. D. Uh, the second one, um, he'll fit some chocolate to your feet. Say that again? He'll fit some chocolate to your feet. Is that he will fit some chocolate to your feet? He'll? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He'll fit some chocolate to your feet. And the initial there is A. That's A. Yeah, and uh, the third and final one, uh, do you think your kid will get that strawberry for me? <laughs> do you right? think- say it again? Do you think, uh, do you think your kid will get that strawberry for me? That's <laughs> WP. Right, now I'd better warn people. Um, you really gotta get into the mindset of Carl here. These are not real cryptic clues. These are not cryptic clues that you do in the Guardian or the, the Times crossword. Um, there's usually something wrong with them. Uh, it is usually, um, uh, what's the word? Um, completely change the word in order to make it fit. Yes. Often. <laughs> yeah. Um, so just be careful. Don't be surprised. Exactly. Mm. Okay. Um, do you want to give us them again very quickly? All right. Uh, first one, 42 quid for a torch. That's, that's a bit pricey, isn't it? All right, that's <laughs> D. Uh, second one, it'll fit some chocolate to your feet. I can't think of anything. I can't a. think. That's A. a. And, uh, do you think, uh, do you think your kid will get that strawberry for me? W.P. Right, so, uh, Ricky at xfm.co.uk. Uh, right, here uh, we go then. The first one, uh, £42 for a torch. That's a bit pricey. Go on. That was D. Yeah. That was Daylight. 
Wait, I thought delight, and I thought um, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. I actually thought delight doesn't work. Second one. There's no um, one. No, wait, wait, wait. Dear light, it doesn't work. It's delight. Second one was. No, no, Carl, it doesn't work. Yeah, but if we're gonna continue with this feature, you've got to tweak them a bit, right? <laughs> People have got it. We've had loads of emails, more than ever. So, do you know what I mean? Let them decide. Mm. If they don't like it, they won't email in. But they lo they're loving it. They've right? all come from the same institution. Um, <laughs> right, go on. It'll fit some chocolate to your feet. That was A. That was Aerosmith. Right? Aerosmith. You've yeah. heard of a blacksmith? But a smith is just yeah. a workman. It doesn't uh, necessarily- No, no, you can have anything. You can have a locksmith. You... A smith doesn't just mean it does uh, shoes. Right, do you think- you... Aero Cobbler oh. would have worked. Unfortunately, there isn't a band called Aero Cobbler. Get ready, get ready with a winner. Um, do you think your kid will, uh, get that strawberry for me? That's Wilson Pickett. Blockbusters. <laughs> it's a structured show. It's a new leaf. This show in the new year is going to be structured. Set pieces, um, hitting our marks. Do you know what I mean? There'll be time checks, uh, uh, weather checks. <laughs> Rick hold out. Um, if you if you if you're driving, careful on that. <laughs> so do the prizes. Check for traffic. Like yeah. If it's bad. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, again, an arbitrary selection of. Uh, goodies. What are those politicians doing? <laughs> Was that XFM news? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> right, what have we got? So we've got, uh, for those that are a fan of the movie Donnie Darko, which a lot of people rave about this year, a sort of weird teenage movie, then, uh, there's a sort of, uh, sweatshirt there. It is actually quite nice. It's not bad at all. It's, uh, it's medium, so if you, if you're a bit of a bloater, mm. don't bother to apply, unless you've got a friend already. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we've also got here, um, a Graham Norton video. Certificate 18. Oh, that's <laughs> so, that was... please don't phone up unless, or, d sorry, don't email in unless you're above the age of 18. Yeah. Um, and that's, I think, the best of his TV show. Yeah. Look forward to that. It's um, a big stiff video, that, isn't it? It's a big <laughs> stiff <laughs> cock of a video. <laughs> Thanks oh, very much. I meant you the... Can't say, yeah, yeah, you meant the bird. Yeah. Um, there's also a fairly mediocre British wartime thriller, Enigma, um, which a lot of people, it was hyped for a while, but it's actually interminable, I've seen it. <laughs> um, the, uh, first series here of The Kumars at number 42 on DVD, I think that's award winning, so, uh, that's available as well. We've got two CDs by the look of it, we've got, uh, Pulp's Greatest Hits, which I don't think sold very well, and so presumably they are giving that away. <laughs> And Johnny Cash's, um, current, uh, album, uh, American For The Man Comes Around, there's some good cover versions there. Again, another big sell. A big yeah. sell. We're really pushing um, this. But it, it, yeah, it's a quite kooky. Uh, Johnny Cash here does covers of things including Personal Jesus. Oh, right. By Depeche Mode. Right, yeah. uh, we've got Bridge Over Troubled Water, his version of that. <laughs> Desperado. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, it's, it's not bad. That's probably the best treat in that bunch. And, right. Um, I'm assuming there's some questions there, can't I? Yeah, yeah. Right, here we uh, go. If you're a new listener, the way it works, I'll give you a cryptic clue. And some initials, wow. and it sort of makes up a band. Yeah. Um, makes more sense when you hear it, I reckon. Not particularly. Wow, well, not really. Although so, people do get it. I just worry about the, the state of our listeners. <laughs> Go on. Right, so there's three of them. You email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. It's email one. only. I email repeat, only. it is email only. We don't have that easy <laughs> to answer the phone. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right. here we go then. Number one. Um, there's, there's normally two easy ones and a difficult one. Sure. So here we go. Uh, number one. Don't argue with him, he ain't gonna change his mind. Don't argue with him, he ain't gonna change his mind. Yeah, that's AA. AA. That's, yeah. It's so that's the first one. He's not gonna change his mind. Um. What do you mean, um? You just, just got them written out, Yeah, you? I'm just thinking about what the answer is, so I don't write the answer down to Oh, for God. Don't worry, they get it. <laughs> Yeah, don't well, worry. Um, but you, yeah. Well, you can't remember it. You came up with it. There's only three. I know, I know. It's weird, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's not weird. It's incompetent. <laughs> right, the second one, anyway. I, I hope you get this. Um, <laughs> I hope you get this. <laughs> you know, <laughs> didn't tell us the answer. This is a shambles, isn't right, it? On a Come minute. on, keep going. Go on. He always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. P. <laughs> and you don't know You don't know that is? It'll, I'm sure it'll come to me once I see it on email. If, uh, what I'll do you mean? It. Once they get it, you'll agree with them? I'll know if it's the one I had down as the answer. This is brilliant. Come Imagine on, Imagine Jeremy Paxman doing that again. Yeah, University what, Times. Is that right? <laughs> Go on. Right, so, uh, that's give that us, one. Give us that one again. Um, he always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. P. But you're confused. I don't understand how you can be confused. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what's the, the final third, one? The third one, uh, <laughs> I'll have to put that woman in the oven. And that's A.B. 
All right, quickly give us them again. Right, so the first one, don't argue with him, he ain't, he ain't gonna change his mind. That's AA. Um, he always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. That's P. And, um, I'll have to put that woman in the oven. AB. All right. So the answers to this week's Rockbusters. Yeah, yeah. Can you give us the clues uh, again in the answers? Yeah. Uh, the first one was, um, don't argue with him. He ain't gonna change his mind. The initials there were AA. That's Adamant. Adamant. Yeah. All right. Stop that's good. That's, that's good. a good one. Uh, second one, he always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. Uh, that was P. Uh, that was Pixies. Right. <laughs> Pixies. Pixies, it kind of works, yeah. yeah. And the, uh, third one, I'll oh, have right, to- I'll let you have that one. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to put that woman in an oven. That was AB, that was Anita Baker. <laughs> Anita Baker. <laughs> it's good. Anita Baker. Anita yeah, Baker. I'll let you have all three today. Okay, right, do the clues quickly. Tell them it'll be a rollover, so we have to do three new ones. Do you not write these you down, scroll. Gotcha. I don't, uh, I don't write the answers down in case Ricky looks over the thing and sees the answer. Why would I cheat? I'd rather you do something right with your life. Right, well, the clues were I've got three other jumpers like this one. Yeah. That was FT. Yeah. They got that. Four tops. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Good, well done. That bunch of people can't make up their minds if they'd want to sit in the sun or not. That was C, they were getting that. That was charlatans. Charlatan, right? A bunch of them, charlatans, right? What? What? what do they <laughs> what's Char- What's Charlie? No. No, sh it's like, shall I go out? Shall we? Charla. Charlatans. They got it, right? <laughs> Where I went wrong with this one, uh, the Jamaican fella, he had to have some aspirin, why? Um, it my fault, you know, I'm not, I'm not cutting, there's no point passing the book or anything. Um, I said FD, a lot of people were saying, uh, Fred Durst, like, f four Ed Ertz, which is a good <laughs> one. Yeah, which would have been as good as any of yours. But I made an error, so we'll roll it over. No, 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 what is the answer? We'll roll, we'll roll, roll what, the what is the answer? Over. Jamaican fellow what? Add some aspirin, why do that? What's the, what's the thing? FP. FP, it was Frida Payne. <laughs> Frida Payne? Free the pain. Free the pain. Free the pain. That's awful. God, Free the, you've got to write these down next yeah, week. This oh, is well, I'm, right. I'm sorry, you are, right. Uh, you're I, the producer. I, I know, I know, but I've had a busy week, haven't I? That's it's doing not stuff an today. excuse. That isn't an excuse. Our excuse is we don't. We have. We don't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you you do put care. the work in and you, then make a mistake. Yeah. It's, it's. I mean, it's better not to try than try your hardest and be rubbish. <laughs> Do you see what the point? We've got- we don't care. But you've got standards. Yeah, and-, and you're, you're not meeting them. You're for- think of that! You're not even reaching your standards. <laughs> God! Let's chill out album ever, the best Brilliant. air guitar volume 2, Brilliant. and of course, for all our fans, Doctor Who, The Aztecs. That's on DVD <laughs> and that's, uh, one of the William Hartnell's <laughs> Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <laughs> that's the worst impression I've ever heard. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> 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 right, but <laughs> then. Right, uh, three, three, uh, cryptic <laughs> stuff. Oh, come on. Right, run the Yeah, Three, I, I can't do it. No, come on! Right, three, three, uh, cryptic, um, Clues, <laughs> some of which may be wrong. <laughs> yeah, and uh, don't take the letters literally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, go on. Um, and some initials, and it makes up of a uh, makes up a band. So um, <laughs> here we go then. Uh, there's three of them. You email in Ricky at uk. Yeah. Right, here we go then. Yep. Uh, number one. Uh, <laughs> the weather stinks, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the weather stinks, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's R. That's R. Right. Oh, the weather stinks, doesn't it? Yeah. Second one. Um, Look, Grant, just get on the boat and help us out. <laughs> All right, give us that again. Look, Grant, just get on the boat and help us out. Look, oh. Grant, just get on the boat and help us out. What's yeah. the initial? R again. R again, interesting. Yeah. And then the third one, uh, <laughs> if you're gonna do that with your drink, I'd let it settle for a bit before you open it. CK. CK. All right, Once so- more? So quickly, all the way through then. Number one, uh, the weather stinks, doesn't it? That's R. <laughs> Uh, look, Grant, just get on the boat and help us out, will you? That's R as well. And then the last one, if you're gonna do that to your drink, I'd let it settle for a bit before you open it. C-K. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Brilliant. Right, first one. Uh, the weather stinks, doesn't it? Yeah. That was R, which was rainbow. 
Right? Rainbow? Like, like rain is the weather and it smells like bow. Bow? Body odour. Body odour. So it's B-O. It's B-O. That's it's B-O. It's pronounced B-O. Well, yeah, but you've got to play- It's not pronounced bow and it's not spout bow. Um, who calls it bow? Everyone knows it's B-O. Um, <laughs> what, you don't care? You don't care that that doesn't work? Well, they got it, so again, as long one as person it, got as it, as long Carl. as they're getting it. One person got it. Of all the emails, one person got it. Um, second one, uh, look, Gran, just get on the boat, will you, and help us out. Go on. That was R. That was Ronan. Ronan, right? Ronan, who's Ronan? <laughs> Ronan. Ronan. Who's Ronan? Ronan? Ronan Keaton. But he's known as Ronan Keaton. Keaton. No, it's okay. not. No, it's not anymore though. He's gone on, on his own, hasn't he? He's just known as Ronan. No, he's not. No, he's not. It's Ronan Keating. He's always been known as Ronan Keating. All right. Um, <laughs> so that doesn't work either. Go on. Third one. <laughs> Next. Uh, if you're going to do that to your drink, I'd let it settle for a little bit before you open it. That was CK. What? Shake a can. Shake a can. If you're going to shake, <laughs> you can. This is the worst competition ever. So it's Chaka. Have, have you got? It's a Chaka. It's Chaka. It's Chaka Khan. Shake a Khan. No, Chaka Khan. What you got? Chaka Khan might have worked. Who, to throw a can. Who got all three right then? Well, well, because basically what happened was people we're just emailed this. in three guesses. We're stopping and this. The, and the guesses that were right came from Mandy. In ancient Greece, every year 500 people would be selected from that Grecian society, and they would have to sit there that year and they would propose laws and everyone else would vote on them. Now if you're in that position, right, you're called up, what rules and laws are you instigating? You might go, right, I, I want, uh, I want an egalitarian society. I want freedom for people. I don't want slavery. I don't want any sort of oppression. Would that be high on your list? Well, you could say, you know, when I worked at Cordon Bleu, there was times when I thought, being treated like a slave here. Mm. You, you weren't, weren't though, because you were being paid and you were free. So, so, what do you mean? I wasn't free. I was on light from, from nine till six. Yeah, you had the choice to leave the job. Slaves didn't have the choice to leave. I didn't have a choice. Yeah, you did, The only yeah. other choice was Tesco and they'd already turned me down. <laughs> no, that's not, that's not, that <laughs> wasn't no the, choice. That, that's wasn't why. The, yeah. that wasn't the lack of choice given to most but the slaves. slaves. the slaves who built the pyramids, that wasn't an option for them. It wasn't like they could no. go and, well, I, I can get a better gig on the Sphinx. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. No, you're not saying anything. You're saying it's absolute drivel again. Um, Here's a little Greek proverb for you. A society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in. What do you think of that? Do you understand? Yeah. Just saying, uh, they're planting a seed, they grow a tree, but trees take ages. Yeah. It takes a long time. Yeah. That old fella's not going to get any joy out of that. Right. But, if he's lucky, yeah. the fella next door might have done the same years ago. So it's all about sort of planting a seed, looking after each other. That's great, actually. It's not, I don't think it's directly it's what almost, it means. It's almost the point. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Yeah, I, I think he means that future generations. But yeah, if the, if future, yeah, the, if the next door neighbour had done that, then uh, yeah, that works as well. But that's, yeah. but you seem to agree that that's a good point. Do you agree that seems a good point to you? Um, but I'm, I'm sort of guessing he, he enjoyed gardening anyway. Part of the enjoyment was him planting that seed. Oh, we, we it, it's the old metaphor problem again, isn't I know, it? Yeah. It's not specifically about trees. But, but, but as a metaphor, what he enjoyed is the fact that he's added to society and human life and he's got a legacy and all that. But so. by the same time, when I went to Ibiza, mm. right, now there they have motorbikes, people flying around on them, P people don't wear helmets. You might even get three people on a moped. I saw a farmer with a goat in a basket. They don't care. They're whizzing around at high speeds. A lot of deaths there. Yeah. Um, and they'll have a lot of them, them see that those areas where someone's come off, been killed, people put flowers there. Yeah. And because that happens a lot, it's a lovely green island. Now here, we're saying where an elbow. You're you saying what? that all the deaths make it nice because there's makes flowers. It makes it lovely. Because there's loads of flowers So with mm. death comes beauty. So that's another metaphor, you can have that one. <laughs> that was one of the most now, tortuous things I've ever- that was extraordinary. But look, look at London. That was extraordinary, Carl. <laughs> right, Carl. Carl. Well, look so, at London, though. Let me finish point. my point. Let him finish his point, let him yeah, finish his point. I'm intrigued. Yeah. Right, London, councillor with his clipboard, need a speed bump here, I saw someone doing 35. Put some traffic lights there and a pedestrian crossing. Mm. Pelican crossing there as well. And a speed camera. Right. Horrible and grey. 
Okay. No flowers. But you still see flowers left behind where people have died in terrible accidents. They're not you very see good that ones. The it's stuck to a lamppost with elastic band round them. <laughs> <laughs> they don't look nice. He's not the quality of flowers. Yeah, but the point wow. is this. <laughs> the one is Some 15 year old <laughs> got run down and you're disappointed at the quality of the flowers. Look at this, Suzanne. Fella lost his head here. Geraniums? Geraniums? For fella lost bloody head? Well, Fuck that's so we have to, we have to encourage that, gun crime so that people will get shot in inner cities and then we can put flowers up and beautify the areas. No, but if an area's nicer to look in, nicer to be in, if it's nicer looking, um, you don't get people speeding around like lunatics. Because they go, I'm not in a rush, I'd quite like to slow down well, this there and is look so at the flowers. So now what you're saying is, because an area's grey and gloomy, people speed around to get out of it, in the course of doing that they knock people down, but then flowers are put up, which makes the area beautiful, thus stopping people driving around at speed so death no longer occurs. Well, they're cute to getting out of their cars to, to put down flowers. <laughs> they get knocked down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Other people on their way to put some flowers down. Yeah. Just sometimes people have to die, don't they? There was a fella outside our house, we had a lamp post. he had a helmet on. But his head come off. <laughs> <laughs> you made me laugh at a man's head coming off because no, the way you said it. But, but that's the <laughs> thing. <laughs> he had a. He, he had a. Oh God! There's a man. It's an idea in the house. He had a lamp post. <laughs> he had a helmet on, but his head come off. <laughs> so you're saying that because in that one instance the helmet did not save his life. His head was in great condition. It's just not attached <laughs> to his body, and that's what I'm saying to you. Sometimes people have to die. How far? How far do you take all this stuff of, of you know, safety gear and slowing down and wear bright clothes at night? And it's just too much. Very important point. You see, do you think someone should be made to wear a crash helmet? They're only hurting themselves. Uh, crash helmet. I don't think you should get fined for not wearing one. Well, don't forget we're not just protecting him. He could be a father with two kids. So you're going, oh, let him, uh, if he doesn't want to work crash, I mean, let him, let him get brain damage. Is that what you're saying? I'm just saying, we're, we're over the top in this country. No, but you, so you're saying, sort of if you're thing. saying, no, if he doesn't want to work crash, I let him not work crash, I He smacks his head in. He's a vegetable. He's like that. I'm sitting at home, like that. And yet the two little kids come to you. You're in charge, don't forget. We've put you in charge of society here. And they come to you, two little kids, they go, President Pilkington. What? Why did you let my daddy wear the. I'm not wear the crash helmet. I didn't. We paid. Uh, we put leaflets through the door. Oh, we yeah. had adverts on the telly sun showing. Yeah, but, but why? It's your dad's fault. But why wasn't it compulsory? Because he wanted. It's, it's not the world we live in, Sonny. Yeah, he's, now I haven't got a daddy. Has he got an helmet at all? Have you seen he's, an helmet knocking about? No, he's, he's just, just a vegetable uh, now. Yeah. yeah. He didn't want to wear a crash helmet, but why didn't you make him wear a crash helmet? It wasn't just him. It was us. <laughs> why did Why did you turn my daddy into a vegetable? Where's your mum? <laughs> Mum left when he kept, he kept going on about not wearing a crash helmet. Oh, I'll put you in a home. <laughs> I just think, you see, this is the problem. Everyone's looking for someone to blame. Yes, but this is interesting though because you you were particularly callous to that little four year old boy. He seemed yeah. so sweet and adorable. Yeah. But why wasn't he giving this stick to his dad? Well, his, his dad's, dad's dead, a vegetable. He's a vegetable. He's dead. Uh, he's good as dead to him. His dad went within the law. It was not the law to wear a crush helmet anymore, because you said, forget it, I don't want a nanny state. I don't want... If you wear a crush helmet or not, he wasn't a responsible parent. He hadn't thought it through. But this is your job. Some people aren't responsible. Society keeps them in tr on track. This was your... You were in charge. You should have made him wear a crush helmet. He had two kids. We've heard from one of the kids. What's the other one's attitude? Is he, is he he's younger? Been, he's a bit younger. Is he even younger still? Yeah. President Pilkington. Uh, my brother's crying now. She shouted at him. I wish you'd have made my daddy wear a crash helmet. Why didn't you make your daddy wear a crash helmet? Well, he wouldn't listen to me because I'm not in charge of society. He didn't listen to me. Yeah, but it seems like a bit of a, a numb nut, to be no, honest. No, he did listen to you. What did he do you for a living? Because you made a new rule saying people don't have right. to wear crash helmets. Right. What, and he listened what, to you. Did he, did he pop shoes on in the morning when he went out? Or did yeah. he need to be here to tell him to do that as well? well? No, there's certain things. Oh, so he, he has got just... some common sense then. Well, there's nothing. Oh, right, interesting. Yeah. So he can be bothered with his trains, oh, yeah, but he can be bothered with helmets. Oh, I haven't got a daddy. Jesus. <laughs>
Why can't they just put a leaflet through saying, hello everyone, use your common sense? <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm asking. Because, That's what uh, I take because some people don't have common sense. Some Everyone's people, got some common people are sense. fucking idiots. Yeah, yeah, they should, it's not my fault. That's then. why yeah, that's not why there fault. is a government. If we let if we let people all they'd be fucking idiots. That's oh, what we've talked about here. It's social responsibility. This is your approach. I wash my hands of the whole affair. Yeah, I don't I don't like the people who don't wear an helmet. Sort of to do themselves in, and that's cleared them off. That's one problem sorted. So you think you, you're, you're being Darwinian? You're thinking survival of the fittest. The idiots yeah. will suit, but they don't because it, they're not just the victims. The dead person isn't the victim. We've talked about it before. You know, people who smoke know that it's dangerous, <laughs> but why is that still legal? And yet people know that, and they still smoke. Fat people know that they're going to get out of breath and clammy, and yet they still eat more. But because that's what I'm saying. Why don't we stop fat people eating? If you've got a smackhead and you really love him, you intervene, you grab him, you put him in a cupboard, you go, you're not coming out. He goes mad for about a year, then he yeah. thanks you for it. Yeah. So block fat people in a cupboard. And you just put carrots under the door. What? <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, there's got to be some responsibility. Now, if it's your own fat kid, stick him in your cupboard. But what I'm saying is, as a counsellor, I'm not spending taxpayers' money on cupboards to put the fat kid in. <laughs> Obviously, in China, you can only have uh, one child, can't you? Is that something you feel we should bring in here? Uh, yeah, I think we, we've got to, um, I don't know about one kid. I, I just sort of concentrate on who can have a kid. Okay. As opposed to, you know, if someone's got a load of money and they're good at looking after kids, let Madonna have as many as she wants. Mm -hmm. but but someone who's, oh, who's, yeah, but then... But so then, social engineering you want to yeah, do Yeah, but then, but hold on, though. Well, what you said then, if you're bringing them into a poor family, what's the point? What good is that for anyone? It's not good for the people who've had the kids. So who's the kid deciding who who who's allowed to have how many kids? Yeah, Are you deciding? I, I was I was uh, brought into the poor family, wasn't I? What? I was brought into a poor family. No, no, I'm talking. I'm talking really poor. So, third world? No. Well, poorer than that. Poorer than no money at all. I just mean like the people who I've told you about on the estate sometimes who had that one who chased cars and stuff. <laughs> he wasn't happy. They didn't care if he was there or not. What's the point? Right. <laughs> like, so hang on. So let's imagine so, that Ricky and I, our husband and wife, we've come in, right? What's your questions to us to establish whether we were allowed to have a couple of kids? Hello. Hello. Thanks, um, for, thanks for coming. And me and my husband, um, we, we can't have children. Why not? Because um, uh, he's, he's got no sperm at all. Okay. He had one sperm and it was, it was too ridiculous. It was awful. It just came out like a dead anchovy. Right. And what's... The, uh, you're meant to have 300 million tiny ones and he had one big one it was horrible i had to pull it out it was like a leech and uh and also i've uh, it was no I haven't, I haven't got a vagina so it was no completely smooth then like an action man yeah it was just that i don't know uh, but we we love children and um uh, uh, uh we wondered if we we could um, have a child what do you do for living what what do you do what's your work uh i'm a rapist <laughs> Right. And I dispose of the bodies. Right. Uh, well, fill out this <laughs> form. I should have clarified it. A rapist murderer. Uh, yeah. Fill out the form. Yeah. Does it in the wrong order as well, I must yeah. say. So, uh, no, number of times I've disposed of the bodies and I haven't raped that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Just wondered um, what else you need to know about us. We, because even though that I That was our little joke, by the way. Yeah, he, well, doesn't, he doesn't rape him. I, 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 I work, in, uh, work in an office. He works in an office um, in, uh, in, uh, in the town. But so, yeah, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a housewife. She's I think a housewife. I'm, I'm making a little nest for when we have uh, we adopt a little a little child. We don't earn a great deal of money, but we're good parents. We're we very think. good parents. How, what's, what's that based on? How, how well, we're good people. On? You know, mm. I mean, aside from a few naughty jokes, we're God fearing people. We believe that um, uh, God is watching all of us, and um, we believe in, in the Old Testament. And, and sometimes uh, he tells us to, to kill and rape. Yeah, sometimes he does. Yeah. So we're joking again. We're joking course. again. Or we don't, we, uh, we don't believe in God. We're um, we're a, a firm and atheist and believe that our time on earth is, is is all we have, and then when we die, we become worms meat. Right. Uh, fully well, filled but up. But we've already we've already painted the back bedroom. That's ready for the little child. We painted it black. Because yeah. um, we we want our child to be a Satanist. Right. Joking again. Little joke Joking again. We want, little joke. Be, we want him to be an accountant. Right. Yeah. Um, Gay accountant. <laughs> And there's too much in society where people are pressured to be heterosexual, so we're, we're going to try and make ours a homosexual. Right, so you've filled out the form. Filled out the form. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll pop that in, get it processed. Right. Okay, but what kind of questions are you going to ask us? None, none really. No, it's <laughs> you. just my job. You're happy. You're just happy my job with us. to pass the forms on. We've passed the interview. Because that's the sort of world we live in now. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. God. Comfort and sound. 
by Feeder on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant. Hello there. But no Carl Pilkington. No He's Carl. in Lanza Grotti. Lanza Grotti, <laughs> But we, we have got a very, very special stand-in. It's Camfield. Say hello. I'm so excited to be here. It's yeah. been, you know, uh, uh, the things I've learned in the last ten minutes before we've even gone on air. Like, you yeah. don't have a theme tune. I don't have a theme the, tune, no. I don't wear headphones. Exactly. Ian wears headphones with a preamp. He's got three midgets just brought in his back line. <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, they're called Dog, Mongo and Blitzkrieg. Look, Blitzkrieg is up on the- up there, they're eating a banana. Yeah. Um, and, uh, he is the king of rock, the new king of rock. Well, the young, the prince, he's the prince of rock. Obviously Vance is the king of rock. But uh, we'll be doing that, we're working out who. Oh, over this, um, and by the way, Camfield, I don't want the Ian Camfield that does XFM and going, and this fast approaching 123, here's Ash. I want the Camfield that goes, I snorted ants with Lemmy. Okay? So, <laughs> uh, we want the real Camfield. Alright, right. I bought him Metal Christmas, is that alright? Yeah. My, that's my only request from this show, that we do play Paul Diano's version of Santa Claus is coming to town. The Diano. Rest, the rest That'll of it's over up. to you. Yeah, we're gonna play some Christmas tunes, we're gonna play some, you know, our favourite hits of the year, mm. but mainly, this is the rock program. This is the rock program. What worries me, Rick, is there's a lot of people who listen to our show and they don't really, they're not regular XFM listeners, they just kind of crawl They're not they're regular people. stupid <laughs> <laughs> on yeah. a Saturday yeah. afternoon, put the show on, so yeah. they might not, they might not be familiar with, they might not be familiar with Well, Ian Canfield is a young man, he's been in, uh, he's, he's about uh, 14. He's, he's been in radio, it's weird, he's 14, but he's been in radio for <laughs> Fifteen and a half years. <laughs> yeah, um, he was weaned on the milk of Vance. <laughs> yeah. Right? And, uh, he's gonna be the new, he's gonna be the new, um, uh, rock god, aren't you? Well, I'm trying. Yeah. Um, uh, no, no DJ Camfield. Just go, yeah! Right? <laughs> and over the, over the two hours, um, I wanna work out the four pillars of rock, right? I want four names, uh, four pillars of rock, right? Huge rock pillars, and then I want the king who stands astride them like the archangel of metal. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be asking Ian every few years. We're asking, right, who's your first pillar of rock, and then uh, you know keep keeping the one that stands astride them, okay? And how many do we need? Well, we need five names then, don't we? The four pillars of rock and who stands astride <laughs> them, right? Okay. okay, like the Overlord with his axe attack albums. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is Oasis. <laughs> Christmas. Oasis. Doing their version of Merry Christmas, everyone. It's Christmas. It seems only appropriate that we play the occasional Christmas tune. There aren't many decent ones. The great. We will be playing the greatest, not just Christmas. One of the greatest songs of all time, but certainly the greatest Christmas tune of all time. Mm -hmm. Fairy Tale in New York. Is that going to be the um, the uh, version done by what's his name out of Boyzone? Has he done one? Yeah. Because he's lived the hard rock and roll life. Uh, uh, who? Like what's his name? Up. What is his name? Ronan Keating. Yeah. He yeah. wasn't bad on Room 101, actually. I think he's lightened up a little bit. Good luck to him. Yeah. Yeah, as well. Yeah. A lot of people ask me, uh, Canfield, I'm sure you can, uh, kind of, uh, you've probably got experiences of your own that you might want to talk about, but, uh, people ask me what Ricky's like in real life. Mm. And I don't want to get grotesque, it's Christmas, people are listening, people are eating sandwiches, but he has a flatulence problem. I don't know if you're aware of this. It is- It's not a problem. Right. Well, it is for us. It is for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you may not yeah. Know. I think no. the problem with Ricky is Ricky hates to miss out on anything. He's terrified that there's going to be something going on that he's missing out on. A conversation, a joke, someone falling over, you know. <laughs> and, uh, he's down- he, so he don't spend any time in the lavatory, because he just- it's too- <laughs> any sp period of time he spends in there, he could be missing out on some fun. <laughs> so he, he kind of tries to get his lavatory, you know, occupying down- time down to a minimum, an absolute minimum. Plenty of pissing. There's loads of that. But none of the other activity, <laughs> really. I mean, you keep that really, it's, it's like you're in, you're out, and you, I sometimes I don't think you've done the full job, Rick. Yeah. And today, I'll tell you this, it was- my eyes were bleeding. <laughs> it was- it's intense. <laughs> I, it's just a word of warning, because the kitchen at XFM is out of bounds now. <laughs> they, they, no one's going in there until the new year. A to J in the library. And a to J in the record library. I'll tell you this, if- I don't know if, like, Tony Blackburn's in the building. <laughs> his wig will fall off. But seriously- Not that he- about, no, no, not that he wears a wig, he doesn't wear a wig. But if he's going down there, maybe he wants to play some Beach Boys. I mean, seriously, <laughs> forget <laughs> I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. <laughs> Forget you might have survived in the jungle, Tony. <laughs> you get down there, mate. Tony, would you rather eat a plate of maggots or go and get oh, Beach Boys? Exactly. It's an A to J. Oh, pot pickers. Exactly. Jesus Christ. It is absolutely <laughs> extraordinary down there. Oh, so but, I'll I'll just be warm. but it's Christmas. It's yeah. Christmas. Why would Blackburn be listening to this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He's got. He's probably doing a bit of Christmas shopping. Sure. And yeah. he's out and about with. He's probably got his little, you know, personal stereo on. Yeah. And he goes, Oh, I'll listen to the boys at XFM. <laughs> exactly. And he, uh, Camfield, what do you think of it so far? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. It's not- not Vance, is it? Okay, who- who, who is secured as one of the pillars of rock? Lemmy. Of course he is. Never changes his boots. Two pairs of trousers. Three shirts. 
<laughs> really? Yeah. And uh, he just alternates them, does he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, yeah. the same pair of trousers for two weeks, but the is it, shirt. Is it true his rider is uh, a bottle of Jack Daniels and 40 Marlboro? Uh, no, it's, uh, it's like one of those hundred packs. No. Of, of yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the hundred packs of Marlboro, and the, he, like, keeps them stuck in his boots, which don't change. <laughs> Um, <laughs> actually, I, I think I'm right in saying, like, that, that one of the, like, two left boots as well, because one of them did break, so, and he had two pairs, but he's now only got one, but they, uh, uh he's got, yeah, the well, Lemmy, that with. is Lemmy then. Lemmy is one of the, um, the, uh, Pillars of Rock. What, wh what, would Phil Lynott get anywhere near this? Yeah, he would have done. Let's play some Lizzie then. Don't believe a word. Thin Lizzie on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and over there, Campbell's. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your impression of me? Yeah. 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 The rock one's better. The rock one's better. Yeah, you shouldn't <laughs> try and be a DJ. Yeah. Yeah. Growing up with Diano Tuesday night. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ian, what, uh, I know you're, you're keen to know this, Rick. What are your thoughts on XFM? What, do you get there, let's get behind the facade of Campbell's. Yeah. What do you think about this? Because we used to have, you know, some conversations, uh, you know, um, You've been with XFM since the beginning, haven't you? Oh, I've been here forever. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's all right, mm -hmm. isn't it? I mean, it's not it's not quite magic. Well, no, no, a few got, things are. No, got me eyes on the on the on the you know, big one hundred five point four. Obviously, eventually. What uh, magic? Yeah. Now, uh, do you do you think you'll if you want to do like a a rock program on something like like Virgin or Radio One eventually? No, I don't think so. No. No. What do you want to do then? What do you want to do? <sighs> I want to. I want to start playing stuff like the Eagles and Steely Dan and Bruce Hornsby in the range. Truth be known, but you, you'd have right. to go quite mainstream. Like in your bedroom, there. what? What? But, Where? On, but on but on what sort of platform though? Because you know the good thing about those is they are really popular. They are. I mean, I think the Eagles' greatest hits is the biggest selling album of all time now. It's overtaken Thriller. Yeah. So I mean that that, that those. What you saying? Iron Maiden aren't popular. Uh, like well, what Iron I play Maiden now? Are actually popular, but. They've got a very Slip tight not fan fear factory. Base. I mean, the, the Iron Maiden can go to number one with just their fans buying it and then slip away again, can't they? Yeah. But everyone sort of likes the Eagles, don't they? Yeah. I mean, I think still. Uh, so you could play. So you could get on sort of like Radio t Radio Two, maybe the rock program on Radio Two. Who does it at the moment? Is there one? No, there's not one. Should we? Uh, I should do a rock, demo, maybe. Okay, well, that's, let's, let's I love the way we're talking about my career and other radio stations I could work for. Well, do you no. know something I don't? No, no. <laughs> I'm just saying that this, this, this is place going, is, not, it's it's not going, going on the tube. Isn't it? It's going on the tube. I mean, you're going to be like. I mean, you're, you, 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 you'd abandon the sinking ship, wouldn't you? You wouldn't hang around, would you? <laughs> you wouldn't fiddle as Rome Byrne. I mean, we, we've got a couple of pies cooking in the States, so we're not going to be here to keep it afloat. No. You know, the weekends. Well, we, 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 you know, we want to take the good guys with us. Right. So, you know, when this crumbles and they make it into a car park for capital, I want to see you on Radio 2, Friday nights, 10 till 12, pure rock. Exactly. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Right, well, that's the pitch, isn't it? There Friday nights, 10 till 12, pure rock. Okay, if someone, anyone's listening to the BBC, it's Canfield. He is the new, new van, Vance. Mol Molten metal, maybe. Molten metal. That's good. My only concern with TV work for, uh, for Ian is he doesn't look like the obvious rocker. I mean, people are listening, they probably imagine no, he's got the long, the, greasy hair, but that's he's got the, the modern look. t shirt. Lots of modern bands no, now, I'm, they've got, you I'm know. I'm not slagging off, I'm just saying, I wonder the, if the they've fans. They've got short hair. It's not all, it's not all long hair and strange beards and tattoos, No, the, the, the days of them all looking like Lemmy and smelling like Ricky sure. are <laughs> well, <laughs> and, well and truly gone, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever had the long hair? Have you ever gone in for that? No. Nah. Never, never tried that? No, no, no. But I've got bullet belts and stuff like that. You're right. You know, if you'd have wanted me to dress up, I would have mm. dressed up and brought CDs. I mean, you know, obviously I should have prepared more for this show. Sure. Yeah. Really? We're gonna, we're, <laughs> we've got, we're gonna, we're gonna play some classic rock, aren't we? I think we're gonna play The Who. And we've got, we got Jump, Van Halen, that's a well, classic, isn't Yeah. It? I think I've got that about five times on every driving album I brought in for you. Okay. And yeah. so, you know, Are we we're gonna we're play we're... Since You've Been Gone? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's cool. next? Uh, British Sea Power. Yeah, I thought yeah. we should play a couple of singles that, uh, we've enjoyed over the, the yeah. last year or so, and this is one of them. Carry on. Play at Canfield. And don't forget, uh, Paul Diano and Santa Claus is Coming to Town's coming on as well. Paul Diano so. doesn't snort ants, he snorts ants eaters. Carry on from, from, uh, British Sea Power on XFM 104.9. Not bad at all. Now listen, we should just uh, point out to people that, uh, <laughs> Carl's away, and we always slag him off because he, he provides very little. But and he's an idiot. Well, exactly, to be fair. But he's obviously off in Atlanta Grotti, and he's forgotten to tell us what the password is for our email, Rick. Idiot. So we can't get into the email. Uh, so we're not gonna have to use Ian's email instead. Ian.camfield at xfm.co.uk if you wanna get in touch. You're never gonna have so many emails, Ian. Really? Yeah, this right? gonna, you're gonna be looking at them all, all week. It's gonna be brilliant for you. <laughs> you're gonna feel really <laughs> popular. You know what? He described Carl as a bald little mank twat. Nice. Carl was going... Brilliant. Is that allowed? Is that alright? Yeah. 
bless him, bald little mank twat, is back on the third, isn't he? Well, if there's one thing that that magazine's well, what was he suggesting you can't be regionalist? Yeah. What? It was he suggesting you can't be regionalist, is that allowed? No, I just think it's a familiarity of, uh, it's just because we call him a bald little mank oh. twat, that a national, <laughs> a national <laughs> magazine can say that. <laughs> oh, bless his little round head. Wonder what he's doing now. He's sitting in the ash, reading his, um, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh reading his Rich Hall book. <laughs> yeah, he, oh. spe he spent a week when he went to, uh, where was it? St. Lucia. He spent a week, <laughs> right? <laughs> throwing sand at crabs. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they've even got crabs, have they, over there? No, I don't know. I don't know what he's gonna do. What is he gonna do? I Suzanne, what is she gonna do? He's gonna be whinging. But it's, it's sort of like, Carl must be like, kid, you must like sit him in front of a video mm. while you go and make the dinner or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It must be a nightmare to taking a pet. Has he got a little, she got a little harness for him? <laughs> to be fair though, Rick, I mean, I can't imagine you're much better. <laughs> on a holiday. <laughs> I've always wondered what that must be like. Cause you always need an audience. You've always got to have someone around that you can perform for, drop your trousers for. <laughs> annoy. Annoy, just generally sing and dance about. And, you know, Jane Seenall, she's bored of you. Yeah. So what, do you just do this to other people on the beach? <laughs> holiday makers, it is me. You can't believe you're not, Ricky Gervais. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> do you want me to annoy you? Do you want me to annoy you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I can annoy you for five minutes. Yeah. Cause yeah. then I'll get bored exactly. myself. I'll tell you what, I want some ads, and after that, the fairy tale in New York. Oh. Well, this is what I'm thinking, right? Because we can, if, you, if you're not happy with Rockbusters, if we add a little bit to it, and they love the bit I've added, then we can slowly fade it out without them knowing. That's it. Do two of your Rockbusters and th and one of these. Right. Come on the prizes, in, Carl. Carl. They're the prizes. Well, yeah, let's, let's do the prizes. Let's quickly go through them then. Yeah. All right, what have we got here? Let's speed this up because I'm dropping off yeah, now. I think right, it's, like, it's either warm in here or, or this isn't the most interesting conversation we've ever had. Okay, first thing, there's a CD here. It's uh, tracks that were sampled by uh, <laughs> various artists, including Jay Z, Happy Mondays, and so on. It's the original versions. That might mm. be quite good fun. Sure. I Love You. We see it's a number of love songs. Yeah. You've got uh, Blue featuring Elton John on there. Yeah. Chicago, yeah. Nat King Cole. Yeah. Some great stuff, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Retro Dance Masters. Oh, yeah. That's another CD. Dance tracks, yeah. obviously, on there. Oh, it's still knocking about the best. Air Guitar Volume 2. Sure. Rubbish. Uh, this is quite good though. It's Paul Whitehouse's uh, TV show Happiness. That's the first series on DVD. Uh, we've also got Stephen Polyakov's The Lost Prince. You can have that in your collection. Probably never watch it, but it might look like you're slightly classy and arty. And so is uh, it subtitles. <laughs> the best one hit wonders album in the world ever. You've got stuff on there like uh, Nana, 99 Red Balloons, yeah. and uh, M's Pop Music. So, not right. that bad a selection actually this week. He's cut out some of the chaff. Right. Yeah, okay. So right, here we, here go, we go. Rockbusters. Rockbusters, first one. Uh, we'll do two of these and I'll play something in a minute. Right, uh, first one. Um, the Australian picks two blokes. What? The Australian picks two blokes. The Australian picks two blokes. The initial? Yeah, the initial E. Right. And the second one, that builder's a bit... I've got that already. It's annoying. <laughs> okay. that, that builder is a bit cute. He's a bit cute? Yeah. Alright. And that's B-T. B-T? B-T. That builder's a bit cute. Yeah. And the Australian picks two blokes, E. And then what I'm gonna do now is play some sound effects that make up a song and you've got to guess what the song is. Go on then, right? just do it and then the shot on the Here we go, here we go. There you go. So what song's that? It's yeah. sort of an XFM type okay, song, Okay, that's isn't it? great. Email so, so, the first, so I should just clarify, the first two are uh, band names or artist names, but that's the title of the track that we want there. Yeah, that's okay. right. It's that's so right. confusing, no one's ever going to figure this out. They will though, they will. Alright, um... First one was, um... The Australian picks two blokes. Uh, the initial was E. The answer there, Eminem. <laughs> M and M. <laughs> All right. The second one. Um, that builder is a bit cute. The initials there were B T. That was Bonnie Tyler. And, <laughs> and then we introduced a new bit to the show. Um, that song sounds all right. These were the effects you heard. And, uh, that was Prodigy, smack my bitch up. Who are you punching there? And, could I just say, no animal was harmed in the taping of that. Yeah, I'm not a champion of Rockbusters, as you know, but I think it's overstayed its welcome, but I'm going well, to Well, I think Carl's it. just giving the fans what they want here. Okay. It's a popular thing, isn't it? Got the, some good prizes. The press well, are behind it. <laughs> let me tell you what the prizes are. Uh, it's a dance music compilation, Cream Trance Anthems 2003. We play a lot of trance on well, this I, station. Well, I put that on quite a lot and danced <laughs> exactly. to it myself. 
Uh, there's the uh, original motion picture soundtrack to the forthcoming film adaptation. When you've seen the film, uh, I'm sure that will mean more to you. You it's like that, don't you? It's a good movie, yeah. Nicolas Cage playing I himself it. and a twin brother. And uh, it's written by uh, Spike, uh, it's directed by Spike Jones. Joined at the uh, what? Uh, no, no, they're not joined mm. at the hip at all, oh. or, or at the face. And uh, we've also got the best one-hit wonders album in the world ever. What we've got on there, we've got things like uh, the Crazy World of Arthur Brown, brilliant. Um, Nana, Ninety Nine Red Balloons. The Rembrandt. In fact, it kicks off with Nana. Sure. Uh, that's followed up by I'll Be There for You, the theme from Friends by the Rembrandts. Yeah. And of course, Breakfast at Tiffany's by Deep Blue Something. Brilliant. Deep Blue Something. <laughs> is that the worst name ever? I think it possibly is. No, Sixpence None the Richer. Sixpence None the Richer. That's a pretty good. bad name. Okay, again, we, we I know we've got a lot of uh, chill out fans who listen yeah, to us. Yeah, so, um, yeah, 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 the yeah, best yeah. chill out album ever. Yeah. Bear in mind, of course, all these prizes collated by uh, Carl from, I guess, People's Drawers. Yeah, look in a drawer, look in a drawer. <laughs> oh, dearie me. What is it? The only thing probably worth having is a, um, I mean, it's topical, if nothing else, Carl. A seven inch by the White Stripes, Merry Christmas from the White Stripes. That was their, um, exclusive Brilliant. Christmas single. So, if yeah, you're that's, a, that's early, isn't it? That's it's early. You get that. Something. It is worth something. A lot of people have got to wait 11 months before that's released. Yeah. Or is it last Christmas? <laughs> <is>? <laughs> exactly. And I have never heard of this DVD. Go on. I like to think of myself as being fairly familiar with TV and films, but I have never heard of Stephen King's Rose Red. <laughs> Welcome on to DVD. a place evil calls home. And uh, it's on DVD, it's certificate 12, so don't imagine anything too shocking. And it looks uh, appalling. Is Rose Red Mansion truly haunted to find out Professor da 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 so might, da, 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 Okay, da, da, we've got the gist of it. They're not very good prizes, time. they're cobbled together, but if you've got nothing better to do, call in if you know the answers to these clues. It's Rockbusters. Let's not right, let them so call in, Rick. Please I'll don't let you, those people call in. I'll no, give you no, they're not calling in, it's email only. Carl, don't interrupt me. I'm just. Um, Ricky Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Email only. I can't stress that enough. We just don't want to speak to you people. <laughs> right, go on. Right, so I give some initials out and a cryptic clue, and it makes up the answer and that. Well, sometimes it does, yeah. Go there's on. two of them, <laughs> there's a new aspect, which I'll explain about in a minute. Oh, so, goodness. the first one is, uh, cryptic clue is, well, if he would have been wearing an helmet, it would have been alright. <coughs> and the initial there is B, right? So, well, if he would have been wearing an helmet, he would have been alright. B, right? Uh, band or an artist. Second one, uh, why are them Jamaican fellas swinging fish around their head? <laughs> okay. Alright, initials. Just fills me with. D, oh. S. D, S. Why are them Jamaican men swinging fish around their head? Alright? And the uh, final bit, <laughs> two rockbusters. Uh, it's a new bit. Last week I played you this. <laughs> Right. With it. That's uh, that's someone beating up a dog. That was smack my bitch up, right? So here's some sound effects and that, and they make up a song. <laughs> <laughs> I can listen to him talk Hang on, all day. Let's have a listen to the effects. That's terrifying. Right, I told you not to play that one. It's rubbish. No one will get that. Well, we'll see. I heard that a couple of weeks ago. So what do you think? I said it's rubbish. No one will get it. No, it's not the one you think it is. Ah, right. So um, email in Ricky at uk and you win that. Stuff. I'm a little bit confused. Let me. T I, I, I'm here. I've heard what you're saying. We've discussed this in the past. I don't know what's happening. What's that? Is that, a, is that a clue? That's a cryptic clue. That's that um, screaming to a song. Is it? Do is screaming. Well, don't say it. So it should stand up by itself. Don't give him any clue. Hang on a sec, hang on a sec. So this is the name of a song. It's not a band or an artist, yeah, the that's, sound that's, effect. That's, that's so the song. first two are bands or artists, and the the, the last one <laughs> is the name of a song. <laughs> I'm saying we should abandon this! Right, okay, right, do do the question, do the questions and the answers, and uh, if, 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 if I think that it's either too hard or ungettable because it's stupid, we're binning it. Right. I thought we'd already binned it, I'm annoyed that- Right, come on, do, 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 what was the, do, do it quickly. Uh, the first one was, well, if he would have been wearing an helmet, it would have been all right. Right, what's the answer? That was B. What's the answer? Busted. Right, that works, all Busted, right. that's fair enough. Did anyone get that? I assume no. some people got- No. People have given up, Rick. People aren't even bothering to contribute. Right, what's the next one? They've just ignored it like it never happened. Uh, Busted. Second Busted. one. Busted. Um. Busted. Why are them Jamaican men swinging fish around their head? Go on. That was DS. Yeah. Uh, 70s band, Detroit Spinners. <laughs> The Detroit Spinners have become the Detroit Spinners. Yeah. Okay. Um. Brilliant. And then the final bit, I'll play you some effects. Let's hear this. Let's hear this. 
a terrifying call. <laughs> well, what's happened there? What what was happening? Where no, 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 no. Just... What's the answer? That was uh, born slippy. She, the woman was having a baby. The doctor tried to grab it. It fell onto the floor. <laughs> That's in your head, Carl. That's just a load of screams. That's in your head. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I'm. T I, I, do you know what? I haven't even got onto born slippy. I'm still on. <laughs> Did trout spinners. Well, let's put a song, that's it. Uh, I don't, I, I don't know what to say. Well, Carl, you are officially a published author. And, and a copy will go in the British Library. Will it? Well, yeah. they have to take every rubbish. I think it will go in the British Library lavatory. <laughs> yeah. From what I understand, yeah. it'll be in there. Yeah. Uh, with like a collection of like novelty postcards. <laughs> and yeah, maybe exactly. a Viz compendium. Oh. But, you know. Yeah, so they have to, they take everything. Just think of that. But why do they do this? Why do they think they've got to keep everything? Because it's- we're living in a world now where everything is sort of binnable. And, you know, we- we use stuff- binnable, uh, for, binnable. for what it is. Well, that, that, I no, think I think you could say that. Oh, that's binnable, fine, yeah. that's fine. Um... There was a sort of poetry to it, but I think he stumbled across that. I don't think it was intentional. Yeah, I mean, I'm st I still haven't got over him saying foodage. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean, though? That the, the world's changed, so why is that rule still hanging around when- Well, it's not a rule- I mean, it's not a rule that, you know, the, the country's gonna, you know, live and die by. It's just that it is seen as a, a, a repository for knowledge, for information. And I don't believe any old Joe can wander in there and get one of these books. I think you have to either be a scholar, I think yeah. maybe it's open for a brief window for students, but you know, you can't, you can just wander in there and see your own book, Carl. You know, there are some books that uh, they have to turn the page for you in, in gloves so your the amino acids. I hate uh, that. With well, yours, it won't matter. They just go, it's over there, or they throw it to you. No, it's just or they slide, they slide it along the floor. They say, well, I, I can't give it to you, Carl, because it's propping up this desk. <laughs> yeah, they kick it to you and say, put it in the bog when you're finished with it. Yeah. It's just that thing of being timed, though. I hate it when people go, oh, have you read this? And then I can't read it properly because I'm thinking, they're thinking I'm taking ages here. Do you know what I mean? So I have to scan read it. And they go, oh, it's good, that. And they go, what do you think? And I go, about what? <laughs> <laughs> so I'd hate the fact that someone stood there with gloves on, because that isn't normal, relaxing sort of reading, is it? <laughs> but it's not, it's not, you don't go in to read the Doomsday Book, let's say, in order to just have a relaxing read. You're going in there to study there it, you know, to say they're professors and scholars and scientists and historians. They don't wander in because it's raining and they go, what's a good read? There's not a man wearing white gloves turning the pages of the latest Jackie Collins. <laughs> Do you have heat? What, watching I... your lips move as you read to see if you just turn the next page. <laughs> I suppose I shouldn't really feel guilty, because at the end of the day, right, I mean, people always rave about Shakespeare saying, oh, yeah, his mm. work was good. Mm. But Brilliant. But at the same time... He'll probably put that on the book when he brings another one out. He'll put your review on it. Yeah. Well, that was good. Carl Pilkington. But... At the same time, you know, like, some people will have a go. I'm ready for, for people having a go, like that Wendy did, about my little films I made. You know, it's her opinion. So yeah, you did, and she slammed Carl. No, well, you know, each to their own and that. And, uh, you know, if everyone liked the same thing, I don't know what we'd do, right? Sure. Um, you don't know anything. So, so, all I'm saying is, everybody raves about Shakespeare. Mm. When, if you properly looked at what he did, he, he invented a lot of swearing words, right? Effing and Jeffing and that. Now, if that was if, one of his. Well, it's effing and Jeffing and effing and Jeffing part two. <laughs> but all I'm saying is, for some reason, when things are, are brought out years ago, um, people say they're good even though they're not. Is what I mean. When I was watching that documentary about the the real Indiana Jones, um, brilliant. They dug out um, some rocks with drawings on, and they were like, "Oh, don't damage them, don't don't mark the paint," and, and it's like it's rubbish. It was like a stick fella with a yak. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Now, if that was found now, or if a kid brought, showed me that, I'd go, hey, it's not that good. So what I mean is, because stuff's old, old stuff gets respect. But you're not judging it on its aesthetic merits, you're judging it on its historical importance. I don't because... think that's fair, though. Because when that, when that fella drew that, it wasn't old. He did it when he was knocking about. No, yes, but, but, you, but you, you must see the difference between you doing a, a stick man on a wall with a bit of chalk near your local, and a, a cave painting that, 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 that they date to 10,000 years ago. Yeah, so in 10,000 years' time, when they find my story, will it gain more respect then than it is now? No, less. But why is it? Because I, I... Because people will more and more realise what a buffoon you are. 
The more research we do, the more you expose yourself as an empty, egg-headed uh, moron. That's a friend speaking right there, Richard Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> no, he loves you like a brother. <laughs> I'm just, I just think, you've mentioned him before, Steve, this Peeps fella. Yes. Has he done anything else apart from a diary? Because now I've done, now I've done a book and a diary. That means you're better than Peeps, well, is what you're thinking, Well, I'm not gonna say that until I know, but what else did he do? Well, Peeps wasn't a writer predominantly. I right. believe he was, uh, you know, like a bureaucrat or something. But he kept a diary which has since become a historical landmark. And what did he say in it? Well, it's again more because it's both well written and it's also an amazing insight into- A social into document a social as well. Document, yeah. Yeah. It's a social document I mean, yours period. is a social document, but- it, it sort of revolves around uh, having egg and chips and a cap and seeing a ladybird, which, you know... But that's, that's today's living. That's well, his, 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 his describes the Great Fire of London, which is what it's most... It's well, best we haven't had for. one of them. If we had one, I'd write it down. I'm only writing what's happening. He, he was just lucky. He was about in London when that happened. The thing is, if they read your diary, they'd think, well, nothing happened that year. Nothing important in the world happened that year. Because your diary doesn't just mention, I mean, okay, yes, it does, it fails to mention any disasters in London because we haven't had any. It doesn't mention any world events. It doesn't men mention wars in Iraq, but it, I terrorism, don't need it doesn't to mention now. anything. But that's all being wrote about anyway. If you're saying there's a museum that's keeping everything, there's loads of other books for that. Who's looking at the fella whose skulls fell off? What? We see. It's interesting, isn't it? A fella's skull has fell off. What do you mean, his skull has fell off? something to do with circulation. But what do you mean his skull fell well, off? Well, it's in the diary. We but how can a skull diary. fall off? Because it's surrounded by tissue and it's got a brain. How can just his skull, how can it, how can it detach itself from all the stuff surrounding no, it? He mislaid all his dreams. But, but, <laughs> but, but all I'm saying is, that's, <sighs> that's not getting a look in. No, because it's not significant or probably true. Go. Oh, you have the same concepts that you worked out and decided that were true at about ten, I think. I look at life like a like a Box big book, like a big book. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Right, and you know, sometimes you get halfway through it and you go, even though I've been, you know, been enjoying it, I've had enough. And Give us another book. No, 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 no. Your metaphor, analogy, whatever you're you're trying to create there, falls down with let's have another book. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. You you can either opt out of life. Or stick with it till the end. You can't go, ah, be someone else now. You can't do that. I know you think you can, and I think in your world you can, you know, you possibly be injected into an old woman's head when you've had enough and you come out a little baby. What I mean is, at the moment, you know, my life, uh, I'm gonna live to 74, 75, okay. right? Okay. Right. So yeah, I'm probably on page, what am I on? A, a book that's got about. This is painful, Steve. This is really painful. Go on, sorry, I'm, carry I'm, on. I'm on, I say if my book's got, uh, 300 pages in it. Yeah. A few, a few pictures and that. <laughs> um, it's a picture book. That's the great thing about Carl's like. I, it's, it's a the, book for children. It's a, it's a pop-up book. Yeah. <laughs> and it just, every page he pops in, he goes, <laughs> I'm probably on, like, page about 170. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna die at 74! Yeah. He's reading a book with a few pictures in with 300 pages and he's on 170. Go on then. So, right, if if the book was too thick, right, and there was loads more pages Let me tell left, you, this book is way too thick. Yeah. If the book was m more thick, yeah. <laughs> the book could not be thicker. If there was loads more pages left, I'd go, I can't be bothered reading on. Right. <laughs> Okay, but don't let him finish the analogy! He must have known that when he saw the book! You don't- You've got to finish this analogy, right. otherwise we're gonna be here all Listen, night. Listen, he must have known how many pages there were when he got the book out of the library. Yeah, but the way they write books, they're painting pictures more at the beginning, you're going, this is good, and then it, it gets a bit boring as it goes on, doesn't it? Okay, well that works, so you're saying that you were you no, were young- No, it doesn't work, because well, no, you just well, accepted no, that that's what all books are like. No, but there's a little bit of poetry in that, because he's sort of, he's actually saying that, you know, when he was young, his whole life was ahead of him, he couldn't wait the whole world, the promise that he was given of this world, and now he's, he's, he's a bit jaded and he's more cynical, and he realises that the world hasn't got uh, as much to offer him as he thought it was. Is that what you meant? Yeah. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> Actually, Carl, you like sayings, don't you? I've um, got a list here sure. of some of the, 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 the sayings and phrases that, that Shakespeare made up, really. Um, in a pickle was his. Yeah. Well, well, um, and we know what in a pickle yeah, we means. Yeah, we know what it means. I, 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 it's a saying I, I'd never use. 
Because when you're in a pickle, it's not something that you would say. No, if you're being sort of, if you're captured and you're being tortured for information, yeah. you wouldn't, and you and you get access to a phone, you wouldn't call and go, am I five? I'm in a pickle. Hmm. You'd be screaming, going, you're taking my teeth now. While you've been talking about that, I just was looking on the computer at, uh, the pun of the day website. Uh, here's a couple that you might, you might like. There was a sign on the lawn at a drug rehab centre that said, keep off the grass. Okay, okay, now if the pun is the lowest form of wit, and let's face it, sarcasm isn't, sarcasm is up there compared to the pun, then the drug pun, I think, is one of the lowest of the low. Oh, people who congratulate themselves on getting drug references. Keep off the grass, with <laughs> Grass, get it? Grass. No, you're smoking the grass. Yeah. I think pun should be short for punch him in the mouth. <laughs> Idioms are better. Go on then, what's an idiom? Uh, Is that a new word you made up? No, I, I think Carl Pilkerton's a complete idiom. <laughs> yeah. I, I found out what it was because I thought, oh, I like them, what are they? Right. And it's like little sayings. Yeah, that's right. That sums stuff up. Go on, give us an example of your favourite. Oh, can I just say one, uh, 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 talking about sayings, Carl was getting fed up with summer, he was, uh, uh, he was fed up with not getting replies from something, he's, you know, he's having a hard time, you know, and, uh, I went, oh, the worm has turned. He went, what? I went, the worm has turned, you know, you've... Stupid oh. saying, isn't it? No, t well, okay, tell him why you think that's a stupid saying. Because how do you know when a worm's turned? <laughs> <laughs> of right. all the creatures that you could flip over and know it's turned, why pick a worm? It's a bad. It's a. It's, it's the worst thing they could have picked to express something turning. But you're doing turning literally. It means changing, doesn't it? Changing your attitude. A new broom, turning over a new leaf. Yeah, but, but things are going to be different now, and I'm pick sick of it. Chameleon. No, but it is a brilliant thing to use for something to change. Oh. Chuck that in the sentence. There's, there's, there's nothing that you can link a worm to human life to. You're talking about something that's... It, it's blind, isn't it? It's blind, <laughs> it's deaf. Gay. It's got no features. <laughs> Why is he having such a go at a worm? Just because it's, it's a weird thing to use. Something that... It's arse is more... It does more than it's head. <laughs> That could be said of you, Carl, to be fair. Um, Oaks, featuring Christopher Cole and uh, a fairy tale of New York. Brilliant. On XFM 104.9. That's the song I think that single handedly keeps uh, Shane McGowan in gin for another year. It must do just well, though, but I'm sure it does. I, I absolutely love it. I still yeah. love it. I saw brilliant. it on Top of the Pops too. And it's just, it's just brilliant. Mm. I mean, he. It wasn't great at miming, but it didn't bother me. Sure. <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was miming to a different song. Probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, in his head. It was great. Um, I had a little visit in the week, Rick. I think Go you missed out. A little Christmas visit from, uh, I know he's a friend of yours. He's a friend of anyone. He's a friend of the nation. Go on. Um, TV, uh, illusionist Darren Brown. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's bought a new pad. Yeah. And, uh, he just came around to tell me about it. Yeah. And, uh, it's interesting because- Somewhere uh, to keep his guns. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, he, um, I, I can never know quite how much, you know, he's just playing with your mind, experimenting. But he was telling me about the place, and apparently- he, he loves you? <laughs> he's, uh, he's got a B-Day. In yeah. the, uh, in the house. Now, we were discussing B-Days because- I've never um, understood that. I've never got my head around it. To this He's day- He's not I've, meant to. Well, no. <laughs> but I've never- I don't think I've ever met anyone who's used a B-Day. Oh, uh, Darren Brown does. He's known as the cleanest arse in, uh, modern <laughs> magic. Yeah. Shiny. Shiny <laughs> arse, they call him. <laughs> but, uh, but I- cause I was- we were chatting about it. I don't really know- to be truthful, I don't really know how you use them. I don't well, know- Well, I assume you just sort of go over it and let- But do you face the wall with your knees on the- on the tile, no, or do you I face away from the wall? No, it's sort of like you just. I don't. And no. you know, it's got the little. Do you nozzle. sit on it, or do you sort of hover above it? Do you it? hover above it and just splash things onto the. No, it's a little jet, isn't it? It does it for you, doesn't but it? But is there a jet? This is what I'm wondering. Is yeah, there a jet of water a, that goes like, up the crack? It's like a. Uh, it's a drinking. Like a drinking fountain. That's you used to have in school. Yeah. Which I, mean, I, I remember Mr. Mellows used to embarrass himself every time. I go, no! He used to live in the playground, Mr. Mellows. <laughs> yeah. It's not a B day. You're not at your French, you know, <laughs> cottage again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't. B day sounds French. I'm assuming he's French. After, you know, I was probably so embarrassed about just sort of like squatting over a hole. Yeah. They go, well, at least we can clean it. Are they, cause I haven't been to, uh, I haven't been to France for years, but are they still persevering with the public still going just with the hole they're in still the I mean, I think they have got- Is a single Frenchman travelled anywhere else in the world? Yeah. And seen that now This is uncomfortable. I know, my trousers go, go down to that. Delhi and I think uh, there's uh, probably yeah. decent porcelain. I know. I can't believe it. I think they have got the flush ones now, mainly right. for the tourists. <laughs> sure, yeah, but yeah, yeah, I've yeah, never yeah. really understood that. But it's not 
not, you don't go in, it's not like they, cause they're literally crapping into an open sewer, aren't they? That's the French approach to the public lavatory. Do they have the bidet next to the hole? <laughs> no, no, the toilet is a toilet, isn't it? Right. But it's just, it's just like, it's sort of like a, it's like going in the bottom of a shower with a big hole at the bottom. Mm. But I, I don't and know. And just, do you you I mean, again, not wishing to get graphic, but do you use the, uh, the bidet instead of the, the toilet paper? Is it used in conjunction with, or I, I instead mean, of? I do you know what? I've, I, I, I've honestly, um, never used a bidet. Because it's not but... really a working class thing, is it? The bidet. No, but, d uh, well, it sort of came in w with sort of like, um, purpose built houses, didn't it? They sort of like shot up all over the, um, no pun intended, <laughs> sure. all over the sort of 70s. You know what I mean? It was like a, you know, a, a, in salmon pink, there was mm. toilet sink and B-Day. Yeah. We yeah, won't be yeah. using the B-Day. <laughs> exactly. Fill it with ice, put some beer in that. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. none of my friends washes their arms. <laughs> there are people who refuse to touch their, you know, the, the, the hole well, with the hands and they only use a B-Day so they throw it at a party and there's no B-Day. Well, Carl doesn't like, don't like feeding his bollocks for cancer because he says he doesn't like the, doesn't like the texture of them. Sure. Well, so I mean, so he'd probably love a B day if he didn't but have to go. But are kind of upper class women who just waddle into the dining room with <laughs> sophisticated <laughs> trousers around their ankles, going, "Where's the B day? Where's this the filthy? Where's the B day? I just, I don't know. We use the paper. The what? I think the fish was off. I'm going berserk up there. Yeah, right? uh, yeah. Th get me a B day. <laughs> yeah, what or, if you lie on the floor? Or I am climbing into the sink and turning <laughs> the tap upside down. <laughs> it's the only way I can do it. Yeah. B day. Thoughts on B days? Have you ever used one? Well, no. You've gone. Through, you told me all this, but you still haven't got to the bottom of how you use them. No, I, I mean I don't know. I don't know, know, know what, how to use it. Do they come? I asked. You need to ask Darren Brand. Does it come with like instructions, like a flat pack? I kit think you're or supposed to know. I think you're supposed to. You know, if you've bought a B day, the assumption is you know how to use it. Imagine someone installing it and going, there you go, there's a B-Day, go, can you show me how to use it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you like this. Well, no, no, I'll go to the toilet first. <laughs> to the whole thing, I don't, I, otherwise I won't know in context. I'll just sit here in the corner, that's fine. Okay. You well, do, just, do, you uh, wanna, do you read a magazine when you're normally going? Well, or well I might do, do, but I mean, I don't really want to do it with you here, but how, how will I know? <laughs> exactly. What, you... I need to know how you transport yourself from the lavatory to the B-Day. <laughs> do you remember when we were trying to offer Carl money to have a shower with Johnny? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's just just some of the to... highlights of the year. <laughs> That's a weird thing to do! Yeah. We had it, we nearly had him there and then he didn't want us to watch. Yeah. We said, yeah. well, how we know that you've done it or not? Yeah. He went, you are definitely bent. <laughs> <laughs> That's his conclusion. <laughs> and what, what we got lined up? Well, hang on, let's just say, if, uh, if anyone's got any idea, sort of, how to use a B-Day, maybe... Any idea just... for anything to talk about on yeah. this show? Well, that, that doesn't involve crapping. <laughs> or farting. Yeah. We've done that. Um, yeah. We haven't, done, we haven't done little Chinese fellas or the gays yet. That's still to come in the second hour. <laughs> Ian.camfield at xfm.co.uk if you've got any thoughts on uh, B-Days or just, you know, lavatories generally. <laughs> Richard Ashcroft on XFM, check the meaning. I think it was out this year and we enjoyed it. So we I certainly it. had a, a thought then that, you know, someone like Richard Ashcroft, uh, who's really cool. I mean, I think one of our greatest rock and rollers, really. He mm -hmm. writes great tunes, does great albums. Uh, the Verve, you know, already I in history. Mm. I just suddenly thought of him listening to this and thinking, I wish they wouldn't play my songs because I don't want to be associated mm. with that drivel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. Is, you know, most people get a buzz out of it, get it on the radio. Do you think people say, don't, don't let Gervais Guilty by association. Do you know what I mean? They've just been, they've, I've, I, I love that song. I love Check the Mean. I thought it was a lovely song. And he's thinking, they're gonna sandwich it to been talk about little gay Chinese fellas and B-days. Yeah. Yeah. And it's gonna make me look What worries bad. me, Rick, is that they'll, you know, if we had to draw up some kind of list of artists who would allow us to play their songs, it's gonna be such a short list, Gary Glitter, you know, it's gonna be a few people who, you know, are slightly more shameful than us. I just so, thought of something. Um, there are a billion people in China, mm -hmm. and I assume it's the same percentage of homosexuality occurs, as it were, that to a billion, one in ten, that means there's a hundred million Little gay Chinese fellas running around. Richard Think Ashcroft, if you're listening, I apologise <laughs> for that last. Think uh, about it. Johnny, are you okay? War is over. I had uh, a DJ in the in the week. I won't say who it was, um, but sort of like a cheesy sort of housewife choice DJ, and he played that, and he went. Mm, weird one, that, isn't it? What do you think of that the first time you heard it? Strange one. John Lennon, Yoko Ono, war is over. Here's the moment, at least, out there. <laughs> <laughs> I love that! Oh. What does he mean? That's exactly what I want from a DJ. <laughs> that yeah. kind of insight. <laughs> we were talking before the break about how many little uh, Chinese fellas there are. Yeah. Uh, um, brilliant. Um, An awful lot of them. Brilliant, good. More the merrier. Are you familiar, Rick, with the fact, the scary fact, I don't know, Camford, if you're aware of this, and Go it's on. chilling. Uh, I don't know where I've heard this from, but apparently, 
and this is kind of legend, I didn't just make this up, this is well mm. known, that if all the Chinese people in China, <laughs> right, no, come on, if they all jumped up and down at the same time, <laughs> apparently, this is, this is what they say, apparently it would cause a, would tidal, cause a wave tidal wave that would wipe out America. That would destroy America. <laughs> I love the idea of coordinating that. Brilliant. Well, I like the idea, firstly, they don't need, um, weapons of mass destruction, they don't need nuclear weapons, because no. they've got that threat They can't constantly. have one that, you can't count, you can't count um, no. a tidal wave as a weapon of mass destruction. Or jumping. Tony Blair could send in sort of people, you know, <laughs> UN people going, look out for anyone jumping. Exactly. <laughs> you know, all they need is an immense sort of skipping rope. Oh yeah, one so a little fellow in Japan holding yeah, one exactly. end, little fellow in Russia holding the other, <laughs> exactly, yeah. and they go on your marks. You'd have a lot of coordination over that one. Little Maybe like someone like Mr. Cool. Motivator, kind of coordinating it all from yeah, the top yeah, of the wall, sort yeah. of looking down. The it's Chinese got, equivalent. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that would be because I think that's why they built the wall. I think that's why they built the to Great jump Wall. Off the wall. <laughs> exactly. They just climb on that wall. That's the way. It's, that's the threat. And that's why America started the space race. Yeah. Because you can see it from space. Exactly. <laughs> so they go. They're, up, they're um, monitoring. This constantly. is uh, Eagle to uh, Houston. There's lots of little Chinese fellas about to jump. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this is Houston. Are they wearing them? We just need hats? to confirm they're Chinese. Are they wearing <laughs> those? Uh, are they wearing those conical hats that look a bit like a lampshade? They, yes, are. they are. They are. We just need to confirm. <laughs> they're Chinese. Because if well, I was the uh, if I was the leader of China, who? What is the name of it? What is it? Is he the king of China? We're so ill-educated. Is aren't it we? the king of China? The the, the it's czar not of king, China? Is it? What is it? The, is Chairman Mao still there? Is he it's still Chairman? Still? Someone? Chairman? Someone else? Probably the yeah. new chairman. Or chairwoman? Don't be sexist. <laughs> And, uh, Actually, you know when I said there's uh, um, a billion people in China, so there's hundred million little gay Chinese fellas. Yeah. Someone phoned up to say half of them are women. Yeah. Well, of course. Yeah. Right on the phone with that. Well, I meant I meant the little lesbian fellas or little gay fellas. Yeah. I, I mean, I wasn't I wasn't being sexist. <laughs> but if I'm I was just saying there's probably a hundred million little gay Chinese people. What worries me, Rick, is if I was the premier of China, or if it was some of the people I went to school is it with. Premier? Oh, whoever it is, the king of China. If I was the king of China, <laughs> right? Um, isn't he the king of China and king and I? Or is that he's somewhere else, isn't he? That's Siam, isn't it? I don't know. Is that, not, is that not in China? <laughs> we're not, we're Where's not. Where's Siam then? We're not. It's Ceylon now, isn't it? I don't know! I don't know! Or is that. <laughs> oh God! Someone educated listening must be tearing their yeah, hair out. Listening to three buffoons but listen, in a room. If I was the king of China, let's assume he's the king of China. Okay, yeah. You'd um, be tall. But you know when you sometimes you've had a few drinks, whatever, you know, I mean, I'm sure you've done that thing where you order a pizza for someone, you know, a mate or whatever, or send a taxi around to their house, something like that. Yeah. What I do is I just phone up George W. Bush and go, seriously, mate, you better send some stuff over money and that and videos. Because yeah. seriously, they're all outside now. One, two. Yeah. You know, and you can freak them out. Send us some knives and forks, because yeah. I am fed up with these sticks. Yes. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I don't know why we're still sticking with them. I can't, I can't pick up the tiniest little bit of chicken. It's crazy. It's rubbish. It's, yeah. Send us some cutlery. I'm having a nightmare eating yogurt. <laughs> 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 oh dear. This is uh, 104.9 Racist FM. <laughs> Absolutely. Jeremy Louie. Yeah. Should we apologise for that? Not at all, no. It's alright, Stand it? by it, yes. Yeah, that good. was his follow up to You'll Always Find Me in the Kitchen at Parties. Yeah. One of my favourite lyrics. She was into French cuisine, but I ain't no cordon bleu. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, looking forward to playing that in the new year. What happened to B.A. Robertson? Don't he know. He knocked it off. I was standing in the corner and the ball came across. What was the other one he did? Don't know. I don't know. We're not as old as you. Oh no. This is all gobbledygook to us. <laughs> XFM 104.9, that's yeah. Jonah Louie. Yeah, you're not listening to classic gold. <laughs> <laughs> Amazingly. I've still got my own teeth. I, right. uh, I think, Rick, I was the subject of a, uh, Christmas corn in the week. What, you mean, you, you bought something for four pounds, then saw it for four pound, <laughs> three pounds ninety as you walked that home? That would make me livid. Because I've seen you oh. really livid. I'm absolutely furious. When I bought my PlayStation, I saw I could get it for a fiver cheaper down the road. I was absolutely And fuming. you'd already walked to about nineteen places, oh, God, I remember. Yeah. I actually but left you after about an hour. Yeah. Can no, I do. Out? I'm furious because I've got to get a bargain. I, I hate think, the feeling that I'm being ripped off. Yeah. And I'll tell you this, I'm loving online shopping. Oh, the savings I'm making, Rick. Really? It's crazy. Really? Getting 15, 20 quid off some things. Is it really? Oh, amazing. But th these things, can I might point out, I like Jaguars and, uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mitsubishi cars. Exactly. Yeah. Well, here we are again, XFM, on a Saturday. Just gone one o'clock, Steve, mm -hmm. if I'm very much mistaken. But we're not here no. as such. We're away again. Gallivanting <laughs> around. Uh, yeah. um, we've got to do the special sort of best of again. Okay. Which we did a few weeks ago. So this is the best of the last three weeks. <laughs> um, which I think is, I mean, I think it's the best three weeks we've ever had. <laughs> but I'd like it condensed into two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some great music as well in there. Yeah, there'd be some great music. Uh, uh, interspersed with with fine chat that you've already heard. Yeah. Well, except this bit. This bit's new. 
we've actually, uh, out of the kindness of our heart, we've come in, um, we've come in last week. Yep, yep. And we've done a few clips, just because we felt a bit guilty about shooting off yeah. and leaving. I mean, I, even now, having heard this link, I'm beginning to wonder if it was worth our time. Oh, dear. You know, I've, I've s said in the past to you, Rick, that my grandparents, so I love them dearly, but it's like, for the last thirty years, they've been waiting to die. I know, It's yeah. like they just sort of, it's like, you know, the novelty wore off of life. You know, just, <laughs> life in the fifties. Yeah, got kind of bored of it. Life, yeah, in the forties, <laughs> it was brilliant. All sat around the old Joanna's, the bombs <laughs> yeah. fell, singing, they loved that. In the fifties, you know, that was great as well, because that was the post-war years. It was, you know, it was a bit tight in the pocket, but it was alright, everyone pulled together. And then the sixties came along, all the crazy music, the let's, funny hair. Let's stay in bed. They, they, exactly, and they basically stayed in bed. And, uh, it was one Christmas when, um, my, my, my grandmother said to my dad, uh, what do you like for Christmas? What, what do you fancy for Christmas? And, uh, this must have been, I don't know, twenty years ago? She said, uh, what do you, uh, what do you fancy for Christmas, Ron? And he went, well, you know, I could do with a nice big kind of warm winter overcoat. She said, don't worry about that, he said, don't worry about that, because your father will be dead soon. It's right, you can have his. Meaning my granddad. Well, to be honest with you, my father's still waiting. <laughs> Which is good news. Good news for my grandfather. <laughs> Less good news for he's my dad. He's freezing. He's freezing. He's freezing. How, he out. How is he today? He's yeah. fine. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, I'm freezing. It is very, such a weird kind of mindset, that. I think it's that, to me, is what sums up people from that older generation, the 40s and 50s. And it seems to me that you've got that kind of mindset. It's like you were born in the 30s. And whenever you talk of your childhood, it's like you had, like, a baked potato to take well, to I, school. I, uh, and no, a poop I, and a stick is a Christmas The gift. other thing is, I think that it, 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 that sort of generation, it, it seems that the man is dependent on the woman. Mm. As a total dependent. Oh, absolutely, if, yeah. if she dies, he's done. Yes. He's yes. done for. Yeah. It, it just pine away. If he dies, she's got thirty years of pottering. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and going yeah. to like you know uh, the, the youth club and the yeah, church. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, it, it's sort of like that. It's it, it's, sad, it's sad. Of course, it's sad for them, but it's so not the end of their life. No, sure. And it sort of is the other way around. I don't I know, know why that is. Yeah, it's terrible. That's a little melancholy thought for. Uh, I know. This I've really, what you brought it down. You've brought it down. I've. Brought it, this isn't a nice show at all. This is terrible. Well, We're gonna have really people just it's... killing themselves. Uh, well. What? Well, I, d I didn't really want to make it a Christmassy type show because I don't, You're don't really like it. Oh, he's done it again. <laughs> well, he did Christmas once, didn't like it. No, he, my dad always said. Oh, it's steady on. Dad said Christmas morning was for like you know for me, so he used to stay in bed. Mm. So he, ne he never. <laughs> That's got brilliant. That's a great thing to say, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Christmas morning's for you. <laughs> Run wild. Do what you want. Just yeah, don't so, follow so me. I'm going to Honolulu <laughs> for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's great! Dad, it's Christmas, do I have to do anything? No. So my mum used to get up, cos she used to like to see me face light up, you know, when I, when I opened the presents. And then, uh... <laughs> to give fireworks. And then, uh... <laughs> then I'd have to go to my bedroom from about six o'clock onwards, cos, like, my mum and dad were into having big Christmas parties, and I wasn't, like, old enough to go. Right. So they say, right, you know, you've had your fun there, you go up to your bedroom, stay in there. <laughs> really? Yeah, I remember one year, right, I got got a train set, that's what I wanted. Yeah. Right? It's brilliant. <laughs> uh, playing with it all day. I thought, I don't mind about the party, I'm happy staying up here, playing with this. Brother comes in, he's had a few, right, he's going, yeah, give us a go on your How train set. How old is he? He's, he's a bit older than me, so he, he might have been like, uh, let's see. Well, let, he, let him be 18. About, yeah, probably about 18, 19, and something like that. I was, well, I had a train set, so, I don't know, about- Fourteen. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Right, so, uh, so I'm playing on that, loving it and stuff, and then he comes in and goes, oh, gives a go. He turns the transformer up to, like, fourteen. He went really fast for about five seconds, broke it, and then he went back downstairs. Wow. So Christmas, I hadn't even got Sounds to Christmas Sounds like Day. the, uh, Conservative government with, uh, British Rail. Satire, that is. <laughs> Sat Rick, well. I just saw that then, sat satire. It's if there's saying. any satirical it's, 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 shows this, or it doesn't, work, it doesn't work in any way, because there's, 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 the analogy falls down, no, apart from there being a train. Think it through, though, British Rail was trains. <laughs> yeah. And the government broke the trains in many ways. Well, they didn't break them, like, not officially breaking them, but they kind oh, of- yeah. it's yeah, it does work, it's perfect. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty pleased with that. And I can't, and, and no one's asked him to be on the Have I Got News For You. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Cause it, it is strange that with, <laughs> yeah. when you've got a satirical mind that that's, that's as quick as that. Yeah, right. and it, it's broke your little train set. So what did you do? I just like watched telly and had some sausages. I bet you were happy with that, though, weren't you? Uh, it's a bit annoying, though, isn't it? When your main present of the year has been broke. And, and did, then, it, uh, did it ever get it fixed? No, that was it. That was it. Put away. I'm intrigued why your parents wouldn't let you come and join in the festive fun. Was because it like really debauched down there? Was it like eggnog yeah, everywhere? And well, no. But I mean, it's fair enough. Six seems a little bit early, but I just think you know if you're. A kid, he, 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 he had his fun, put him to bed, put him to bed at eight, maybe. And <laughs> he went. You think so on Christmas Day? I thought that was a day for family. Well, not if there's a party going on. 
And well, I, don't have the party on Christmas Day. Well, that's point. that's that's another option. Yeah. yeah, your parents are weird, aren't they? A strange breed. Well, I think that was the year, right? I, uh, <laughs> you're talking about buying presents and stuff. I think I did treat my mum to. I didn't buy my dad anything. I think that was like when I got a bit older, he used to get me dad something because he wasn't that bothered anyway. No. Mm. So uh, got me mum. Uh, it was a cheap shop, right? <laughs> of course. Uh, Thank God for that. Called Snips. Right? <laughs> So I went in there and I thought, let's see what I can get her. And remember, uh, Victoria Plum? I don't think so. Well, it's like a, a fairy character. Right. Right? I mean, mum's into gnomes <laughs> and stuff, right? So, I thought, right. She must be pleased with you, then. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Victoria uh, Plum. I was thinking, is that one of the neighbours? Is it, is it like a brandy yeah, Do liqueur? you remember Victoria Plum? Victoria Plum. Victoria Plum, yeah, it's like a little fictional sort of character, right? Okay, okay. So, uh, so I saw it, I thought, yeah, she'll love that. Right. So I did my paper round, saved up for two weeks, right? Aww. Got that sorted, went to Snips, bought the, uh, Victoria Plum. Next day I'm in, I'm in town with her, right? So I think, ah, oh, I know what I'll do. I said, come, come in here a minute, right? Uh, so we go in and we're looking around and I tested her, right? I went, look at that there, that's all right, innit? And she goes, oh, it's bloody awful. <sighs> oh, Carl. <laughs> oh, Carl. I just, I, I, Oh God! So then Christmas Day comes. I oh. said, "Don't bother opening it." She said, "No, no, why?" Said, oh no! Why well, did you still give it to her? So well, it's too late. I'd already bought it. Oh God! So she opened it, and I was like, <sighs> and she said, "Oh, that's nice." I said, "Why are you saying that?" I said, "The other day, said it's bloody awful." She said, "Oh no, I thought you were pointing at something else." Brilliant. Oh no! So that's why I don't get anyone anything anymore. <laughs> Play record. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> XFM 104.9. We're not here. Um, this next clip is one of my favourite clips. Uh, look, it needs no introduction. Here it is. Something, uh, <laughs> something else we're giving away. Go on. Um, The Shining. <laughs> it's, it's more throwing away, isn't it? Like, once again, is it on video? Once again, it's on VHS. Just because you buy it out of your own money, Carl, stop being so mean. And I want to watch it tonight, because it's one of those films that, um... <laughs> so you're, you're gonna watch this video, <laughs> and then you're gonna send it to someone as a prize? Yeah, it's one of them th films that... <laughs> so, so you, you just said yes to that without <laughs> blinking? Well, yeah. You don't think, like, Les Dennis doesn't have a quick go in the car <laughs> on Family Fortune before he gives it away? <laughs> it costs five ninety nine. Bowen has a go at those his nerd towel racks. <laughs> it costs five ninety nine, Carl. Okay, this is uh, Carl uh, in in the classic The Shining. And what's the question? Well, we might ask that afterwards. Okay then. Still, uh, still trying to write the uh, the book then? No. Yes. Good. Funny, someone uh, told me the other day, weird thing about a typewriter, the top row of letters, the longest word you can write is typewriter. Oh, I'll just show you. Just oh, That's weird, isn't it? It's just the typewriter being, you're not, you're not in the mood, are you? just gonna, you're in one of those grouchy moods again that you get into when you're writing. You're not being grouchy. I just want to finish my work. Yeah, it's uh, just she's being a bit funny, a bit offhand than that. <clears throat> Let me explain something to you. Go on. Whenever you come in here and interrupt me, you're breaking my concentration. You're distracting me. And it will then take you time to get back to where I was. Understand? Yeah, but I, I just was coming in to try and cheer you up. You know, if you... I mean, I, I'm full of ideas as well, you know, if you're having a problem coming up with stuff. Got loads of stuff, loads of ideas you could write about. The other day I read about this airy Chinese kid. <clears throat> what do you want me to do about it? No, it's just that it, it could make a, a good book. Do you know what I mean? Sort of following round. Uh, That's swell. Well, I, I'd buy it. You know. But if you don't want to know, we'll have to... Don't bother doing it, but, do you know what I mean? It's just airy Chinese kid. It's, it's weird because they're not normally that airy over there. Yeah, this kid caked in it, but if you don't care... I wouldn't touch one hair on his goddamn little head. You won't have to touch any hair on his head. Like I say, he's covered. Leave the head alone if you want. Touch his hands. He's, he's totally 
covered in it, but... It, it, I love the little son of a bitch. Well, don't go that far. You haven't met him, but I can sort it I'd out. do anything for him. I don't think he'd expect that much. Just take him to the barbers three or four times a week. You know, he's a good, good little kid. In fact, I'll do it. I think I'll write a book on him. Yeah? How do you think you can handle that? Yeah. You're not too busy, are you? Well, I, yeah, I'm pretty busy. I've got to sort out some, uh, some monkey facts for the show this Saturday, but I, I reckon I can still go. Why don't you start right now and get out of here? All right. I will. If you're going to be like that. Couldn't borrow a pen, could I? See you later. There you Haunting. go. Haunting stuff there. Carl Pilkerton in The Shining. You know in the film Jack Nicholson goes crazy because the suggestion is he's maybe possessed by demons that maybe uh, are in the in the hotel. But you know if I was stranded in a desolate hotel removed from all human contact with Carl I'd go mental with an axe <laughs> without being possessed by demons. <laughs> That's more chilling to me. Trying to get some work done and you keep wandering. Oh! Jim Pants is that? He's gone and written it down! Just reading excerpts of Carl's diary. Went home and looked up Freud on the internet. Didn't find him that interesting, so looked at some other philosophers instead. Socrates, Aristotle. Lao Tzu from years ago came up with some good stuff. One, he know he who knows does not speak. He who speaks does not know. Not entirely true. To lead people, walk behind them. Yeah. And of course the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. No, yeah. good that. Maybe this is why people are at the start line spectating at the Commonwealth Games. Well, I, no, it's just that I, I've never understood why in Olympics and stuff like that. If you're going to watch, don't stand around the start line. Go to the end where you see the winner. But because of that saying, it actually makes sense. You know, it's like, well, every step starts with a step or whatever. Say uh, again. Uh, every race, you know, you've got to start with a with with a step. Yeah. If you want to stay at the start line, do. What does that mean? I'm just saying, if if you're into, ra I'm not. I wouldn't watch a race, right? Okay. But all I'm saying is, right. If I was to watch a race, yeah, I wouldn't hang about the start line because. Well, you just I'm said capable. you would. What did I? Yeah, you said that's the place to start because every every race starts with a step. <laughs> no, but I wouldn't normally. When I was on holiday, yeah, Suzanne said there's a race going on down the road. Yeah, I'd go. Well, let's go. Keep going down the road and stand at the finish line. Okay, but, but now what have you to Lazo, yeah, I'd say, well, hang on a minute. Every race starts with a single step. Yeah. How many people around the start line? Is there more room there? She goes, yeah, I'll go, let's go there, then it's less busy. Right, and what would you see there, then? I'd see people starting the race, but I wouldn't be that impressed with them, because I'd go, well, I don't know if any of these are any good. So would you start at the start or the end, then? I'd, I, if it was down to me, I, I'd just probably stay at the finish line. OK, so you wouldn't want to see the first step, then? So Not what do you think of Lazoo now, then? Uh, I preferred the leading people from behind. OK, and what would you do to lead someone now, then? Um, well, if you're behind, you don't have to take responsibility, do you? You can go, well, I didn't say anyway, you went there. That's not really leading them, is it? Yeah, because I've made them think. I've gone, uh, they go, oh, I've just walked into a big hole. I'd go, oh, should have been looking where you're going. <laughs> I haven't led them in that hole, but they've learned a lesson, they won't go in a hole again. <laughs> Socrates. That was incredible, that. That was incredible, Carl. One of the key catchphrases, if you like, from the war, Carl, was of course, keep the home fires burning. Is that like saying, you're away, but don't worry when you come home, the house is warm? <coughs> Pretty much. Sort of. Yeah. Never forget where you're from, we're, we're remembering We're here, you. waiting for you. Yeah. Again, it doesn't say what it means, so there's you, you know, risking your life and you're getting a lesser phone saying we've got the heating on. <laughs> Again, working hard, paying the bills, they've got the heating blaring. <laughs> Put your coat on. Start panicking, we're keeping the on fires burning. What? I didn't know, what do you mean, what fire? When we had that in? I thought we had central heating. <laughs> who's, who's she got in? Who's this bloke who's moved in, changed the heating system? <laughs> it's all, it's all extra hassle. Do you know, yeah, it's, this is why it's best not hearing from people. I was Brilliant. in the jungle, wasn't I? Yeah. Right? 
for this program. Uh, I just, it should explain that um, Carl wasn't on manoeuvres. We sent Carl around the world for a program, um, and uh, yeah. Um, well, hang on though. I want to hear about the fact he was in the jungle and he he didn't want to hear anything from home because. No, on a lot of the trips, I had a phone now and again, so I could call Suzanne. When I was in the jungle, I was out of contact for like five days. Nothing. Didn't know what was going on where. Right? Right. I get out of the jungle, I call Suzanne up. Everything all right? Yeah. What bills have we got? Um, and then I said, how, you know, how was it? And she said, it was reassuring, you know, it was all right. And it's reassuring that if you died, it'd be all right. What? That was from Suzanne. What do you mean? What because she sort of, she, it was like I was dead for five days. She said things weren't that bad. I still got stuff sorted out. It was reassuring. She said what? She said, you called her up after five days of being in the jungle, eating grubs and having things tried surviving. to climb up your knob. Yeah, yeah. surviving. Right. There's me, the first phone call I get, I put the phone on. I'm gonna call Suzanne, let her know I'm all right. Sorry, you could get the phone calls in the jungle, but you didn't want it. What do you mean you turned the phone on? I thought you went, you were out. No, it was off because there's no signal. You mean oh, you got out of the jungle? You mean you got, you got, out, got out of the jungle, right. put the phone on. Yeah. Thinking, right, I'll call Suzanne, let her know I'm all right. I've been to Ellen back here. Mm. Call her up, everything all right. Uh, you know, what's it been like? Not, not to, I said, it, that's the longest we've ever gone, innit? I don't think I've ever gone 24 hours without talking to her for 17 years. Yeah. Suddenly there's a week when I'm not talking to her. Yeah. She goes, yeah, it started off weird, but it's reassuring that if you were dead, I can handle it. But she said, I sorted everything out still. I could handle it if you now, weren't here. What, now, w what offended you most? Um, the, well, just the like fact the that you did, that, that, uh, you want her to be dependent on you, or the fact that you realise you make no difference <laughs> at all in her life. <laughs> well, it's a bit annoying, isn't it? They forget, don't they? The bills weren't as piling up as, as much as they normally do. That's the only thing they ever get through the door. You know, when there's a postal strike, carry on. I'm not interested. You're only bringing bills to the door anyway. Carry on striking. There wasn't that much post. There wasn't that many bills to sort out. There wasn't problems with the boiler. She's forgetting all this. So right. I'd like to go back in the jungle, yeah. just as the boiler's sort of, the flame starts to flicker, yeah. and about to go out, let's see you then. That's what I'd say to any soldiers listening to this, before yeah. you leave home. Yeah. So just leave everything. Break a few things, uh, don't pay the bills, and then go. And yeah. they'll miss you more. Yeah. Well, that's great more. advice to people overseas. Uh, <laughs> let me just reiterate that. Um, the <laughs> next time, w when you come home, uh, have a great time uh, with your wife and kids. Uh, see, you, see your mum and dad, what your family. Um, but then, when you've just got to go back into active service, just uh, smash the place and shit everywhere. <laughs> Thanks. Carl, what's your thoughts on poetry? I've never really been a, a fan of it. It's a surprise. It's sold in a bad light. It's a bit sort of a bit gay, isn't it? I mean, okay. it depends what sort you're talking about, because maybe there's poetry out there that I haven't heard. There's some poetry gayer than others. Yeah. War poetry can't be gay, can it? That was people. I haven't heard. Go on. People fighting in the trenches and can't be gay. They weren't gay. They were. They were writing to their sweetheart. I, I don't know his name. Might might be a bloke. I don't know. But so is, was it was it a sort of a what sort of poem was it? Was it a sort of a limerick sort of a like no? It was it was uh, well. There's, there's there's famous ones, Wilfred Owen and Siegfried Sassoon, and they're very moving. They're about uh, you know the, 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 what usually happens is that they talk about why are we here? This is you know we've been we've been sold a, a lie here, you know, and they really we started seeing war in a different light from 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 their point of view, in the trenches, famously some of them died so soon after the, you know, they'd written the poem. But I prefer a proper, a proper letter. No sort of crypticness. That's the problem with right. poems. Okay, you so you'd, it, you'd have been disappointed to get Dolce at Decorum S through the post, would you? You'd have just said, what are you trying to say, mate? Is, what's the weather like when you're coming home? Did you get my socks? Well, yeah, sometimes life is a bit like that, and it? It's like, say what you mean. Right. Well, that's the, well. Then th you have just wiped all art off the face of the earth. If you literally just say what you mean. No, I'm just saying in a letter. Say if I say if I was a woman and me fella was fighting in a war. Right. What's your fella's name? The, Harry. Okay. So Harry. Oh, no, 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 that's right. So when were you married? Uh, about nineteen uh, nineteen thirty-five. 1935, so uh, you've been married about four years. Yeah. Harry, why don't, you, why don't you go off? Oh, you're a woman, aren't you? Mm. You don't be okay. So what, what, what did you see in Harry? What, what, what did you, why did you like Harry? Was he 
He just was like funny. Uh, butch. It wasn't that butch, but that no. didn't matter back then, did it, in the war? No. And you, and you everyone. But what did you say when Harry was say, what said to you? Well, I, I, I thought it was coming because a lot of uh, a lot of our friends right. ended up having Did you just hug him and say, don't go or something? There's no point because that would have just made it tough for him. So. <laughs> What's the point? Just go with it. But if he I had cried written... after he went, you cried after he went. That's what you do, isn't it? You wouldn't do it in front of him. He's got. To, he's got to go to battle. Okay, so your man goes off to battle. Right. Then I get a, a letter from the colonel right. saying, "Oh, bit of bad news. Harry's dead." Now I get a letter from the post. He said. He said what he meant, didn't he? In the... Well, yeah, and they would do, wouldn't they? They wouldn't yeah. fanny around saying, "Oh, he was he was on the warpath and the cloud, the cloud went dark." I go, well, what, "What? Just tell me what happened. I don't want a weather forecast." He got shot at the arse and the bullet came out his head. Right now, the colonel he, he would just tell me the basics. Now, <laughs> because he sent his by um, telegram, telegram, telegram. They sent a the telegram. Mm. The letter I get from Harry has been stamped, so I get it late. Oh, right? okay. So I get a letter. From uh, from Harry, after he's died. Yeah. Right, and you know he's dead. I know he's dead, so I get right. this letter with his handwriting on. I'm yeah. devastated because I was just getting over his death. Yeah, it's all brought back to me when this letter drops through the post. Well, yeah, three right. days and you're pretty much over it. It's Harry's yeah. handwriting. Yeah. Oh God, what's this? What's and I written? open it. Yeah. And instead of saying things are bad here, socks are damp, uh, you know, everything's grim, it's cold, I'm sick of it. There's a poem. It wouldn't feel like it was from Harry. Well, what, did it's Harry... not in his words. Poems are never in the in the person's words. But did you know Harry was a poet when you married him and made love to him? No, I picked it up because all the people were doing it. Something to do in the trenches. But when he carried you over the threshold, Carl, and he, he laid you down and gently kissed you, didn't he? Didn't he say any? Didn't he ever? So he must have whispered some sweet nothings into no, your hysterical like red head. He no, like that. straight oh. to the point. He was like, "Get your knickers off." <laughs> Sound by Feeder on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. But no Carl Pilkington. No He's Carl. in Lanza Grotti. Lanza Grotti. <laughs> but we have speak. got a very, very special stand-in. It's Camfield. Say hello. I'm so excited to be here. It's yeah. great, you know, uh, uh, the things I've learned in the last ten minutes before we've even gone on air. Like, you yeah. don't have a theme tune. I don't have a theme no. tune, I don't wear headphones. Exactly. Ian wears headphones with a preamp. He's got three midgets just brought in his back line. <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, they're called Dog, Mongo and Blitzkrieg. Look, Blitzkrieg is up on the- up there, they're eating a banana. Yeah. Um, and, uh, he is the king of rock, the new king of rock. Well, the young, the prince, he's the prince of rock. Obviously Vance is the king of rock. But uh, we'll be doing that, we're working out who- oh, over this, um, and by the way, Camfield, I don't want the Ian Camfield that does XFM and going, and it's fast approaching 123, here's Ash. I want the Camfield that goes, I snorted ants with Lemmy, okay? So, uh, <laughs> we want the real Camfield. All right. right. I brought in Metal Christmas, is that all right? That's yeah. My, that's my only request from this show, that we do play Paul Diano's version of Santa Claus is coming to town. The Diano. Rest, the rest That'll of it is over to you. Yeah, we're gonna play some Christmas tunes, we're gonna play some, you know, our favourite hits of the year, mm. but mainly, this is the rock programme. This is the rock programme. What worries me, Rick, is there's a lot of people who listen to our show and they don't really, they're not regular XFM listeners, they just kind of crawl they're out. They're not they're regular people. stupid. <laughs> <laughs> on yeah, a Saturday yeah. afternoon, put a show on, so yeah. they might not, they might not be familiar, they might not be familiar with well, the Well, Ian Canfield is a young man, he's been in, uh, he's, he's about uh, 14. He's, he's been in radio, it's weird, he's 14, but he's been in radio for... <laughs> Fifteen and a half years. <laughs> yeah, um, he was weaned on the milk of Vance. <laughs> yeah. Right? And, uh, he's gonna be the new, he's gonna be the new, um, uh, rock god, aren't you? Well, I'm trying. Yeah. Um, uh, no, no DJ Camfield. Just go, yeah! Right? <laughs> and over the, over the two hours, um, I wanna work out the four pillars of rock, right? I want four names, uh, four pillars of rock, right? Huge rock pillars, and then I want the king who stands astride them like the archangel of metal. <laughs> so we'll be asking Ian every few years. We're asking, right, who's your first pillar of rock? And then uh, you know, keep keeping the one that stands astride them. Okay. And how many do we need? 
Well, we need five names then, don't we? The four pillars of rock and who stands astride them. <laughs> right. Okay. okay. Like the Overlord with his Axe Attack albums. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is Oasis. <laughs> Christmas. Oasis. Doing their version of Merry Christmas, everyone. It's Christmas. It seems only appropriate that we play the occasional Christmas tune. There aren't many decent ones. The great- we will be playing the greatest- not just Christmas, one of the greatest songs of all time, but certainly the greatest Christmas tune of all time, mm -hmm. Fairy Town in New York. Is that gonna be the, um, the, uh, version done by What's His Name out of Boyzone? Has he done one? Yeah. Cause he's lived the hard rock and roll life. Uh, uh, like what's really his name? Up. What is his name? Ronan Keating? Yeah. He yeah. wasn't bad on Room 101, actually. I think he's lightened up a little bit. Good luck to him. Yeah. Yeah, no. as well. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people ask me, uh, Canfield, I'm sure you can, uh, kind of, uh, you've probably got experiences of your own that you might want to talk about, but, uh, people ask me what Ricky's like in real life. Mm. And I don't want to get grotesque, it's Christmas, people are listening, people are eating sandwiches, but he has a flatulence problem. I don't know if you're aware of this. It is- It's not a problem. Right. Well, it is for us. It is for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you may not yeah. I think no. the problem with Ricky is Ricky hates to miss out on anything. He's terrified that there's gonna be something going on that he's missing out on. A conversation, a joke, someone falling over, you know. <laughs> and, uh, he's down- he, so he daren't spend any time in the lavatory, cause he just- it's too- <laughs> any sp period of time he spends in there, he could be missing out on some fun. <laughs> so he, he kind of tries to get his lavatory, you know, occupying down- time down to a minimum, an absolute minimum. Plenty of pissing. There's loads of that. But none of the other activity, <laughs> really. I mean, you keep that really- it's- it's like you're in, you're out, and you- I d sometimes I don't think you've done the full job, Rick. Yeah. And today, I tell you this, it was my eyes were bleeding. <laughs> it was it's intense. I, it's just a word of warning because the kitchen at XFM is out of bounds now. <laughs> they, don't, no one's going in there until the new year. A to J in the library. And a to J in the record library. I'll tell you this. If I don't know if like Tony Blackburn's in the building. <laughs> his wig will fall off. But seriously, not that he, no, no, not that he wears he, a wig. He doesn't wear a wig. But if he's going down there, maybe he wants to play some Beach Boys. I mean, seriously, <laughs> forget <laughs> I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. <laughs> forget you might have survived in the jungle, Tony. But you go uh, down there, mate. Tony, would you rather eat a plate of mango? Or go and get oh, Beach Boys. Exactly. And say A to J. Oh, pot pickers. Exactly. Jesus Christ. It is absolutely <laughs> extraordinary down there. <laughs> oh, so well, I'll just be warned. But it's Christmas. Yeah. It's Christmas. Why would Blackburn be listening to this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, he's got- he's probably doing a bit of Christmas shopping. Sure. And yeah. he's out and about with his- probably got his little, you know, personal stereo on. Yeah. And he goes, oh, I'll listen to the boys at XFM. <laughs> exactly. And he, uh, Canfield, what do you think of it so far? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. It's not- not Vance, is it? Okay, who- who, who is secured as one of the pillars of rock? Lemmy. Of course he is. Never changes his boots. Two pairs of trousers. Three shirts. <laughs> Really? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he just alternates them, does he? Yeah, so yeah, he might yeah. have the same pair of trousers for two weeks, but the is it, shirt. Is it true his rider is uh, a bottle of Jack Daniels and 40 Marlboro? Uh, no, it's uh, it's like one of those hundred packs. Of, no. Of Mar yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the hundred packs of Marlboro, and the, he like keeps them stuck in his boots, which don't change. <laughs> um, actually, I, I think I'm right in saying like that, that one of the like two left boots as well, because one of them did break, so and he had two pairs, but he's now only got one. But they, uh, uh, he's got yeah. The well, then Lemmy, that is Lemmy then. Lemmy is one of the um, the uh, pillars of rock. What, what, what would Phil Linnet get anywhere near this? Yeah, he would have done. Let's play some Lizzie then. <laughs> Don't believe a word, Finn Lizzy on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant, and over there, Cam Fools. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your impression of me? Yeah. 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 The rock one's better. The rock one's better. Yeah, you shouldn't <coughs> try and be a DJ. Yeah. Yeah. Growing up with Diano Tuesday night. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ian, what, uh, I know you're, you're keen to know this, Rick. What are your thoughts on XFM? What, do you, get, uh, let's get behind the facade of Cam yeah. What do you think about this? Cause we used to have, you know, some conversations, uh, you know, um, You've been with XFM since the beginning, haven't you? I've been here forever. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's all right, isn't it? I mean, it's not it's not quite magic. Well, no, I know a few got, things are. You no, know, got me eyes on the on the on the you know, big one hundred five point four. Obviously, eventually. What uh, magic? Yeah. Now, uh, do you do you think you you want to do like a a rock program on something like like Virgin or Radio One eventually? No, I don't think so. No. No. What do you want to do then? What do you want to do? <sighs> I want to. I wanna start playing stuff like the Eagles and Steely Dan and Bruce Hornsby in the range, truth be known. But you, you'd have right. to go quite mainstream. Like in your bedroom? Yeah. What? what but, on the, but, on the, but on what sort of platform though? Because, you know, the good thing about those is they are really popular. They are, I mean, I think the Eagles' greatest hits is the biggest selling album of all time now. It's overtaken Thriller. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that, that those- What, you're saying Iron Maiden aren't popular? Uh, like well, what I play Maiden now? are actually popular, but- 
they've got a very Slipknot tight fan Slipknot Fear base. Factory. I mean, the, the Iron Maiden can go to number one with just their fans buying it and then slip away again, can't they? Yeah. But everyone sort of likes the Eagles, don't they? Yeah. I mean, I think still. Uh, so you could play, so you could get on sort of like Radio, t Radio 2 maybe, the rock program on Radio 2, who does it at the moment, is there one? No, there's not one, shall we, uh, I should do a demo maybe. Okay, well that's, let's, let's I love the way we're talking about my career and other radio stations I could work for. Do you know something I don't? No. No, <laughs> I'm just saying that this, this, this place going, is not, it's, it's not going, going on the tube, it? it's going on the tube. I mean, you're gonna be like, I mean, you're, you, you, you. <laughs> You'd abandon a sinking ship, wouldn't you? You wouldn't hang around, would you? <laughs> you wouldn't fiddle, as Rome burned. I mean, we, we got a couple of pies cooking in the States, so we're not gonna be here to keep it afloat. No. You know, the weekends. But we, 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 you know, we wanna take the good guys with us. Right. So, you know, when this crumbles and they make it into a car park for capital, I want to see you on Radio 2, Friday nights, 10 till 12, pure rock. Exactly. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Right, well, that's the pitch, isn't it? Then Friday then nights, 10 till 12, pure rock. Okay, if someone, anyone's listening to the BBC, it's Canfield. He is the new, new fan, Vance. Mol Molten metal, maybe. Molten metal. That's good. My only concern with TV work for, uh, for Ian is he doesn't look like the obvious rocker. I mean, people are listening, they probably imagine no, he's got the long, the, greasy hair, but that's he's got the, the modern the look. t-shirt. Lots of modern bands no, now, I'm, they've got, you I'm know- I'm not slagging off, I'm just saying I wonder the, if the they've fans- They've got short hair. It's not all- it's not all long hair and strange beards and tattoos, No, is the, it? The, the days of them all looking like Lemmy and smelling like Ricky sure. are <laughs> well, and, well and truly gone, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever had the long hair? Have you ever gone in for that? No. Never never tried that? No, no, no. But I've got bullet belts and stuff like that. Right. You know, if you'd have wanted me to dress up, I would have mm. dressed up and brought CDs. I, I mean, you know, obviously I should have prepared more for this show. Sure. Yeah. Really? We're gonna, we're, <laughs> we've got- we're gonna, we're gonna play some classic rock, aren't we? I think we're gonna play The Who. Have we got- we got Jump, Van Halen, that's a well, classic, Yeah. It? I think I've got that about five times on every driver album I brought in for you. Okay. Yeah. And so- you know, Are we we're gonna play we're... Since You've Been Gone? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's cool. next? <laughs> uh, British Sea Power. Yeah, I thought yeah. we should play a couple of singles that, uh, we've enjoyed over the yeah. last year or so, and this is one of them. Carry on. Play at Canfield. And don't forget, uh, Paul Diano and Santa Claus is Coming to Town is coming on as well. Paul exactly. Diano doesn't snort ants, he snorts ants eaters. Carry on from, from, uh, British Sea Power on XFM 104.9. Not bad at all. No, listen, we should just uh, point out to people that, uh, <laughs> Carl's away, and we always slag him off because he, he provides very little. But and he's an idiot. Well, exactly, to be fair. But he's obviously off in that Lanza Grotti, and he's forgotten to tell us what the password is for our email, Rick. Idiot. So we can't get into the email. Uh, so we're not gonna have to use Ian's email instead. Ian.camfield at xfm.co.uk if you wanna get in touch. You're never gonna have so many emails, Ian. Really? Yeah, this right? good, you're gonna be looking at them all, all week. It's gonna be brilliant for you. <laughs> you're gonna feel really <laughs> popular. You know what? He described Carl as a bald little mank twat. Nice. Carl was going... Brilliant. Is that allowed? Is that all right? Yeah. Bless him. Bald little mank twat. He's back on the third, isn't he? Well, if there's one thing that that magazine's well, what was he suggesting you can't be regionalist? Yeah. What? It was he suggesting you can't be regionalist. Is that allowed? No, I just think it's a familiarity of, uh, it's just because we call him a bald little mank oh. twat, that a national, <laughs> a national <laughs> magazine can say that. <laughs> oh, bless his little round head. Wonder what he's doing now. He's sitting in the ash, reading his, um, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh reading his Rich Hall book. <laughs> yeah, he, spe he spent a week when he went to, uh, where was it, St. Lucia? He spent a week, right? <laughs> throwing sand at crabs. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they've even got crabs, have they, over there? No, I don't, no, There's I don't nothing. know what he's gonna do. What is he gonna do? I Suzanne, what is she gonna do? He's gonna be whinging. But it's, it's sort of like, Carl must be like, kid, you must like sit him in front of a video mm. while you go and make the dinner or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It must be a nightmare, t taking a pet. Has he got a little, she got a little harness for him? To be fair though, Rick, I mean, I can't imagine you're much better <laughs> on holiday. <laughs> I've always wondered what that must be like. Cause you always need an audience. You've always got to have someone around that you can perform for, drop your trousers for. <laughs> annoy. Annoy, just generally sing and dance about. And, you know, Jane's seen it all, she's bored of you. Yeah. So what, do you just do this to other people on the beach? <laughs> holiday makers, it is me. You can't believe your luck, Rick is your face. Do you want me to do a dance? Do you want me to annoy you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I can annoy you for five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. then I'll get bored exactly. myself. I'll tell you what, I want some ads, and after that, the fairy tale in New York. Oh. I want to know what your opinion of him, because he's told me he's great on it. Well, it you, you bang out of order, first of all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you have a good night when you're with us? Um, I tell you what, I wish I- I wish I hadn't lost a tenner every time I've come down. <laughs> <laughs> that well, would have improved it. You <laughs> point out there about the football analogy. Mm-hmm. Alex Ferguson. Yeah. When did he score a goal? Right. He doesn't. He tells the others how to do it. Mm, yeah. Right? 
That's, that's he my doesn't role take up one of the eleven, though, does he? No, exactly. It's not like you can only field ten. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> we only got ten again. I, yeah. I want to be in the eleven. <laughs> exactly. You stop running around in midfield, <laughs> falling no. over. Yeah, shouting. Oh, what have I told you? Yeah. No. Right. I'll admit. And right? there's a limit of five players. We should explain that. That's the point. Yeah, there's only five players there's on the players, team. Players. Yeah, so. Yeah, so it was pretty tricky on Tuesday, though, wasn't it? It was one of the tougher. Tell, I, I tell, tell everyone the one question you got right. It oh. was something about. Uh, well, tell us the answer. The two words you had to say to get the answer. Danny Minogue. Danny Minogue. <laughs> <laughs> that was what you provided, Danny Minogue. <laughs> Is this valuable? As well, no, 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 no not really, because because, because there was at least two of us who also knew the answer. Oh, well, he, uh, we, he, we gave he, him. We gave he, him. He didn't we, him we, no, exactly. We gave it to Carl. We massaged his ego. Oh, but dear. um, oh. I just feel Carl. I, 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 do you know what? I'm a little. I feel a bit bad now because I just he had a crushed face. Then. Le, le, can I just it, tell it, you right it, now? He just can't believe this. Can I just tell you right now? I think the problem is this. I th there's that precious fifth position that is not being filled at the moment, I think consistently enough by a decent player, right? You've got a solid team. I'm thinking if you want to remain on the team, you are going to have to pull your finger out and find a fifth member that is going to provide, and I'll tell you where the weaknesses are, I can tell you right now, mate, the weaknesses are natural history and science. Oh. Something which Ricky Gervais is scoring on week in, week out on his team. There's, there is a few Now, if he was available for a transfer, we could be fine, but we've got to find someone to fill in that space. Otherwise, I'm either going to quit or you're going to have to step down, because I don't think I can be on a team where, where, where there is these obvious pounds. deficiencies. There and, are visible deficiencies and in the And, you know, the ten pounds. That's ten pounds. I'm not <laughs> made of money. That's once a month. I've, I've seen him depressed for two hours when he lost twenty pounds at a casino after don't bring five it back. hours don't bring, don't bring that back. Don't yeah. bring up that again. Yeah, yeah. That, that story. He doesn't like wasting money, Carl. You know that. What do you think? What do you think? What's the solution? We've got to be- we've got to think proactively now. We've got to sort this out. See, there's always other things going on in my mind when I'm in that pub quiz. For me, it's just a little bit of fun. Sure. It's a night out, yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, Suzanne enjoys it. Yeah. It's a bit of a get together, we have a chat beforehand. Yeah. We have a bit of fun. Yeah. But there was other things on my mind. What well, Carl, thinking? I could do that here, I don't no, have wait, to lose a tenner. Wait, what were you thinking during the quiz then, when the questions were coming out? What were you thinking of? Well, what it was, right, just before the quiz started, I had to go to the toilet, right, because the rule is, right, people who don't go to it, once it starts, phone's off, oh, yeah, no more toilet, the room, we yeah. take it dead serious, don't yeah, we, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I went to the toilet. Now, I'm not being out of order here, it just got me thinking, right? I went to the toilet, the gay fella in there, right? <laughs> there was a gay fella in there? Gay fella in the toilet. Now, how, how could you, you know? tell? How did you know? Just typical, you know, everything about it, right? It! Everything about it, right, yeah. Oh. What, well, large handlebar moustache, what, what, leather what, what, cap. But, but plugs, ammo nitrate. Could I just say that these views do not reflect the views of the management of XFM or me and Steve. Go or on, most Carl. of the people in this country. On go you on, go. go on, Carl. What's your problem? Yeah, but this is what I'm worried about, really. But this is why I only got Danny Minogue right, <laughs> right? Because this was floating around my mind. <laughs> Went She's to a toilet. big gal, I can't now, she? going to the toilet, they have, they have like, men's cubicle and they have women's cubicle. Yeah. Now, without sounding out of order, is it wrong for me to think <laughs> gay men should have their own little cubicle. Colin! They should have their own- well not cubicle, you mean an actual toilet, yeah. I suppose. When I was at the urinal, yeah. normally, you know, there's a fella there and then you go, alright, and there's no pressure. But I couldn't- I couldn't go. I was thinking, should I wait? If I go into the toilet, it'll look obvious. Yeah. <laughs> I had loads of pressure and but this was going on. But what were you worried about? I'm so sorry. What I'm were you so concerned sorry, about? Viewers. I'm so well, sorry. Well, it's like, right, listen, when I was a kid, right, <laughs> And it's all right for you to go into women's toilets when you're a kid. It's like, oh, it's a bit cute, yeah. right? As long as you're not like over 15 or something, right? Right. But when I was a kid, I went into a toilet, and women, when they use their little cubicles, they don't shut the door. Some of them just sit down on the on the toilet, yeah. right? And you see everything. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> no, seriously, that's probably one of the <laughs> first times I saw like a woman. Yeah. That, right? I mean, Auntie Nora when she was staying over. <laughs> what happened with your Auntie Nora? She was, um, she's into wearing caftans. Into wearing what? You know, caftans. Oh, what, yeah. What caftans? Big, bellowy sort of dresses. Right, so. right. And, uh, yeah. I, I, I used to sit on the floor at home in front of the telly. Sure. She was on the chair behind. Yeah. She did a bit of a sort of a Sharon Stone scene. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Did you see it? There was no underwear. No. <laughs> what, what age was, were you? What was it like? 
What age were you? He's like a ripped tennis ball. So. <laughs> what? <laughs> right, we're off air. We're off air. Either that will put us in for the Sonys. <laughs> that's how I'm living. Ice tea. That's how I'm living. A bit of old yeah. school hip hop. Where's RT? Alright. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Right, go and make me a cup of coffee or something. Well, before you do that, can I just qualify something? I'm a little bit concerned yeah. about your your toilet discussion. W what exactly is your point again? I yeah, was just a bit bemused. You see, it's it's a tricky one. All I'm saying is, right, there I was at the pub quiz. I go to the toilet, not thinking about anything. I try <laughs> to go, right. There's a little gay fella next to me. <laughs> I love this little gay fella. Now. The weird thing is, there's nothing stopping him having a little, little glance, right? Because he's allowed in, in the fella's toilet. Yeah. Now I'm not allowed to go into the woman's toilet and have a little, have a little look round. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so all I'm saying is, should they have another, another toilet area? What, for gay people? Yeah. And, so this would be gay men and lesbians? Uh. Is that going to complicate things? Well, I mean, uh, I can only assume. I mean, to what point? Uh, that's your question, right? If you're intimidated, that's. I mean, that that that's a shame. But you know, most gay men aren't looking at your knob. You know that. What do you mean? I can only say that 99.9% .9 of gay men who use a urinal standing next to what they assume is a heterosexual man aren't looking at his knob. And what are they doing then? They're, they're emptying their bladder. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing is, you, you, I can't, you, I can't talk. You're well, saying, Mr. you're saying like, you know, about would you have one toilet for lesbian women and gay fellas, right? What does that mean? Yeah, would it be mixed? Would it just be? Well, would it be have a? Would it have a man and one that's a heterosexual man, a little picture of a woman, and then what? What would the little icon be? To a man and a woman. A man and a woman. Just having a chat? Yeah. yeah. In pink and dark. But you, you couldn't mix them because then what would happen is you'd get people who, who were going, oh, I'll, I'll play, I'll play up to this a bit. Yeah. What, pretend to be gay? And yeah, you know, sort of grow a moustache and shave their head. And pretend to be a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, so, well, I see, so you know people pretending to be gay so they could go in and have a look at the lesbians? Yeah. Right. So that would mean that we need four cubicles now, wouldn't yeah, we? Yeah, no, this is fine. Four cubicles is fine. So, so, so four, every pub how now- How many toilets do we need <laughs> Every at the pub's now got four toilets. Oh, Carl, bisexuals. <laughs> yeah, now interesting. Bisexuals, how many toilets do we need now? <laughs> Call you, the council. Do you use any? Huh? No. No, because no. they're interested in everything, aren't they? Because a little bisexual fellow will be looking at your knob. Right. With them, yeah. what you do, you just have a door. You open it and there's one urinal there, so you can't get a queue. They have to, they have to sort of wait. I just thought, of, well, why can't there just be a, a thing between the urinals so anyone, no one can look at anyone else's knob? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just to go back to Ricky's point, what stops, even if we've got the toilet for gay men, what stops the gay men who want to have a look at your willy going in the regular toilet and pretending that yeah. they're straight. Most men don't Who's wear- Who's gonna police Don't this? wear gay across their <laughs> no, head. exactly. They don't have a tattoo. There's no branding yet in the British house where they have to declare. So we're gonna have to expand this. What, so we've all got to carry, carry identity Do you, do you know cards. you can see a gay, can you? Coming a mile off. Can't know? No, I'll just hold it in next time. No, 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 no. Can you tell gay men? Do you know a gay man? I'd say, uh, probably- if you did like a- if you lined some people up yeah. and said, point them out, I reckon I'd get- But hold on, we're not talking about people dressed in leather with the arse cut out and an handlebar moustache. Yeah. We're talking about, uh, you know, the everyday no, non scene. No, of course. Oh, no. Well, yeah. But I mean, uh, suppose I put you in a room and there was ten naked men, right? Yeah. And uh, could you- there's five gay men and five etc. Could you walk along that line looking at those gay- uh, Am I naked? No, you don't have to be naked. Why would you have to be naked? To catch him out. <laughs> Play a record! How would you catch him out? <laughs> no, no, don't go into it. Don't go into it. Don't go into it. Play a record. What are you doing? <coughs> Try to calm your gums down. We don't do it with water. What do you do it with? You're trying to you calm do it with, your gums down. You do it with meditation and hard drugs. <laughs> What's the problem with your gums? When I'm stressed out, my teeth now. 
<laughs> what? What do you mean? <laughs> Say that again. When I'm sort of stressed out, me, me gums and my teeth know before I do. It's like a weakness. So what's up? You've got a toothache then? Mm. I thought you went to the dentist. I did the other week. Well, what's wrong with your teeth then? It's just because you're stressed. I don't know. Why don't are you know. stressed? What have you got to be stressed about? I don't know. That's that's what that's what's weird with stress, isn't it? No. Your body can be stressed without you realising. That's what no, kills people. Stressed. No, 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 no. You're stressed because you feel stressed, and then your body gets weak because you're. No, because I'm pretty good. I don't. I never feel stressed. That's part of my problem. It's not I a am problem. stressed, but I don't know about it. That's well, why that's it's not any sense at all. It's number one killer. <laughs> <laughs> what? what do you, you mean? never get stressed? If you don't feel stressed, how are you stressed? But you must be stressed if you're right. too It's like saying, stressed. I didn't feel like I had a pain, but apparently I did. Listen. Go on. I was in Israel recently. I had a bag put over my head, chucked in the back of my hand. Now, the thing is, I kind of right. thought, well. It wasn't isn't... a blind date, by the way, and he wasn't <laughs> being. Um, arrested or kidnapped. It was a it was a training thing, wasn't it, for yes, kidnapped situations? Yes, but I didn't know. I didn't know. What, you didn't know they were going to do it? No, they don't tell me anything, do they? That's good. So, so what the, happened then? So the thing is, that happened, I had a panic on a little bit. Afterwards, they took the bag off, I realised everything was alright. I was calm, my body was shaking. And that's what that I'm saying to you. That doesn't make any sense. My body, as far as my body was concerned, it had just been kidnapped. Right. But I knew I hadn't. The, you know the bag they put over your head? Was it like a tennis racket cover? What, what shape was it? You sure they just didn't go and thought, oh, I thought I'd just bought the world's biggest orange. <laughs> Do you ever get recognised much? Yeah, now and again. But I haven't done anything of any worth, however. It's almost like recognising a neighbour or something, because they sort of go, oh, it's him. And then the other one might go, what's he do? No, I don't know. It's not like I've done something right of any worth. Of any worth, yet. yeah. Yeah. I think you're forgetting all those emails I pass on to you for those people that have had traumas in their lives. You know the earthquake victims. There's people that have lost relatives or had, you know, terrible life-threatening diseases, and they say the podcast got them through. Doesn't that warm the cockles of your heart? Uh, well, normally it's it's gone straight to you, hasn't it? And you just forward it me on, so it's it's almost like spam to me. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't feel as special because it's like here you go, look at this. You know. Unbelievable. I've watched the World Cup a few times with Ricky. The last time we qualified, we were doing um, a project and then we were uh, we watched it together in a hotel room. But of course, in the hotel room, it was just like a big bed. So we sat on the bed together and we thought that was a bit intense. So I put a line of pillows down. But I don't understand what, to my, it, he was put a line of pillows between us. Now he knows I'm not going to jump on him. No, I know. He's not going to jump on me. No. But he's still terrified that some kind of, like some kind of paparazzi is going to sort of <laughs> parascend down <laughs> the building and peer in and take a photo of us. <laughs> and that's before we've got time to explain that we're just watching the football. We're, it's already printed going, well this is clearly evidence of their game. Yeah. There's no way that they could possibly be sat on a bed just as friends. No, but hold on though, why were we naked? <laughs> Why didn't we just pop some trousers on? But I seem to remember that you, even though it was my room, you forced me to sit in the chair. It was one of those really uncomfortable box chairs. I said, it's weird, I can't get excited, we're having a beer, okay? So now we're drinking. Now we're drinking in bed. On the bed. <laughs> no, no, no. We had our clothes on, we're on the bed, watching football. But I couldn't go, come on England, with a little man sitting next to me in bed. Not a little man at all. No, big man. And so I just thought, let's pop the pillows down. That wasn't enough. I said, Steve, I can't do this. I can't, I can't watch football with a man on a bed. I said, so go in the chair <laughs> and he sat so in I sat in this chair which is if a man of my size those tiny little crappy hotel box chairs are no good it's 90 bloody minutes plus the interview it was my room I was furious I felt like I was um uh, uh like an old rich man just waiting to die and my little manservant used to come and sit and watch football with me <laughs> exactly, in the, yeah. last <laughs> the last days of my time <laughs> Carl would you sit on a bed right with Stephen in a hotel room right watching football Okay, you're pouring, you're pouring each other wine and beer and champagne. Well, no, there wasn't that music playing. There was the roar of the crowd and John Motson doing commentary. It wasn't, <laughs> it's not a sexy sound at all. What do you think, Carl? Um, someone said, "Oh, come to my room. We're watching football." You got there, and he went. Da, da, da. Well, who was on the bed well, that's first? Not what happened. Who was on the bed first? Well, he probably got up to answer the door. So he, so we, I don't know. I came in. I thought, well, there's only a bed here. We sat down. We thought, yeah. No, but it wasn't. It was a chair there. So. Well, yeah, but you know full well that if you're in a room with Ricky, he's the one who's going to leap straight on the bed and demand that you I just turn the chair. 
Well, why would you be concerned with lying on a bed next yeah. to me? What's up with that? It's a bit weird, isn't it? Why, why is it weird? I don't understand this. Because... I've changed for you. It's a bit weird lying on a bed with a mate just watching football. Yeah, you didn't do that when you go around a house, do you? Yeah, but that's because you have a sofa and things. We didn't have that in the Yeah, room. but when you visit someone in hospital, you don't say, move over. You, pop, you don't pop yourself down next to him, you sit on a chair next no, to him. No, because you're not there in a relaxed situation for 90 minutes enjoying a game of sport. It's a, it's a more formal environment. Because you're quite a sport fan, aren't you, Carl? Yeah, but not in... Um, <clears throat> I don't like getting into things too much because mm. it can well, only be disappointing. True. I've never seen him get into anything. No. To be quite honest, no, I am a football fan, but I've got in, I've got I've got it now to a point where if they lose, it only bothers me for about half an hour. Yeah, and then I move on because mm. the thing is, I'm not in control of it. There's nothing I can do to alter that no. that team. If I could go in and say, "Listen, you're lazy. You get your finger out. You move up front," but it's different. But it's totally. It's like getting annoyed with nature. There's nothing you can do. So let it happen, watch it if you want, but don't get annoyed about it, because it's totally out of your hands. Interesting yeah. that Carl's team tactics also sounds like he could be directing a gay porn. <laughs> you get your finger out, you get up front. You're lazy. That's amazing. Uh, what do you think of these people, though? I love it that everyone's a, an expert, everyone's a pundit. You see these fat people in pubs going, well, he's lost a few yards up front. Yeah, he'd be great. You fucking score a goal then, fatty. Mm. Wearing a football top. Yeah. I hate that. Exactly, yeah. They shouldn't make them for them. They shouldn't make them in that size. <laughs> it should be one size only. If you're fit enough to play football, you can wear one. If you're yeah. a fatty, you're not. <laughs> He looks ridiculous anyway. But what's that? That's what he was talking doing, about. So you were a big fat slob with his belly out in an England shirt going, oh, I could score from there. Go on then, let's have a go. If Fat Bob in the pub, mm. he's got his football top on. Mm, just. He gets all annoyed mm. when England, you know, lose. Yeah. What difference does it make? What difference does it make if they lose there or lose in the final? Well, I'll What's the point? Well, I'll tell you what difference it makes. I knew a fat Bob, okay? That wasn't his name, but I'm changing the name to protect the innocent. And him. And he's not innocent, right? Was it Fat Dave? It was a big fat bloke, right? And he worked on one of the crews um, that used to bring in equipment where I used to work at the Students' Union, okay? And uh, he, was, he was massive, right? And uh, I think it was 1992, the Euro, right, when England got knocked out. And he went mental. And he was so angry, he went out and he wanted retribution, OK? Luckily, there were no German people around, but the closest he, he could find was a sausage van. So <laughs> Paul Bloke, who delivered sausages, and he turned it over. He got the van and he turned it over, because it was selling sausages, so he thought, that's German enough. No, well, if he's fat, he's probably just annoyed that it wasn't open. <laughs> I think I first became really excited by the World Cup, that famous year when Maradona did the handball. Do you remember what was that, 1986? 86. Yeah. Oh, that was so exciting. Because obviously he'd been so brilliant in that tournament. And then he did cheat, as we all know. Yeah. Isn't cheating part of, part of all games now? Hang on, here oh, we go, this on. is controversial. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of young people who look up to Carl as a role model. Yeah. Yeah, but it's the world we live in now, isn't it? It's, uh, get what you can. How you come? But what's your feeling? Are you the sort of person? I mean, have you ever cheated in a game? Are you that sort of person? Um, I just think my dad does it a lot. Um, what in board games and that? Yeah, just just cards, Monopoly. Um, How does he cheat in Monopoly? Just nicks a lot of the money. I'm oh, just straightforward nicks the money. I hadn't thought of that. Uh, I love that. But how do you not notice even doing it? He does. I'm understand. busy looking at you know what properties I've, I've invested in and sure. stuff. And the money's just there, isn't it? See, I don't see the point of cheating. No, I don't. I say that to him. I say, you're kidding yourself. You're kidding yourself. But to him, it, he's, he's broke the system, hasn't he? He's got round the rules. What do you mean I can only have that much? Who says I can? Bosh. Get some more money. Buy some more hotels. And in a way, that's life, isn't it? Mm. All people with loads of money now, you kind of go, have they made that honestly? Right. You know, I pass big houses in London and I think, gangsters, got to be gangsters to have a house like that. Yeah. There's no way a normal job, someone who's... Because I know, I'm trying to make money, and I know how hard it is to make money. Because the more money you make, the more hands are out there, taking little bits. So how the hell has this man bought this house? 
It's got to be a crook. <laughs> And so do you yourself cheat? Would you consider yourself a cheater? Are you honourable? In games. Well, just generally, do you cheat on anything? No, do you know what? The other week, I'd had a cup of tea and some fish and chips. Mm. At this pub. And they only took for one. And I went back the next day and said, oh, you didn't charge me for the fish and chips. What a fucking moron. Okay. No, I didn't tell her about the tea then. <laughs> Got a free tea? Free tea, yeah. I just thought, well, you know, it's pretty good that I've gone back to pay for that. How much is a tea bag? Mm. The water's free. Yeah. I'll have that for free. So, that, again, that's just me. It's like the Mars bar and the paper round. Mm. It's me going, well, I've been good. The fish would have cost money. Potatoes are pretty cheap. But I'll pay for it. But for my goodness, is a little gift. Have a free cup of tea. <laughs> if she was good at her job, she'd have remembered. I thought she would have done. In a way, it annoyed me that she didn't go, oh yeah, so you did, well done, thank you very much for coming back. Right. She just was like, did you? Not she looked at me, she looked, like, she looked at me like we didn't even know. Yeah. I was worrying about a staff member getting sort fired of or getting something. done yeah. or having to pay for it. You I know, know where you're coming at there. One of my first disappointments with football, I was, um, I was ten years old, okay, and, uh, one of the teachers was um, in charge of the football team, my junior school. And uh, I went down to Tutty's, it was, in the shop in Reading with my mum. So it's, it's white socks, black shorts, white shirt, like that, got that. Went to, knocked on his door, I said, uh, I've got my kit. He went with the trials were yesterday, we missed it. That was it for a year. XFM 104.9, Magic <laughs> Numbers, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, I'm a little bit worried. I've just got to warn the listener, if we suddenly just go off air, right, it's because <laughs> champagne is pouring down a hole where there's loads of wires into the desk. Because <laughs> Steve... Yeah. Getting ready to open this champagne, right, just took that wire thing off, just put it there, of course because it's warm, it just it exploded everywhere. Yeah, I should explain now. I didn't bring in champagne to toast our <laughs> return to the radio. I mean, I'm not an idiot, but um, actually, uh, from Focus PR, Ashley has rather nicely sent us some uh, Lindauer sparkling wine, and I'm just trying some, and uh, it's really quite refreshing on this uh, summer's day. So, if you're perhaps working for some kind of PR agency, you know, or any kind of company, and you want to send us stuff which you want us to shamelessly promote on air, then feel free to do that. Uh, so you're just, you're just looking for free stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, electrical goods. Um, oh, okay, it's suppose. not just like champagne Definitely stuff. Definitely not. Because I was going to say, if other champagne companies, what's that champagne company called that they sent us That's free? That's uh, Lindauer Sparkling Wine, which I imagine is available now. <laughs> yeah, so other champagne companies feeling jealous could send you some and you'd, you'd mention it. I don't want to exclude anyone from this. You know, anyone <laughs> is welcome to send anything in. Um, Brilliant. And I mean, as I say, I'm particularly interested in, in um, sort of designer goods. Okay. Um, you know, the Apple Mac people, they're welcome to sure. send anything in. Now, what's annoying about that champagne opening like that is that, as you know, I've brought my camera in. Um, uh, and I wanted to film you opening that onto Carl's head. Got the cork. Rick, I got another bottle. Have you ever- I don't want you to miss out on oh, a yeah. like that. That's a bit of a waste of champagne, like opening two bottles. But Carl, would you mind, cause I, cause that would've made a cracking noise against your head, that cork going off. And uh, cause it's such a lovely, bald little sort of dome. Mm. Yeah. Um, put your head, we put your head right down, yeah? yeah? It'll open it, we'll see what the cork does and I'll film it mm. for, uh, like a website or something. Maybe we'll make that the finale of today's show. That'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Um, sponsored well, well, by Linda or Sparkling Water. Oh yeah! The sound, the sound of a cracking cork against Carl Skull. Sponsored by Linda. Sponsored by Linda. Available now. <laughs> great. Right, we're doing Rockbusters then. Oh, okay, <laughs> now you, you should explain briefly what the concept is, Carl, because there might be a few new listeners. <laughs> Blockb <laughs> it's Blockbusters. Right, go on then. Well, no. it's not, it's not Blockbusters. No, because they were real clues, that weren't would, they? Yeah, that was actually- He easy. says they're a cryptic clue, it's not cryptic. Yeah. Well, it's, what am I, it's like, what am I thinking? This competition is like, what number am I thinking of? Rick, just calm down for a second, let me explain basically what the concept is. You'll remember some of the greats from the past. Yeah. Um, basically, uh, you give some vague clue, is that right, Carl? And from that, we're supposed to deduct which band or artist you're thinking of. So, yeah. for instance, there was a- Well, there was one, the West Indian fella spinning a fish round his head, and that was Detroit Spinners. The trout spinners, yeah, the trout Detroit, spinners, Detroit spinners, spinners yeah. yeah. There's also what happens if you fall over into a puddle in Texas, what? wet knee Houston, wet yeah, knee. That, that is the Houston. level of Carl's That's what you're clues. working with. But could I just say, there's no irony in this. Carl doesn't think this is quirky or kitsch or ironic. This, he thinks these are, th he thinks these could go on the Guardian crossword. <laughs> yeah. 
Right, okay. This so is the best I can come up with. Yeah. Right, so, yeah. so there's, there's three of them, right? Yeah. I'll give you the cryptic clue. Yeah, not and to object. help you along, well it is. Yeah, uh, and really. I'll give you some initials of the band or the artist or whatever to help you along as well. Yeah. Uh, three no, of them. This is on the text only, we don't want emails on this one, just It's eight. the one that gets the highest or the first one to get three. The first email with three or the first one that is the, the highest. So if, if no one gets the third one, which I wouldn't blame you for, uh, so if there's like 30 people that get two, it's the first email that comes in that we pick and uh, they win a, a handful of tat, which, would you like to go through, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll search out the tat in a second, I'm not sure where it is, yeah. There's some DVDs and stuff in there, it's not bad, yeah, but uh, it means you go forward to the grand final in six weeks' time when you're playing for all that amazing stuff Ricky's got. We've got the sign uh, genuine exclusive drawing of Homer Simpson done by Matt Groening, um, featuring references to Carl. We've got the signed mm. Spinal Tap poster. This is big yeah. stuff you can't get anywhere else. No, it's a rare, it's a rare um, American poster signed by and Nigel Tuffle. And it's such a shame that your only chance of winning it is with this inane quiz. Uh, absolutely. It's not, it's not down to skill or anything. Uh, it's, it's just such a shame that- Let's well, just do it then. Go on then. Uh, right. The first one. Go on. Uh, what you got to remember is it's a band or an artist, that sort of, that X of M play as well, right? Right then, so, uh, the first one. Oh uh, yeah, cause X-Men play the Detroit Spinners <laughs> and Whitney Houston all the time, <laughs> yeah. don't they? Alright, these three. Okay. Give it away a bit, these are, these are X-Men bands. Okay, yeah. Right, uh, if you got, if you got like a, a ball. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I just, just I know, the, you know the thing about the cryptic clue is that every syllable counts. <laughs> he says it's different every time he says it. it there'd be <laughs> somewhere different. Look, he's, look, go on then. Go. Right, so if you get a bulb, right? A bulb what? A bulb. A bulb. What's a bulb? What's a bulb? Like a- A light bulb. A light bulb. Oh, yeah. a, a light bulb. So okay, you get a bulb. Yeah. You get a bulb. Yeah. 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 <laughs> go on. <laughs> <laughs> he's gone. Right, go on. So you get a bulb. Right. Oh, yeah, a bulb, yeah. Have you got something in your throat? What are you doing? Are you eating a gobstopper? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm gonna play a song then. No, come on! <laughs> get, get the clue out, for goodness Go sake! So the, the cryptic clue is, so, if you get a bulb, right, so- <laughs> That's the beginning. Okay, great. Right, oh. right, if you get a saw, then right, if you get a bulb, like, go on. And you look after it, right, you look after that bulb, mm. and you teach it stuff, Jesus Christ. What are you doing there? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> this is extraordinary. This That's is extraordinary. Amazing. Imagine that written down in the He's telegraph. He's 18 months to get it. Imagine it. That's, an, that's not a clue. That's an essay. Don't know what it is. It's a conversation I don't with know yourself. If he a light bulb, a bulb like you plant in the garden. What kind of bulb does he mean? Yeah. It doesn't really matter. Oh, okay. Well, you get a bulb. Well, um, well, remember that, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Okay, it doesn't no, matter. It, it does, but I can't say too much. <laughs> Right, so listen, let me just do it again. You get a bulb, right? Yeah. When it's young, you look after that bulb, yeah. you teach it stuff and what have you. What have you done there? What, what's gone on? <laughs> Brilliant! Oh, so the initials of the band. R, right? R. R for rabbit, right? So what's the band there? Second right. one. Jesus. Uh, people have a problem doing this when they get home from, from like an, a night out drinking. Right? What, what's the problem they've got? Right? The, the initial there, K. What's the band? Right? People get in from uh, having a night out, they'll have a problem doing this. What is it? What's, what's, what's the problem? Okay. okay. And clue right. number three? I had a vision of that Chinese flu. Right? That's, that's C. I had a vision of that Chinese flu. You had a vision of that Chinese flu. Yeah, and, and that's the band the letter C. C. Right? So three bands there. Three cl uh, cryptic clues. Not really. Text in. 83XFM. Just, just send the three, uh, Three band names that'll do, won't it? Can That'd they do fine. a website as well? If they want, they can email in. Well, tell them what it is. Yeah, Ricky Gervais at xfm uk. Just right. send it in there. Give them again uh, quickly, then, Carl. Right then. So get a bulb when it's young and that. Look Brilliant. after it. Brilliant. Different. Totally look after different. It. Teach it stuff. Yeah. And all that. Okay. Ah, ah. What's the band? Right. Yeah. The second one. Mm. People have a problem doing this when they get home late at night. You mm. know, they've been out drinking and that. They get home. What, yeah. what problem are they going to have? K is the initial. Mm. Third. Third one, I had a vision of that Chinese flu. What do I mean? Mm. Brilliant. C, C is the initial. Play record. I mean, it's, it's abomination. Right, go. Uh, first, first clue was, uh, if you get a bulb when it's young, you yeah. look after it and that, you teach it stuff. Yeah. What's going on there? Go yeah. on. The initial was R. Yeah. Right, that was, that was razor light. Alright? Raise a light, you raise a light. Raise yeah. a light, okay. Kinda works. Yeah, Second it didn't matter one. what sort of bulb it was then. <laughs> it was very <laughs> sure. specific. Sure. Uh, mind, go on. People have a problem doing this when they get home from a night out drinking. Yeah. 
What's the problem they're having? They have a problem getting the key in. Getting the key in, Matt, key in, key in, key in. That's the- That's awful. Words. That doesn't count. Words. Key in. And they got it right. It's keen. It's yeah, keen. It's it right. to awful. Uh, awful, last one, awful, awful. I had a vision of that Chinese flu. Yeah. Uh, that the initial I was C, that was Caesars. Caesars, Caesars, Caesars. They managed to get that as well. Who's three. Caesars. I love the fact that even he knows they managed to get that as well. Did anyone get all three? Yeah, a few people. That's know. terrible. Okay, Caesars. who was the first one? Who I don't first? know what it says about XFM and its listeners that people are getting these answers right. I know. Go on then. I mean, Caesars. horrific. But anyway, we're going to give it, and he goes forward, as I say, for the big prize, the big prizes in uh, six weeks' time. It's Paul in Bookham. Where done? Paul well Bookham, but also he does get um, the uh, complete series of uh, Alias, League of Gentlemen, that Rock Gods album. Um, so you know, it's, it's, it's pretty good. But Open Water on DVD and a chance to win all those prizes. Brilliant. Yeah. Coming up next, a cork smacking a bald man mm. on the bumps mm. really hard. Clocks from the cold play. <laughs> on next FM 104.9. I'm Richard Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and back. Carl Pilkington. Hey. He's raring to go. It's nice when you have a bit of time off, isn't it? Yeah, how long have you had off now About three weeks. About three weeks, weeks yeah. Um, we can't do that because we're sort of self-employed and we'd be letting people down, but it's different when you, you know, you get paid anyway whether you turn up or not, but good to have I'm you never, back. Good I'm to never have off ill. No, That's the first time I've no, never I just, been off ill, I think. Well, well, no, I mean, just, just, you're off two weeks and then you're off. No, I just wish I was the kind of person who could let down an audience I know, of, of regular really, listeners. Yeah. yeah, but I will, like I say, well, no, we spoke to you. You weren't that bad. A cold. You don't go in for a cold. Um, we were discussing this last night in the pub, and uh, you know, you don't go home for a cold. Um, okay, then, so moving on. What have we got then? We got it some great cold, songs. I've brought in the Smiths. I've brought in Buzz Cox. I've brought in Neil Young. I know Steve's got some hip hop. Some great hip hop. I've got some great Elvis Costello. It's, it's going to be great. Uh, Carl, come on, concentrate. You've been away three weeks. Just a noise. No, don't stop saying that. What's your eye me now? Why? Oh, what are you do? Go in ill. Oh, oh, he's annoyed me. Oh, has he? Yeah, I got a bit of headache. I'm a little bit annoyed. Can I have some time off but still get paid? Yes, of course you can. Steve, Carl. right? He called me up, winding me up about this. And <laughs> right, I'm I'm nearly th I'm thirty. Right, I'm thirty now. <laughs> I can only remember being off two times. Oh, his memory's going as well. You'll have some time <laughs> off. <laughs> and both of them were when I when I was at school. School? One, what one, school? One when it was windy. What did yeah. you have time off because it was windy? But to be honest, Carl, that lasted no, no, for wait. seven years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Your time wait, off wait, at school. Wait. Why did you have time off because it was windy? Were you windy or was it windy outside? No, it was, it was a really, it was like when-, when Your auntie the, wasn't out the window, was she? Yeah. When the winds were bad in the seventies. I mean, mum said, oh- What's it? Whoa, 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 whoa. I remember space hoppers and flares. I don't yeah. remember the winds being bad in the seventies. <laughs> well, my, my mum just said, uh, you might get blown into the road, so don't- <laughs> <laughs> she had so much faith in you, didn't she? As a human being. Is that why she got fired from the pie shop? <laughs> I'm not coming in today, I might get blown into god the room. The, oh god. The funny god. thing it was, right, Steve, they, they had this, this thing going at school, because a lot of people used to wag it back then. Right? Used to what? Wag it, sort of not go in. Yeah. Right. Right. And, um, they sort of tried to make it interesting for you by giving you a- An education. A certificate. A right. certificate if you yeah. did a full week. Re reward for the rest yeah, of your exactly, life with yeah. achievement. That right. sort of- that sort of carrot. And mm. also, like, let you go home at three o'clock on a Friday. Right. right. If, if you'd done a- like, a full week and that. Right? Yeah. Mm. So it was, uh, it was lovely weather all week. Then it just ch sort of changed on a Friday. And I got up and it was all windy. It was windy said, for Friday on the 7th, isn't it? Uh, don't- don't, you know, if you don't want, don't go in cause, you know, you might get blown into the road and that. So I said, alright, then I'll stay off. And, uh, so why did you, uh, <laughs> told you to hold on, hold on to a fence or <laughs> yeah. walk you there? What's this don't go out <laughs> Immediately give blown? up. I love this getting blown into the road. Is that based on your cats that kept getting blown into the road? Well, so I got to, got to school on the Monday, right? And the teacher said, Took right, long time. today, uh, to punish you, you're the only one who wrecked the whole week, right? Everyone else came in, you didn't. So everyone else is going home at three o'clock today. But you're not. Brilliant. Serves you right. And, uh, and I wasn't bothered though. It was great because I said, well, you'll have to stay with me, won't you? And Brilliant. It was great. So all I did for half an hour was doodle and stuff. It was great that afternoon. Yeah. And that, that was ages ago. That was like when I was about eight. And that's one of the times I was off ill. Yeah. So it was but that wasn't even ill. That was wind. Yeah. Well, yeah. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit different when you're to to be the honest adult with you, world though, Kai. You can't just not turn up because you've got a bit of a cold or you're a bit fed up. I mean, we had an appointment four o'clock Thursday, wasn't it? And he had to call. He said, "I cancelled it. Oh, I went on meeting went on a bit late." Yeah. Time management. Get things done. If it was important, you'd get it done. Play a record, Carl. Pull your finger out, please. Elvis Costello, Alison, 
What a great track that mm. is. Beautiful. Well, Carl, we'd better tell them all the new great features we've come up with in the time you were off. <laughs> right, well, we'll, uh, we've got the film thing still going. Okay. Yeah. Um. That's where you take a lead role or a, or, or a major role in a, in a Hollywood blockbuster, which we then give away on VHS worth six ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, something new we're trying out, because Rockbusters- He's dead, thankfully, yes. He's, uh, he's gone for a bit. It's over. Um, Crosswords. Crosswords. Oh, this sounds intriguing. Where'd you get the idea from? <laughs> what's the, what's the basic, uh, <laughs> format of this? Right, what, I, what I've done is, I've, yeah. um, yeah. take like a, a popular saying from the show. A popular yeah. what? A popular saying, something that crops up quite a lot in the show. In our show? Yeah. Yeah. Um, first thing that spring, sort of sprang to mind was, uh, there's this airy Chinese kid. Oh, okay. classic. But more, more commonly yeah. it would be something like, Carl, you're an idiot. Yeah, play Carl, record, you're you a fool. Where, Carl, you're a fool. Oh, what did you mean, you let us down again? Yeah, you Carl, where have here. you been? Yeah, oh, you you've got a headache, have you, Carl? Yeah. You better have a lie oh. down. Typical yeah. phrases like that, yeah, sure. Yeah, typical phrases like that, yeah, yeah. Carl, you're a loser. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. And, um, what I've done, I've got a load of different songs and took words <laughs> from the different songs and then joined them together yeah. to make There's This Airy Chinese Kid and then people have to email in and say what the five songs were. It sounds like the most complicated game ever. I'm looking forward to it. You, have you heard any of this, Rick? Because I've not heard this at all. Yeah. I'm not familiar with this. Well, all it is, it, it, it'll go like, Oh, John, he's a kid! And that's, it's from sort of four different songs. Right. And you've got to identify the songs. Right. Uh, wow. How many songs in this, Carl? Five. Yeah? Five. There's this hairy Chinese kid. Okay. Right. So, <laughs> and uh, what are the prizes for that? Are these yeah. the prizes? Yeah. Alright, well let me tell you what they are. They're not too bad actually. We've got, um, Live Forever, which I assume is a, a CD that ties in with this Think new film. Think of that! A well-known phrase from the show, and it's Hairy Chinese Kid. <laughs> yeah. What other- where would you There is no that other radio show in, in the life. world! I- this is- go on. If you've just tuned in, yeah, I mean, what, what are you thinking? what do you think if you've just tuned in? You're going, well-known phrase from the show, Hairy Chinese Kid. <laughs> oh yeah, classic. <laughs> They'll be playing that in charades this Christmas. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is uh, a CD that ties in with this new film, Live Forever, which was, is all about uh, Britpop and so there's stuff on there from Oasis, Blur, Pulp, etc. Uh, we've also got uh, another Red Dwarf DVD, uh, Marion and Jeff, the first series of that, excellent. <coughs> That's on VHS, sadly, but uh, never mind. And um, and also uh, the very best of Led Zeppelin, a two CD set there with uh, all the classics on. So that's not uh, bad prizes, actually. Carl, you've, you've done yourself We've upped it, we've upped it, we're getting serious now. We're playing in the, you know, the bigger league, it's, we've upped the stakes. We want Heat Magazine not to, you know, lose touch with us just because Rockbusters is gone. Yeah. I think they're still behind us. We're so we've got, we've got, uh, we've got film, you appear in a film, we've mm. got, uh, crosswords. <laughs> How is that to do with the crossword? Because I've got words and sort of cross them. Okay. Right, you don't really <laughs> cross them. But, uh, good. So words, we're playing a game called Words. <laughs> word Song. Hello and welcome to <laughs> Word Song. <laughs> Brilliant. And, uh, and obviously I imagine there'll be some more great music. But we've got a new feature, haven't we? Which one's this? Are we doing, um, within the Monkey News, the new oh, feature? Oh, Steve. I'm excited. You know Monkey News is my favourite feature, so what have you uh, added to it? Explain it. Right, well, uh, there's been loads of stuff going on in the past few weeks, right? Uh, but for the times when I struggle, when, when sort of monkeys have had a quiet week, <laughs> and there isn't that much news going on, sure. right? come up with this thing. I sort of speak to an expert. I've, I've spoke to him already. You, right? spoke, you spoke to an expert? Yeah. A monkey expert? Yeah. Uh-huh. And I ask him a question. Wow. Right? The feature, it's got a good name, you know that's the way I work. Yep. Cheapest chimps. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay. And what I do, I ask him a question about, you know, or oh, how much does it cost to, you know, keep one? How much does it cost to, uh, you know, feed one for a week? Yeah. All this sort of stuff. So I, I give out like a monkey story, and if that isn't enough for people, they'll also learn something else at the end of it. Right. Yeah. So like- It sounds fascinating, can I say right now? Yeah. That's just some of the things that we've come up with. Play a record, Carl. Please still continue to listen there. Richard Ashcroft, buy it in bottles on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Carl, I need the phone number of your girlfriend. Let me explain why. I was lucky enough, once again, to be on your quiz team yeah. this week. Um, 
Uh, Ricky, still to beat me. He's still to beat me with his team. Yet. We, second, uh, second, I came. We, uh, we, the, the, the gang here and some friends, we uh, sometimes go down to a pub quiz in the local area. And um, I was very nicely, I was invited by Carl to be on his team. Uh, twice now I've been on that team. Uh, Ricky's always on another team. And um, I, what can I say, Carl? I, 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 do you mind me saying this now? Because I've, I've, I've analysed. The team, and it's your, very much your team, and uh, and you've put the team together. You've recruited some excellent personnel. Your girlfriend's uh, very, very good on the team, yeah. as is one of her uh, work colleagues. And uh, you normally bring in, you know, someone like myself. I like to think I've been providing certain something with the entertainment section. I seem to remember last time I answered at least six or seven questions that other people hadn't got. So uh, I felt I, I provided something there. Um, Carl, I, I rather like John Harvey Jones, who used to be called in to sort of troubleshoot companies. I see why you are not winning ever, and it's rather pricey. Uh, contest, isn't it? It costs a tenner to enter per Each. person, yeah, yeah. and unless you get in the top three, you're not you're not going to get to see your money back. Right. So, um, I think you're going to maybe need to step down from the team because Carl, oh. I'm not sure. I am not sure. Oh. You you consider yourself a kind of player manager, but frankly, I'm not sure you're providing enough. Right. See, this is this is funny because as bad as I imagine you are, I don't think Steve would make it into my team, so he's getting a bit cocky here. Right. Next year, oh, where are the trials? That's why I've got the trials. Okay. He was going, everyone, I want to give it 100%, right, really try hard, really try hard. He's watching people play, right? I made sure that every time I ran by him, I was out of breath. Like, <sighs> like, really trying. <sighs> every time I ran by him, he sort of looked at me, I think, yeah, right. <sighs> Came to it, he said, the team is this, I'm left out, right? He went past me, and he went, you've clearly got asthma. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't make that team either? Yeah, and I didn't, and, and, uh, and I vowed that day, never try hard. Anything. Yeah, well, you've certainly kept that up. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that, Carl? Were you play? Do you play sport at school? Um, a little bit, but it was never taken seriously at school. Anyway, it was. Uh, I think the PE teacher was a geography teacher as well. So it's like you know, what yeah. does he know? It was all that. Basically, he put some tracksuit pants on that were always too tight for him. He'd see everything. But what were you looking at? Did you couldn't help it? It was in the days when clothing was tight as it is, mm. and then it was like lycra. Tracky bottoms. All oh, right. And everyone used to say, "Look at the state of heart." But like uh, he's stealing sausages from. It was ridiculous. London. Ridiculous. Uh, so he didn't know what he was doing anyway. If, if anything, it was dangerous because he didn't know what was what was the capability of a ten-year-old kid's body. He put you through loads of stuff. Right. He didn't like me anyway because I wasn't that good. If you're not that good, teachers don't like I you. I thought you'd be pretty good. I wasn't interested. That's the thing. I did relay and I got done for swearing. Got whacked on the arse with a baton. Hold on, why, why, why were you swearing in relay? When, when did that come into it? When did you need to swear in relay? You're running round, aren't they? Because the lads swearing. wouldn't slow down, so I couldn't pass it on, so I sort of said, fucking slow down. And then he heard me and then went mental at me. But yeah, so it was never. I mean, Darren Campbell, the, the, the athlete, I've told you, I don't know that I was involved in his, his training. No. Didn't know about this. Yeah, Darren Campbell, the. Uh, I think he won a gold medal. Didn't he used to push you around in a bath or something? It's not the last of the summer wine. <laughs> <laughs> it was, um, it was in my go-kart. Right. And you used to, it was a motorised go-kart, and you had to, like, pick it up at the back, run with it at speed, and then drop the wheels down. Well, no, we should life. explain, people don't know, he was the bloke who used to push the bobsleigh in the Winter Olympics, wasn't he, for the England team? No, he was a, he was a runner. Well, how is that part of his training then? Pushing a the fucking go kart? What was he doing? Because he's running. But he's running about a yard. No, no, sometimes more than that. Quite a lot. And it's just. Uh, God, what do you want? It's Darren Campbell <laughs> pushing me go kart. Yeah, but you seem to be taking half the credit for his gold medal. All you've done is sat on your arse, you lazy twat. I just kind of think he was, he was at the age where it's important. He could have made. A decision not to go into it at that point, and I think he was never keen to get in the go kart. Yeah. He was always keen to push it, and I used to let him. Now, if I said no, I don't want you pushing me go kart. Who knows? I'm just saying I was there at the start, doing nothing, providing nothing, sitting on your arms, sitting around, well, letting someone it, else. All right. Do it. What athletes have you helped? <laughs> You've not helped him. I bet if he ever did a book, an autobiography, he'd go. Hey, the early years, Aaron Campbell. No, I want to know if he has done an autobiography because we're going to be looking this up. I remember the train. I'm making a note of that for the next time we do anything. Around that Pilkington's. Aaron Campbell. Pushing a go kart. Pushing bold in crap. Cheap.
wasn't. Go kart. 120 quid it was. You know how many paper rounds that is? What I like when um, you're watching football on the television is if it goes to a close-up of a footballer, it's just kick the ball out, miss the goal, it's gone for a free kick or whatever. If you stay on any footballer for more than 10 seconds, they will either swear or gob. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a fact. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never needed to gob that much. It's I don't care how knackered I am, I'm never gobbing like that. It's weird, though. The other week, I just sat in the garden, slavering, <laughs> just to see if it would ever run out. And it's amazing. I don't know where it all comes from. What is the that's strangest taste? That's amazing. Just so to that, see if it would run so out. So now he's got to the point in his life where, as a hobby or a pastime or just to count down the minutes before he dies, yeah. he sat in the garden creating sputum, slavering to see if he'd ever run out. I mean, that's amazing. Where, where's Carl. it all come from? Well, you create it, don't you? But from what? I'm always getting done for not drinking enough water. Salivary glands. But it's amazing. Honestly, I just sat like that with my head forward and just let it drip. <laughs> Fuck oh, wow. me! So Susan that comes into the garden like and all she sees is her patient. boyfriend sat like something from one of the cuckoo's nest. Yeah, like dribbling, battered around the head with a cricket bat. No, she was she Did, was she, did you answer she was back to there. a dictator? Yeah. What did he do? Battered me. But You've I'd... got a trench up your ass as well. Yeah, that makes me slather. No, just sat there. What a fucking That's mark. extraordinary. What, what a div you are. And I just had my head there and it continuously... I think I got bored of it before it stopped. <laughs> oh, God! I have never heard anything like this! Oh, God! It's unbelievable! He just sat there with his head down, slavering, letting it just... That's extraordinary. You weren't even sort of like... <sighs> Gobbin, you were just, no, just letting, letting, it, letting it sort of drop. So you, you got you've got <laughs> nothing else going on in your life, but you've got time to do this. So your brain wasn't even engaged. How long were you, you there for? I tell you what, no joking, probably a good fifteen minutes. <laughs> fifteen wow. minutes of sitting with his head forward, Amazing. letting him salivate onto the grass. But do you reckon you could do that amount? I would well, never, do never, try. never, never do it. Never try. I would I'd never try. have that amount of time. I've never. I've. Ne I, I tell you now, you will never see either of us sat there for no reason in the garden with our head forward and our mouth open, seeing how long we can create saliva. Unless I've just come out of a coma. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or a gas attack. Yeah. No, I have a lot of, uh, I'm sort of goes unlimited. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great new dance duo! Isn't it? Please welcome to the stage, it's Goz Unlimited! Amazing. Uh, what do you think about George Best using up his liver, then getting another one and getting pissed at him? Clever. Well, that's always going to encourage it, isn't it? I've always said that. What? The moment we can replace stuff, people just go, oh, sod it. Like what smokers. would you do if you gave someone a kidney and then with it. and they started to sort of the other pub again? Doing drugs and shit and Well I wouldn't I wouldn't hand it out to someone just just like that, would I? I think you should be allowed to say, right, who's it for? Can I meet them? Right. And then have a chat with them. Right. Saying, have you learnt your lesson? Well I'm gonna do it, okay, okay. I'm a I'm a I'm a little um kid who wants a, a kidney, okay? Um, and you've come to me. I'm, I'm at the top of the list. Hello. 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 How are you doing? Good. Are you going to give me one of your kidneys so I can live? I don't know, um... Well, I'm at the top of the list, so... Why is your head so round? No, it's definitely not. Why? Definitely He's a little kid. Look at him. He's a little him. kid. Pale. No, I need, I need a kidney. He's cheeky, though, isn't he? No, cheeky. please. Lovely please, kid. round head. Can I have a, your kidney? No, you can't. Oh, come on, right, you've got let's two. Let's see another kid. Let's see another kid. No! Lesson I'm, the top, I'm Lesson top of the fucking list. Give me one of your kidneys, you round headed twat. No. I would not feel bad about walking away from that kid and saying you cannot have a kidney. So you're gonna. You're gonna Do you know what? I'm gonna take this kidney out and bin it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait. Do you know who that kid went on to become? You on? Winston Churchill. Right, well, maybe I helped. It's like Darren Campbell all over again. I made him stronger. I was tough with him. He saw how tough the world is. No, but he didn't. It, this is an alternative universe where he died because you never gave him that kidney. Yeah. Eh, well, you can't worry about that then, can you? 
if you're gonna if you're gonna start going that far back and forward and stuff. But I think it, I don't know what I'd expect someone to be like. Just want them to go. What do you eat? I'd, I'd say write down your diet. Oh yeah, I, I, I'm gonna really. I'm gonna treasure this kidney. I'm gonna treasure it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna really work hard, and I'm gonna make something like more than you did. So I'll. Um, so my this your kidney is gonna be a lot better off for me than you, you lazy tosser. I'll tell you that. If you want, if you want okay. achievement, then uh, you know I'm gonna go to school. I'm gonna do really well. Then like you, you thick little round-headed shit. So the quicker you get the fucking kidney out of your used his body yeah. and into mine, we'll all be happy, won't we? Okay. Well, I'll, I'll go away and think about it for a month. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Don't have to get nasty. Sick of it. I'm always helping people out. Uh, That's a big ask, isn't it? Would you give anyone a kidney, Carl? Suzanne? I'm sure you would give Suzanne tricky. a kidney. It's tricky. Well, you obviously you'd give Suzanne a kidney, wouldn't you? Yeah. Uh, well, would you or are you just saying that? I suppose I would. I don't really like the idea of it. So if what you're saying, what are you saying to Suzanne right now? Bit of good luck. Oh, you know I need a kidney, and it's got quite rare. Well, we've got the same sort of blood group and everything. So uh, yeah, you've got two. I've got none. Bibbidi bob, one each. Let's have a good life. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, you'll have to uh, have to have it. Which one are you thinking of going for? Because the. Uh... I think the right one's a bit dodgy because they had the kidney stones. Well, you keep that. Do you I'll, that have, one? I'll have the left one. No, I'll tell you what, you have that one because when I was in all the pain, you were going, it can't be that bad. So you have it. Mm. It's in good working order. They've looked at it. Yeah. But it is prone to stones. He's using this to get back at her. For saying it can't be that bad. It's like poetic justice. He can give her the kidney she didn't believe was that painful. Don't like talking about it. It's all, uh, it freaks me out. It freaks me out. It's all doing stuff now. The kidney's doing stuff. Yeah. My teeth are hurting still. Still got a little bit of toothache going on there. Mm. I've got a sweat on. All stuff's going on without me knowing. Germs within round. I've had jabs for rabies. I've had hepatitis A and B. I don't even know what that does. <laughs> I've had A and I've had B. That's whizzing round my body. Body's in shock, innit, at the moment. It doesn't know what's going on. I've had, uh, How is it notifying you of the shock? Well, I think, I, I, like I say, I keep getting this sweat. And, uh What else have I had? Typhoid. <sighs> Doesn't that... They shouldn't, all this stuff shouldn't be in my body, should it? And we don't really know, do we? You're saying, yeah, have this, have that, shove it in your arm, it's all right. But we don't really know. Long-term effect. I've got rabies in me. I never thought I'd have to have that. Tetanus. TB. One for a forget bit by a dirty monkey. <laughs> we'll test you on that later on. Yeah. What keeps you awake at night? Um, well, I live in sort of central London, don't I? So it's <laughs> brilliant noisy. traffic and that. I think yeah. they were thinking more. Of more of what, what, what fears have you got? What worries do you do? You, do, you, do you ponder the expansion of the universe? Do you worry about it? There's no point. There's no point, is there? Because there's nothing I can do about it. So what, with you, it's the, the what the the little Chinese fellow across the road. Just 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 stuff that that I've got to sort out, you know, any bills or anything. I don't worry about the world ending or anything. What, what's the point in that? That's <laughs> true. That I is true. I can't do anything about it. <laughs> I always think that people with more sort of intelligence have the world on their shoulders because they, they're worrying about stuff that's miles away. Whereas I'm like, you know, I'm happy if if the sun's out. It's like, oh, it's a nice day. Yeah. yeah. I don't what worry about wars and stuff going on because there's nothing I can do. What would you do if there was a, a war that, uh, that maybe there was? What here? Yeah. Go on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Play a record, Carl. I've got another confession. The Who. I mean, that's that's got to be one of the best rock tracks ever, isn't it? Oh, there's no oh, arguing. Do I sound like Dr. Fox again? A little bit. Okay, that's a good, good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah. We're gonna get a Sony award this oh. year. Carl, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to be back, isn't it? We're doing rock busters in a bit. What? Have we? Have we got Rockbusters? Well. Hallelujah! <laughs> I'll tell you this, new listeners. <laughs> new listeners won't believe their luck when they hear Rockbusters. We've got Rockbusters. Have we got, well, dare I say it, have we got monkey news, Carl? Uh, well, I've been away, haven't I? So, 
I've sort of got a few things that I've I've read about roughly, yeah. but I don't know the full ins and outs. You're joking, because usually you do your research quite well, don't you? When you get uh, it off Anna and over and read the top line. Uh, so what are you saying though? Are you saying that there's it's kind of monkey news? Oh, we'll we might have time to do something later. Well, we've got, we've got to have it. Monkey I news, love it when it? he teases us with his monkey news. <laughs> we've had yeah. emails about that that website address. Oh yeah. Uh, it was it was a, a, a what's the name? A underscore. An underscore. Okay, so first. give it out one more time. They'll go to this to find out about Carl Pilkington. Someone's put in a lot of effort. It's a really good website. There's some great pictures of Carl. It's, well, they're not great. They're just, uh, <laughs> freewebs.com slash the underscore k underscore man slash. Okay, forward slashes all the, all the way. Yeah. Except yeah. the underscores. Is there the end of course, yeah. This is interminable. Isn't it interminable <laughs> giving out email addresses? I know, yeah. Rub it, it's so boring. <laughs> no, yeah. Oh dear. Is, there, do, is he enjoying the show? Uh, it just says, um, I love spending two hours on a Saturday listening about fingers up asses, doctors squeezing testicles and making you cough. Uh, have you got any news on the airy Chinese kid? <laughs> so. Well, when, when you say it like that, some of the stuff we come up does sound a little bit of, uh, you know, drivel. Well, sometimes. Yeah. Carl was worried. Carl was worried about swearing because we were talking about finger ass and that. He's generally worried, and, and I, I don't have a problem with swearing. Although I understand why you can't say certain words on radio; it might be offensive. People aren't listening. I mean, you know, the f word, the c word, and all those. But when they bleep it out, when they bleep it out in a record, they bleep out the vowel. Mm. So in the f word, they bleep out the u. So it goes for beep, right? What? What? So they go. It's not offensive. I didn't hear the vowel. Presumably, yeah. So if you change the vowel, it's not. Do you know what I mean? So. Uh, in the sea work, could I say, um, could I talk about the, the philosopher Immanuel Kant? Well, you can talk about Immanuel Kant because he's one of the great thinkers of, of all time. So Kant is not an offensive word because the vowel is right. different, okay. is it? Leave it, leave it then. <laughs> do you know what I mean though? Well, I, I don't no, see how it can be offensive. You can't, it, it can't be, can't is it? He's a thinker, he's a philosopher, his name is, his okay. name is Kant, that is his actual right. name. Yeah. I think it, it comes from a long line of Kants from what I can, he hasn't changed his name, I think his father, his grandfather. Oh, yeah, they're yeah, all yeah, they're German people. Oh, that's Germany's, I assume, full of cants. Well, I, I mean, yeah. Yeah. What? Well, <laughs> what, what else were So you can change the vowel. So could I say, um, could I say, uh, uh. Probably not. Oh, what if I change two words? What if I said cump? C U M P. Now that's not offensive at all, is it? That can't be offensive. So I could say, you fulking cump. Yeah. Right. Okay. What, I, well, I, I, I need a schnit. <laughs> 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 that would be fun. Wonka, Willy right. Wonka. <laughs> yeah, Absolute. that's a good one. Willy Wonka. Yeah, w yeah. Got, although yeah. Willy is Willy offensive? Could you say Willy? It's tricky. Willy, it's tricky. Willy Wonka, and his and uh, Willy Wonka and his falcon right. cumps. Yeah, that would be fine. That would be absolutely it? fine. Is that all right yeah. then, Carl? Are there any other questions or anything, Steve? <laughs> well, uh, I, I thought so much a question, but it's something that I think might be of interest to you, Carl. Um, I was reading about this in the paper, and I know how fascinated you are by people of the Japanese persuasion. Um, two elderly men mm -hmm. found on a remote island are believed to be Japanese soldiers in hiding since 1945, desperate to go home. Diplomats from Tokyo are investigating the claims of these men, who are 87 and 83. What? <laughs> what? What are you thinking there? Well, no, go on. I know what you're thinking. Go on. Say what you're thinking. I'll do that old though. Why? Why? Say why. I don't, I don't want to. Just leave it. Leave, Carl's leave got that. a theory. Well, I, I, th I mean, I, I don't think I don't think that this is fine. It's it's. I, I'd say that Carl's views don't reflect the views of XFM, mm. right? Carl's got a theory that Oriental people don't age well. Sure. Uh, let, uh, let Carl. But, but that offer annoys that me the way. Yeah, but I think what? people will probably agree with me. But for some reason, well, the first time I said that, I wasn't even worried about it. But now, because of reaction of people, <laughs> what? It's, I don't understand. I don't know why I can't say that. What's Be your theory? Explain your theory in a nutshell. Just like you don't see a, 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 a you know, a sort of a, a thirty-three-year-old Chinese person. <laughs> no, but, but at the same time, what do you mean you don't yeah, see a thirty-three-year-old? I'm not, I'm not having a go. Person. At the same time, you don't see that many fat ones either. So in a way, that's that's good news. Nobody would be upset about that. But what do you mean? But you your news isn't bad news because it's not true. But wait, and stop, stop, stop. What do you mean you don't see a thirty-three-year-old Chinese person? I don't understand. What do you mean you don't see them? What do you see then? Sort of, you know, young, young ones, uh, and then, like, you don't see that middle ground. <laughs> I don't know what this theory's based on! So you see old ones and you see, er, and you see yeah. young ones, but you never see any in between? Yeah. What oh, do you mean? So what's the oldest, what's, okay, what's the oldest Chinese person you've seen before the age of 33? How old do you think? 
Uh, about 22. 22. So you've seen lots of 22 year olds. So you've seen range from babies to 22 year old, twen uh, Chinese people. Yeah. That's fact, okay? And then what gap do you miss out? What, 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 when, when do they pop back up on the radar for you? What age has a Chinese person got to be to be older than that? Well, 49. <laughs> <laughs> They're so specific. What, what do you mean when you say they don't age well? What do you mean they don't age well? You think that, you mean that middle aged ones look old? Because you think at 23, when they're 23, they happy birthday to you. <sighs> And they look up and oh jeez, it's fifty-two. What what do you mean? No, I just I just mean they don't age that well. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't know what it is in them, but they just don't. You, all right then. Here's here's a question. You tell me of a Chinese person on the telly who's about thirty-two. Well, tell me of a Chinese person on the telly first. <laughs> G give us the great gamut of uh, Chinese talent um, currently on British TV. Right, and I'll, and I'll, st I'll pick and choose. Go on then. Bruce Lee. Mm. How long has he been dead, Bruce Lee? Seventies, wasn't it? And not, not, not really on the telly much, was he? Okay. What, what age was he when he died? Thirty-three, I think. Well, I would have never have guessed that. Well, what do you think? How old do you think he was? Probably about forty-two. Well, you know Burt Kwok? Yeah, he's old. Yeah. Do you remember the Pink Panther films? No. Okay. He wasn't that old in them, because it was 60s, 70s. But how old did he look, though? If, if, if he walked in and someone said, you never guess how old he is, what would you have said? <laughs> right then, there's my point then. There's my point. I have to say, I've been listening to you two talk, and I like the idea that there's people who've been waiting 18 months for some of this. <laughs> For the, for the Kant discussion, the, uh, Orientals. I, I, do you know what I think? I think, um, uh, Kant, uh, as a philosopher, um, is very popular in Essex. Because I hear him saying his name all the time oh, whenever I go now. through- What? They're all shouting this and that. <laughs>